morning, good morning, welcome to Sewing Street. My name's Vicky. We've got a lovely day today. I tell you what, we've got a double whammy of guests. It's like a birthday show today. Um, it is actually like a birthday show. We have got some serious treats. So, in fact, I mean, this is how hot off the press the early bird is. It's literally not arrived yet. We are waiting literally any second now. Um, it will be fingers crossed running across from the warehouse and um, it's a really 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 good one so we're gonna wait for it um, so come and say hello how is everybody today we want all of your input we want all of your questions we've got Kerry and we've got Barbara McClay here um, we've got Kerry from Living in Loveliness with brand new, fabulously, fast fat quarter fun issues. Um, we've got Barbara McClay here with a beautiful, beautiful Easter bunting. And it's really lovely because you could put little Easter eggs in. You can put lovely little Easter eggs in this. It's just adorable, isn't it? Perfect for spring, lovely for spring and summer. In fact, I could see this on your deck, Kat. Kat's got a lovely decking. Oh, I know. Did anybody else have wind in the night? <laughs> Did anybody else wake up from the wind? It was so windy. Um, Barbara said, no, I didn't wake. I didn't hear it at all. Honestly, I was, I never normally, I never normally get woken up by the wind. But um, yeah, it was really quite scary. Hope everyone's well. Hi, Mary. Hi, Tom. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Laurie. Hi, everybody. Come and say hello. Good morning, Vanessa. As I said, we're patiently waiting for the early bird today it's amazing though so shall we start by doing the menu we'll do it the other way around today um the menu looks a little bit like this we have got this first hour two early birds um and we've also got something that cat and i we uh we went over to the warehouse yesterday and we managed to find a box of 40 more bridge water stitch removers they all sold out yesterday we've got 40 more which we're going to bring to you this hour um joe don't ask any questions don't ask questions don't ask if you don't ask you don't get so we've managed to get them on today's show but that's it the very last 40 we have to order more in and it could take months so it's your last chance on the stitch remover um also we've got loads of tools coming up this first hour nine o'clock barbara mcclay is, uh, is going to be with us and we have got that beautiful easter summer bunting which is so beautiful 10 o'clock kerry is here living in loveliness uh with our fabulous fast fast fat quarter fun i said that too many times didn't that no then did i say that too many times um we've got some recaps we've got issue six which we're going to recap but we've also got a brand new issue 10 which is brilliant it's going to be a lovely um gifts and gadgets bundle so that's a really good one to look forward to at uh, 11 o'clock we've got barbara back and we've got a love from beth pattern now on sunday when we when we uh did the roundup of the birthday and we had the very last day we had Wendy Orlando here and we had a brand new foundation paper piecing book and it completely sold out on the birthday completely sold out so we're bringing back foundation paper piecing today and uh, it's a love from Beth pattern I think it's the first love from Beth pattern that I've seen of FPP and it's an adorable little purse I mean you could put a chain on this if you want you could have it more as like your hexy bag couldn't you um, it'd be brilliant absolutely brilliant so that's coming up at 11 and then 12 o'clock Kerry's going to be back as, again with another brilliant hour more demos from Kerry and Riley Blake revisited hello Judith how are you morning Pauline um, I'm doing a dump run soon. Oh, you're off to the tip. I'm moving soon, so no sewing for me for a couple of months. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, so I'll have to um, so I have to record to watch later. Amanda said, morning, everybody. I couldn't sleep last night because of the wind. Same. Absolutely same. She says, I'm looking very well. Thank you. Um, what was that? Sorry. What was the windy? What did you just say? Oh, it's a, oh, I know, Tom. Um, We've got to call it the late bird today. I know it's late, it's annoying us. Susan said, good morning, Vixen Crew. So lovely to see you. Going to stay in and watch in the warm. Oh, it's honestly, it's so blustery out there. Laurie said, good morning, Vixen Crew. It's because I'm stood up today. 
The bump has potentially suddenly got a lot bigger, Laurie's just said. Yeah, it's because I'm standing up. Uh, Susie, hello, Susie Duncan. Morning, everybody. Looking forward to the shows. Now, if you do want to get involved, if you want to come and say hello to us, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can either send in your messages live on our Facebook chat, which is Sewing Street TV. Um, answer each other's questions. Come say hello to us if you've got any questions for Kerry and you've got any uh, questions for Barbara, get them in on Facebook. If you want to send in any photographs of your makes, we always love to see them. It's studio at sewingstreet.com, studio at sewingstreet.com, or you can get in touch via the website as well. Now, the web looks a little bit like this. If you click on watch live, oh, let me see the early bird. Coming soon, really soon, like really soon. Click watch live. On the right hand side, there's a little message to the studio box so you can send Kat a message. Who's my producer today? Where's the early bird? I know. I know. Um, scroll down. Oh, you've sent the message. There you go. And that will come up then on the, along the bottom of the screen. Um, so, early bird is a scrap bag. I have never seen these very, very famous scrap bags. Look. It's not physically here, but we will launch the graphics in a moment because I know how many of you love the scrap bags that we do. So quite often when our guest designers come in and they say, oh, this is what you get left over, or this is what's, um, this is what's available, you, uh, th these are what these scrap bags have been uh, put together by the warehouse team. So for Foundation for PC, for EPP, for any of your fabrics. I mean, I know lots of you have had full half meter pre-cuts in there. So they are absolutely brilliant. And this is why, Normally, at this time, we'd say, let's pick something else for the early bird. But um, actually, we have to wait for this. Also, on the website is the rest of the show. So you can see everything that's lined up for today, ready on pre-order, including those Bridgewater stitch removers. 40 of them, though. 40 available. We've got tools this first out. Bonder Web's already sold out. <laughs> that Bonder Web on a roll, my word, it is always very, very popular. There's the stitch remover. We've got the Robin Ruth rulers. We've got the bundles as well. We've got native lighting, electric scissors on split pay. If you keep scrolling, there's the bunting, the Easter bunting. You'll also see all of Kerry's Living in Loveliness kits that are now already live. Uh, brand new kits available. Oh, the girls last night were horrific. I'm at the top of a hill, says Julie. I know. Oh, and then there's the love from Beth. Gorgeous pattern, the Beth Studley pattern, which have been, I think every single Beth Studley pattern that we've done recently has been a sellout. It's been really, really popular. So get ahead and start shopping on there. Julie, I know it was so scary, wasn't it? I was saying my attempt at the sunburst bag was awful. So I'll be watching this to get some tips and we'll try again. Jill. Trust me, stay tuned for Barbara's tips because she's got lots of great tips. Hi, Elizabeth. Elizabeth says, morning, Princess hun Hungry Tummy. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I've got to go to the nurse for my uh, di uh, diabetic check, but at least I have you and Sewing Street and I can watch as a birthday treat. Oh, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. If I was allowed to sing happy birthday, I would. I don't think I'm allowed to. I think we have to pay a lot of rules to see if I sing happy birthday. Um, we've also had a message from Carol on the web. Morning, Vix. Looking very glamorous this morning. Thank you. Thank you. As, I'm, honestly, I I'm, uh, don't feel it. <laughs> I don't feel it, but thank you. Thank you. I'll take it as a compliment. Um, we've also had a message from Vanda. Morning, Vicky. Just finished making the cream cow kitchen set for my mum for Mother's Day. I think that was a Debbie Shaw, wasn't it? I think that's a Debbie Shaw kit. Oh, that's lovely. Do you know what? I don't think we can wait any longer. It's nearly ten past cat. Let's go for it. Who wants it? Now, you're going to have to trust me on this because they're all random anyway. So we were just going to get a random one sent to us. There you go. Graphics are live. They're just £12.99. So they're done by weight. You'll get a mixture of cottons. You could get felt. You could get ribbon. You could get PU. You could get canvases in there. But you could get a whole load of different fabrics for just £12.99. And this is a two kilogram bag. So there is a lot of fabric in there. Lots of fabric. It's not just solid fabric. It could be Tilda. It could be Moda. It could be Liberty. It could be William Morris. It could be any of these. And it's £12.99. Now, I really, 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 really hope that we've got enough to go around. I don't think we will. 
I don't think there's enough to go around. We've got 200 in, 200 in baskets. 200 in baskets, just so you know. There's, oh, they're about to sell out. They're about to sell out. We haven't even got it. We haven't even got it. They're about to sell out. They're about to sell out. Um, we have an early bird number two, though, don't we? Come on over to the other side, because that is about to sell out. Don't worry, warehouse team. Don't worry about the scrap bags. That's it. It's done. Right. Um, so... Oh, the chair dropped down on me then. So we had an early bird special a couple of days ago, which was the um, colour and tone guide. Oh, no. Do you know when you said to me the bump's definitely got bigger, it means my... my I'll just sit on the floor. <laughs> um, right, so we had the colour and tone guide a couple of days ago, and they have kept it still as an early bird special. Let me try and sort my chair out. I can't sit on the floor, can I? Um, now I'm not very good at pi <laughs> I'm not very good at picking colours and tones. Sorry, I'm going to just try once more and then we'll give up. Oh no! <gasps> no, it's not going to happen. We'll just stay down here today. So, colour wheels are really, really useful if you are trying to match um, coordinating colours. Oh, that's so, that's so upsetting, isn't it? When the chair just keeps going down. Oh, no. So, um, they're all different shades. So, for example, the yellows. If you take your colour wheel out, I'm just thinking, if I get a nice, I'll get a nice fabric to go with. Oh, thanks, Joe. He's bringing me in another chair. So, if I pick this colour here and we go to our blues, you match it up, which is the most similar blue. So, I'm probably going to go with this shade here. Um, I'll put my arrow there, that's labelled C. It will then give me the split complementary, which is giving me this lovely, like, ochre, deep, sandy colour, which is gorgeous. Then you will also get your split complementary fabrics, uh, sorry, uh, colours, and you'll also get your triads. So this is brilliant for anybody who, like me, who wants to, to, to get out of their comfort zone with different colours. My friend Tom, he's always... Sorry, we're just doing a bit of a shifter room. Um, my friend Tom, who, who messages on the Facebook Live, he'll always say to me, Vic, you're very, very grey in your decor. Everything's very grey. So just to inject a bit of colour, if you do want to see what is the perfect complementing colour, colour wheels are really, really useful. What also you get in here is a tonal estimator. Now, quite often we get a bit distracted by different patterns, and it is. I mean, a, a piece of, of red perspex, to be honest, but it's a really useful piece of red perspex because by looking through the tonal estimator, you will notice that the colour properties of the fabric are removed and the overall tone will appear light, medium or dark. It's really, really helpful when you're choosing fabrics for quilts. So if, for example, you're picking up, um, if you're taking... Uh, if you're looking at shades for Delphine's applique projects and you need to have light, medium and dark, or if you're doing tumbling blocks and you need light, medium and dark, this is really, really good to eliminate patterns, eliminate colours and just see tones. So that's another early bird special today, saving £2. Have the scrap bags completely gone? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we'll try and get more, we will try and get more. I know our team are always putting more together, so the next time they're in, I don't think it needed to be, I don't think it needed to be an early bird really, did it? But there you go, £12.99 was a great saving. Now you've opened your order, don't forget it's only one postage and packaging all day long. No, I wasn't, Joe. Are you testing the chair now? It stays up for you because you're a lot lighter than me. Oh, that's awkward, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> We've got da, 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 my favourite gadget. Now, this, this is actually quite funny. So, we've been going on about this for so, so long. We've been waiting to get this back in stock for what feels like months and months. Um, and we managed to get probably the biggest quantity that we'd ever seen. We had over 100 of these and they all sold out yesterday. So, yes, not yesterday, sorry, the day before yesterday. Um, yesterday, 
we took a trip to the warehouse. Uh, we were putting together some complimentary bundles, you know, as we do. Uh, we like putting together the bundles and seeing the, the physical fabrics in the warehouse. It's only over the road. We're really lucky that we've got the, the facility so close to us. Anyway, we were going through boxes and we found a box that had bridge, uh, Bridgewater stitch removers on. So we had a look in there and there were 40 of these boxes in here. So we spoke to the warehouse manager, we spoke to our team and we, we asked, we said, look, can we have these? We found them, can we have them? So this is a one shot thing, that this is it. We are allowed for these 40 and then that is everything out of the warehouse. There is nothing more that we have. We will reorder them, absolutely. The reason that I'm so excited about it, honestly, I wish you could see how excited we are at home every time that it comes back into stock. Um, but it, 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 I mean, we've had messages galore about this. It's brilliant. So it comes with your rechargeable cable. Um, you can use it with or without your cable. So even when it's, it's gone flat with battery, you can charge it up and you can still use it. Um, it looks like a hair removal device, doesn't it? But don't worry, it's designed especially for your fabric. So it's not going to tear your fabric. It's not going to damage your fabric. It also comes with a little brush and with um, a little air pump as well, just to give it a clean. Um, now, the brilliant thing about this is if, don't get me wrong, if you've done a whole line of stitches and then you've realised you've stitched it to, you're doing dressmaking, you've stitched it to the wrong side, or if you're doing, um, if you're thinking, oh actually, do you know what, I, I've, I've, I'm doing Bargello and I'm going to need to do lots of unpicking, it is brilliant. So, look at how quick and easily this will remove your stitches. Now I'm trying to do this at an angle that you can see it. It is the most, look, left-handed or right-handed, it will remove your stitches with ease, without tearing your fabric, without breaking into your fabric, so much quicker than if you were to do it with um, a hand unpicker. It is absolutely brilliant. What, you think we should get uh, do a race? Oh, I, I would, I would get really competitive with it. It's, it's not about, it's not necessarily about the speed of it. It's the fact of how efficient this is and how easy this is. Um, don't get me wrong, my seam ripper was always my best friend and also my worst enemy when I first started sewing. But even when you're, even as professional sewers, I know everybody who will give you tips will say, have the the, the unpicker close by because it is so so useful to be able to have um, close to you. you we always need it whether it just be for a couple of stitches or whether it be for um, whether it be for a, for a whole project for a bargello for example for, for full strips we've had a review come in for this um, it took less than no time to separate pieces from old um, an overlocked garment for me to hack into a, 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 to, into a new one, uh, which is brilliant, isn't it? So if you're upcycling, if you're taking apart a pair of jeans, if you want to take seams uh, away to, to do adjustments, it's not just for mistakes, it could be for upcycling, it could be for adjustments, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, oh yes! That's it, you know, if, um, for example, you've got bed sheets that you want to turn into a shirt or a garment and trying to unpick all of that would be a bit of a nightmare, wouldn't it? So if you've got clothes that now no longer fit that you want to take the seams apart to, to be able to, to restitch them and adjust them. Pardon, Joe, was that a cheeky comment? So it is absolutely brilliant and so, so quick, so easy to use. Loved by so many of our guest designers, so many of our customers as well. It's definitely worth asking on the fan page if you haven't already how brilliant it is. Half of our final stock has now gone. Now remember that this could take another couple of months. I hope we get it sooner. If we do, honestly, you will know about it. The day that it comes back in, we will absolutely have it on air. But this could be my last time I ever see this. Well, I say ever see this. I'm not, I am coming back. But this could be the last time that I see this for a good long time. So I'm making the most of it. Just 29 99 uh, Thank you to the management who have 
who have very kindly let us have this. Oh, so it, instead of two, um, two working together, could you remove just your top? I'm, sh I'm sure, I know you can with embroidery. Let's see if that will just... The problem is, is I've got the two layers. I we'll have to try it with one layer. Um, if anybody knows the answer to that, because I know loads of you who have got this, if you've just got like a row of um, top stitch, just one, you know, one layer of fabric, let me know, let me know if it works. But then um, we had somebody message saying they just get a kitchen cloth or the lint um, magnet cloth and this just will all brush away sellotape yes yeah, someone else used sellotape to wax it off the end bit so then you literally can just pull your little bit of thread off I mean that with a, a hand picker would be a lot longer you give it a little press and the holes will, will, will disappear as well if you've got it in your basket please be very careful because this is it this is the very last how many 20 Less than 20, less than 20 now. So we've also had a message come in from Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks, thanks for coming, Tommy. I've got my scrap bag. Yes, what a brilliant birthday present. Amazing. Um, the Sewing Street team have worked very, very hard to be able to get as many of them as possible. I think that we had 100 of those and they literally just went in a minute or two. Message from Sandra. Morning, lovely. L morning, lovely to see you this morning, but so disappointed I miss out on the early bird. Ah, I went as fast as I could. I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, so sorry that you missed it. Um, if I'm being really honest, I didn't realise it would go that quickly. We, ha we had a hundred of them. Um, it was very, very quick. So I'm so sorry you missed it. It's worth keeping your eyes peeled for when we do it again, because we will definitely do it again. Um, it just, as you can imagine, takes a little bit of time to put together as many as we can. We want to make sure that you, you're getting good scrap bags as well. So we will come back to this and I'll keep you updated, but it is absolutely brilliant. So the Bonder Web is now completely sold out. Well done if you managed to get it. We had so many back in, well, we have over the last couple of days had some brilliant deliveries come through and lots of back in stocks. Um, what shall we do next? Uh, it's the first time that I've seen the HT2 glue. Um, it's one that I know Debbie Shaw absolutely swears by for her bags. So those of you that have got any of those metal frames to go into purses, um, then this is absolutely ideal. And the reason being, the reason that it is so good, I'm not going to... Um, it is in our open sample, but I do just want to show you, if I just take the lid off, you can see that this has got a really, really long nib. So that will squeeze perfectly into your frames for, 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 bag, for bag making. Um, now, good, we've got lots of reviews on this. Uh, Margaret said, good quality glue, easy to use, and provided uh, the lid was replaced straight to after you, uh, use, it didn't leak out anywhere. Uh, great grab hold. Hmm? Great, good grab hold. Once it grabs it, it's got a good grab hold. Um, so it says on here as well, um, let me find it. Application for textiles, apply to one side and allow the glue strip to dry for seven minutes. Place the other uh, piece to it and then you iron for five to 10 seconds at the temperature suitable for the fabric. Um, so it is brilliant. This? Or are you on about the stitch remover? <laughs> Geraldine, they thought you were on about the glue. <laughs> Geraldine's just said that she's going to try it on her upper lip before she can go and get it waxed. <laughs> oh, honestly, oh, I'm not going to go into hair removal this early in the morning. That is so funny. Geraldine, uh, oh yeah, there you go. Beard, uh, hubby's beard trimmer does the same job. No, 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 don't try it with a beard trimmer because um, you'll probably end up catching your fabric. It is completely different to a beard trimmer. It is a stitch remover, but that's so funny. I haven't tried doing hair removal with a stitch remover though, no. We've seen Debbie Shaw use this. Um, if you get a tear in your fabric, I thought you said a hair. 
<laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, are we still on hair removal? Um, a tear in your fabric, then she uses this and it, to, to sort of patch it up, which is brilliant. £5.99. This is another thing that comes into stock and disappears and just goes. Um, it is quite sporadic when it comes in. Oh, the hoop behind me looks like I'm wearing a halo. It, was it when I was low? Was it when it, my chair was too low? Oh, like that. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Five pounds and 99 pence. We've got a lovely day today, by the way. We've got such a lovely day. Uh, wouldn't be without my stitch remover. It's fantastic, says Jackie. Derek's got one for his waistcoats. He said, um, hope my stitch re remover arrives soon. Thread sapped while sewing buttonholes last night. Grrr. Oh no. Um, stitch remover is great. Can we have a longer demo to remove embroidery, please? Um, yeah, we can. We should do that. We absolutely should do it. We should get some... I could just try and... <laughs> I don't think I'll, they'd be very happy with me if I start doing that. Catherine won't be happy if I start undoing everything. So no, that's something that we will absolutely do for you next time it comes in. Um, good morning, everybody. Now, we've also got the needle grippers. Now, we were talking about this yesterday. We were talking about this yesterday when we were stuffing our um, Owl and the Pussycat. £8.99. So, they look like scissors. Let's open them up. They are not scissors. They are not sharp at the t point. They are blunt. So, you're thinking, why is that useful? If they're called needle pullers uh, or needle grippers, so you can use them um, with, uh, in conjunction with your overlocker. But what I think they're brilliant for is one, using as your, what does um, John Scott call it, a dobber, to use it to point out all of your pokey ends without go using your scissors because you've got that um, smooth curve. But also they've got little teeth. Now that's not going to damage your fabric but this is going to cling on to any toy stuffing. If you do want to, uh, to make toys, then this is going to be really good to get right into the nitty gritty. Can you see, potentially, there you go. So it's got those slight little teeth, which aren't sharp again, but that's what's going to be able to grip onto a needle. If, you, if you're trying to pull um, your needle through really chunky layers, or denims or leather then this is going to be really good and they lock into place as well so at the top Joe here they've got all of these different sections so they lock into place um, or bottom top or bottom so um, yeah they lock into place as well so if you are stuffing or if you're pulling your needles through they are absolutely fantastic do you know who loves these Cara Ackerman she would not be without her hemostats. They are called hemostats in the um, medical profession. Perfect for tough hand sewing, ideal for changing serge needles, um, your uh, uh, overlocker needles. Um, but as I said, also a lot of toy makers use this. <sighs> no, Jennifer. No, we don't want to talk about that. Okay, we've also got, talking of toy stuffing, if you do want to make some lovely um, toys or if you need some for the owl and the pussycat doorstops that we did yesterday, then this is your recycled toy stuffing. Um, now, I love this. We, I've, we never get it in stock and it's brilliant. We're always thinking more about, you know, being friendly to the environment. And these used to be plastic bottles and they're now really super, super soft uh, toy filling. Great for toys, great for cushions. Four pounds and ninety nine pence, just four ninety nine. And remember, it's only one post in packaging. So those of you that have already opened your order, which loads of you had, it's just one P and P today, all day long. And trust me, it is a good day to be involved because we've got Kerry, we've got Barbara as well, we've got double guests. Um, this is the only hour that I'm on my own today. Lovely and soft. It's made from recycled material. It's a winner on all counts. Fantastic, Kay. Thank you for your review. When you get your bits and bobs home, please would you share reviews? Because it is really good for anybody who, you know, is umming and ahhing on what to buy. Um, you do normally get an email after your purchases from FIFO. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just spending a minute or two just 
doing review, it really, really does help everybody because I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to take everybody else's word for it. So yes, have a go for it. It's only £4.99 if you haven't tried this one before. Give it a go, it is super, super soft. Now, coming up in Kerry's shows, she will talk about 80-20 wadding. And this is what we're talking about. Uh, so if you want to get ahead, ready for living in loveliness projects, this is ideal, absolutely ideal. Sorry that I sound like a broken record. I've, I have spoken about this for the last couple of days, but we love it. The quality of it's amazing. It's 6 99 and a half meter. You can buy as much as you want and it is sold by the half meter. So um, if you want three meters to back a big quilt, and maybe an unfinished project, this is your time. Oh no, are you all right? Oh, we just heard a massive sigh from my director Joe in the gallery and it's because he's left his croissants in the, in the kitchen. Oh, and he was really upset about it. Oh, how are we going to get through the rest of the hour, Joe? Oh, I'm sorry if the camera work is a bit shoddy for the rest of the half an hour, but Joe really wants his croissants. <laughs> that was a really serious sigh. I was concerned then. Six pounds ninety-nine, eighty twenty. So it's good that it's got the polyester in it as well, because one, it's going to be great to chuck in the wash if you're using it for for quilts, for for cushions, if you're using it for bags, if you're using it for smaller projects. The best thing about this, though, is it's extra extra wide. It's two hundred and forty-four centimeters wide. It's not very often that we get to do this by the half meter. Every time we do, it comes in in the hundreds. Susie Duncan, I've been using my forceps from my university um, dis dissertation, no, dis dissection kit for needle changing. They're so good for gripping those slippery needles. There you go. I, I'm getting a bit concerned people keep calling them forceps. Is that, is, is that what forceps look like? I thought they're called hemostats. Hemostats. Um, Lucy said, morning, lovely. Needle grippers are amazing for many things, from bag making to toy making. Thank you very, very much. Um, yeah, Pauline, you're right. Pause the show, everybody. Get him his croissants. Get him his croissants. Deary me. Morag, can you please give me a shout at nine o'clock doing my first test at home? Absolutely, yes, of course. We'll give you a we'll give you a shout. We'll set the alarm. Good shout, Joe. I'll get a croissant for a freezer. Delicious. Oh, enjoy everybody having your brekkie. Okay, so six ninety nine a half meter, but you can buy as much as you want. What haven't you seen for a long time? <gasps> Thermalan. Thermalan. Where have I put my Thermalan? I have seen this. Right. So Thermalan is brilliant. It's it's another type of wadding. Um, it's a Visaline official product. Uh, it's again, I think, sold in one meter pieces. So if you purchase, I don't think it comes. Yes, I am right. It doesn't come um, on the roll. It comes as a one meter pre-cut piece. So it's one meter by 90 centimeters. So it's big. Well, to be honest, I wouldn't use it for much bigger projects than this anyway. And if you do want to use it for, for example, an ironing board or something where you want it longer, you can stitch them together, no problem. But it's, it is a compressed fleece. So this isn't the one with the metal running through. This is the one that can go in the microwave. So if you want to make yourself some bowl cozies, or if you want to, to make something that you know you are going to, to put into the microwave, it is safe. It's a compressed fleece that is designed to keep the heat in or keep the cool in. So if you want to make lunch boxes, picnic bags, fingers crossed we're going to be going out to picnic soon, which would be brilliant. If you do want to use it for something where you're going to put heat directly on it, so for example, table runners, placemats, hot pots, coasters, ironing board covers, if you want to use it for oven gloves. The thing is though, if you are putting heat directly on it, I know Visaline recommend using a couple of layers, a couple of layers of it. Have a look on their website if you want a bit more further information. Have a look on Visaline's website to see. So, so soft. Um, don't want to use, it's so, so soft, I don't want to use it. It's such good quality, need to think hard on what to make. That's from Trudy. Oh, Trudy, it's lovely, isn't it? It isn't something that I would use to quilt, to use a, for a big 
quilt project, I would use my 8020. But if you are doing something that is going to be either kept hot or cold, wanting to keep hot or cold, then this is absolutely brilliant. Table runner, protect your table, absolutely. As it is heat resistant, it's not heat proof. So don't go making yourself a full fire suit with it because it's um, it's not heat proof, it's heat resistant. Just want to make that clear. Um, Five pounds 99, but as I said, they do recommend using a couple of um, layers if you're making things like oven gloves. Okay, right. Yeah, there was the uh, Bozel. Bozel. Single sided Bozel is my favourite. Um, because, like with your H640, if you've got a single sided uh, foam like this, uh, when I say single sided, the, I mean adhesive. So you can get Bozel that's got no adhesive on, you can get a Bozel that's double sided adhesive, which it's great, but if you just, for bag making, for example, want to adhere it to one of your fabrics, then this is perfect. Uh, sometimes with a double-sided, you obviously have to be aware on what you're sandwiching. If you're doing quilting, like quilt as you go, um, little projects, then yeah, the double-sided is quite good. Um, but I absolutely love this. Now, the reason Debbie Shaw absolutely loves it, the reason Kerry from Living in Loveliness absolutely loves it, is because it gives you brilliant structure. You can sew through it no problem. Uh, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of different interfaces and different foams out there that aren't best friends with your iron. Debbie always says the reason that she chooses Bozel is because you can just, without pressing it down on it, just get it home and give it a good steam with your iron. It likes steam, so it will release, uh, relax any of the creases that you might have in it. Great product, easy to work with, and would recommend. That's from uh, Eliza. Now look at how big it is as well. That is a lot, a lot of Bozel. It's cut off the bolt for you. It's another one that if you do want to buy a metre, two units, it will come joined together. It's £11.99. I think for storage tubs this is ideal because it really squashes down lovely but then it holds its shape very, very well. Uh, a bit more so than H640. Um, right, we've also got... Uh, an Alison Marion favourite. She's not um, sponsored by Fiskar Snips, but you would think it. You would think it when you see her on air because she loves these. They are brilliant. For anybody who has dexterity problems or um, if you're struggling to, 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 to work with scissors, these are fantastic. What I also like is the fact that they're so handy to use. If you've got them uh, next to your sewing machine, just to cut off any... Um, just to, to, uh, to trim off any extra bits of thread, to snip right into the curves. Can you see that you've got this really, how do, what, how do I describe this? You've got like a tapered point at the end there, which means you get this really precise cut. So if you are snipping into curves for dressmaking or for, for bag making, then you can see it's got that really lovely fine point. Now it's also, got the spring, so it's less pressure on your hands. It's 14 99 it's Fiskars. It is Fiskars. 14 pounds, 99 pounds, with a nice soft, first soft grip, uh, for a really nice soft grip. Okay, speaking of Fiskars, we've got a rotary cutter and ruler combo. Once again, for anybody who struggles with a rotary cutter, and whether it be because of, of dexterity issues or whether it be because uh, of being nervous using a rotary cutter, this is fantastic because I, I still tend to, to wobble a bit using my rotary cutter, whereas this, you know you're guaranteed to go straight in a line. Obviously, you want to make sure that you use it with your cutting mat. Please make sure you're using it with your cutting mat. I'm not going to apply pressure because we haven't got the cutting mat down. But if you were to hold this down, um, then that will engage the blade and, like a guillotine, work really, really smoothly, really efficiently, and you'll be able to cut the full width of your fabric. Uh, as it is 24, cent uh, 24 inches. So it is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You have got your two in one. Now, if I'm being brutally honest, I'm not a fan of two in ones normally because I think you're probably compromising. You've all heard that I've not got on with a washer dryer ever. Um, I, I just think that you're almost compromising one or the other. Whereas with Fiskars, this, 
you have got a top quality rotary cutter and a really, really top quality ruler. So you've got lots of great angles on there. You've got all of your measurements throughout. You can see that they're in black and also in white. So you're going to be able to see no matter what fabric you're using. Um, it's a really, really lovely quality. Now it takes a 45 millimeter blade, which is your standard rotary blade. You'll be able to replace it with majority of your, you know, your normal 45 millimeter um, rotary blades, including your Fiskars one. It does work in conjunction with the blade change tool, which we'll show you in a moment as well. Uh, but it is fab. Great tool, sturdy and easy to use, says Hazel. If you're doing lots of strips, if you're cutting strips into triangles, uh, then this is perfect, absolutely. Oh, amazing, Susie Duncan's just said, toy stuffing is perfect uh, for today, as I'm just about to make a Tilda monkey using Liberty Fabrics. Ah, oh, right, so Tilda, Tilda, they always have like lovely little long, very slim limbs. So let me know how you get on turning them through, Susie. Any tips on turning them through? Now, talking about the blade change tool, we might as well show you now. Right, I want to get this in the best position so you can see it, but I am doing this at a bit of a funny angle. The blade change tool looks like this. So, um, this is what it will look like in the packet. It comes with five Fiskars rotary blades. It's $29.99. For just a second, forget that this is a blade change tool, so you're not going to have to touch the blade. It's really, really safe. It's really efficient. It's really quick. Just the fact that you're getting five Fiskars, Fiskars quality 45 millimeter blades, I think is absolutely great value for money anyway, regardless. It's like you're getting the tool for free. So this is what it looks like. It looks a bit sort of complicated at the start. It's really, 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 really not. So there's already blades in this size. This is where you keep your old blades. It has got a magnet there. So um, if, I, if I flip it over, if I slide up the clear plastic, um, it's got a magnet in here as well. So it's taken the next blade up here. I'm not having to touch it and it's released that next blade. Um, so that's, that's, already that's already got the, uh, the magnet in. So this one's got a blade in already. So I'll show you how you change it. I'm just wondering where to put it, Kat. We can see if we can fit any more in the old slot. Or a little case would be good just in case just in case so that one comes off like this your orange part you can see here has got the old blade it's also got a magnet on so I'm not needing to touch this even though it's an old blade it is still very very sharp now oops ordinarily you would put this then into here and it will um, it will have the magnet to, to stop it but I think that we're quite full in there so We've got a, a case from here. We'll put that in there. And you can do this normally without touching it at all. So that will then just sit into your case. Then you take your blade changing tool. You've got your new blade, she says. You get your new blade, which it should just release again. Ah! I knew that we'd gain a pickle with this. Right, I'm going to take that old that magnet from here, and that will slip into there. There we go. Then put it onto my orange part. That will sit onto here without touching it again. I've made it. I've made it probably look a lot more complicated than it is, and it's really, really not. It's really easy. Let's do it backwards. Right, so then you slot that in, and once again, you haven't had to touch it at all. That will screw in, and you've got your brand new sharp blade all there. Now, you can use this with your rotary cutter, your Fiskars rotary cutter. You can also use it with the pivoting rotary cutter, and you can use it with this one as well. It does come with five blades, so just be aware that even when you think they're blunt, they are sharp, so do be very, very careful. It is really good to be able to have something like this to not only store your old blades, but also um, have your nice fresh blades that are completely concealed. Fantastic, right. So, that is your blade change tool. Now, we've also got some pins, some pins, some pins. 
Um, we've got the glass head pins, which I love because sometimes if you're getting pins like this that haven't got a glass head, if they're plastic, if you're using them in conjunction with your iron, they could melt. They will melt onto your fabric. So these are glass headed pins. They're not going to melt when your iron touches them. And they are really, really lovely and long. You're always going to see them as well, aren't you? You're always going to see them. Um, you're always going to see them because they've got that nice yellow head. But look at how lovely and long they are. If you're doing foundation paper piecing, if you're going to get involved in our 11 o'clock show, oh, you need these. You absolutely need these. You'll see we do lots and lots of pinning with our FPP bag. Just £3.99. Always make sure that you take them out um, at your sewing machine. Uh, but they come in a nice little uh, box as well for just £3.99. One of those that, look, if you, um, if you do a lot of sewing, it's something that we never really think about too much, but you might have blunt pins. I know our Janice, she came in, she says, I've had these for about 20 years. And John was saying, I think you need new pins. So maybe today, if you've opened your order already, you've got your scrap bag or you've got anything from the show and you're thinking, do you know what? It might be time for me to swap some pins. They're only 3 99 and you've already paid your P&P &P anyway. We've also got the lovely, oh, we've got Kerry in today. She absolutely loves this dish. So ours is well loved. Ours is full. It comes with a couple of pins uh, included. It comes with a couple of the, uh, the flower head pins, actually. But it is a lovely rose gold magnetic pin dish. So there's a magnet at the bottom. There you go, as you can see. And this is all magnetic as well. So um, it is brilliant. If you've got any pets or if you've got any uh, little fingers and you just want to collect your pins, then you can see you can collect all of these pins in your dish. I know lots of, I've seen a lot on the Facebook fan page, in fact, that lots of people have got the little trolleys like we have in the studio, and they'll sit on the, on the trolley like this, even sideways, because they stick. Uh, nice weight and hold pins very well with magnet. Thank you, from Richard. Um, I know that Kerry loved this in particular for when she was doing her folded baubles, her star folded baubles, because she had a polystyrene ball in here. So if you're doing anything that you, you're decorating, maybe Easter eggs and things like that that you're decorating, it'll catch your pins then. If you're doing these fabric beautiful Easter eggs, then this is ideal. Eight pounds 99. While, Susan, uh, while Susie Duncan is watching, you are now officially our uh, Robin Ruth ambassador, Susie. We've just, uh, we've just claimed it now because Susie did a fantastic demo on the Robin Ruth rulers on our birthday. It was on the Thursday, the 4th of March, if you want to watch the show back. 59 99 that's for your book and for your ruler. Now, the ruler comes with... Am I allowed to open this up? The ruler comes with some really, really great markings as well. We went through this in such depth with Susie, so I suggest watching the show back because I'm not going to be able to recap it all. But you've got two uh, different templates on here. So you've got A and B, all great markings on there. This is like a, a, a brown paper on the back, which you peel off before you use it, obviously. Um, it also comes with all of your circle templates. And this book is brilliant. It looks quite complex. Don't be daunted by it because actually it's just really comprehensive. It breaks it down really, really clearly. So you're making mariner's compass here without having to do foundation paper piecing. So to be able to get this precision normally is really difficult, um, but made easy with the Robin Ruth rulers. So you can do blocks from six inches right up to 36 inches. And you can do this skinny, the difference with the skinny and the fat robin is the, the, the size of the, the shards on the compass or the blades on the compass. Uh, so you can do it as a plique. There's lots of great quilts in here as well. It isn't just a technique book. You also have some brilliant, absolutely brilliant um, quilts in here. Look at these. It isn't a little pamphlet, a pamphlet that you get with your ruler. This is a full, full book. It's brilliant. In fact, Susie's here. She says, it's amazing ruler. I love the compass block. The ruler makes it so easy. 
Oh, Susie, she says, thank you, Vicky. It's hilarious that you're now the ambassador. She said, honestly, though, we have had so many incredible positive um, messages come in since your show saying how easy you made it, uh, how easy you made it and how you really broke it down so well, Susie. So it's definitely worth anybody who gets this book, watch the show back the 4th of March. OK, we also have the larger one the fat robin so this is again exactly the same sort of uh, principle but with large blades so you can again make from six wider blades from six to 36 inches so the same size is just wider blades this time so you can make a 16 point mariner's compass with this and you can do it as a compass sunflower, a round sunflower, a raw edge applique sunflower, mariner's compass obviously looks like this. It also comes obviously with your ruler and circle templates for the, the circle centrepieces of all of your blocks which is really useful to have anyway isn't it? 59.99. Now we also did a deal so for our birthday we did a special deal we're going to honour it today because I said it feels like a bit of a birthday show today. We've got two guests in. We've got bunting up. Um, I think we've still got some cake here, haven't we? Surely, probably. Um, £109.98, which means because of the birthday, we opened a new bracket of split pay. It means you can get this with two split payments of £54.99 um, and you're saving ten. Pound. I didn't realise we were still able to do that deal. I thought that was only for the birthday. Um, yeah, I don't know whether we're supposed to be doing that deal. I'm not sure. But make the most of it. Absolutely make the most of it. That is such a brilliant prize. If you want to give these rulers a go, this is now the best and most uh, cost-effective way of doing it. £109.98 or split payments, £54.99. Okay. So, I know that we're, we're running out of time slightly, but we'll try and squeeze in as many of these as we possibly can. How are we getting on with the um, seam ripper? There's still a couple remaining. Please don't think you've missed out on the seam ripper. Please don't think you've missed out. There is still time to be able to get that. Now, I've got four different quilt labels. We're going to start with the traditional. Um, now, these are our exclusive pre-printed brilliant quilt label panels it's red mustard and gray this one which is lovely for lots of different projects so you've got your squares you've got some hexes here i think you get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven labels on here twenty seven including lovely little handmade handmade with love stitch with love We've all um, been making lots and lots of projects over the last year and I think it's really important you label them, whether you're gifting them or not. We, it's good to see your progression, it's good to see when it was that you made it and I don't just mean quilts, um, bags, toys, cushions, even in the back of a dress. Label it, absolutely. £7.99, so that's the red, mustard and grey. These have got the same shapes, just different colours. Nice for Father's Day, actually. These are really lovely um, colours. You've got blues, pinks and lilacs. Blues, pinks and lilacs, that's your traditional colours. And, and they've also got the lovely tags, as I said, that say Stitch With Love. Some that you can, of course, hand embroider onto. You could use your machine embroider and, and, and do your alphabets on there. Or you could simply write on it using one of those mark pens that when you iron it, it permanently fixes. So it doesn't need to be something that, you know, you have to stitch onto. Your ditzy quilt labels. Oh, this is pretty for baby makes. Oh, little baby makes. They're lovely, aren't they? And look, these ones got sewing machines on. Oh, you're in a weird harmony there. No, not a great harmony. Woo! My Debbie Shaw, Japanese knot bag has arrived. Willow, let us know how you get on. Kara did a great demo on that as well, so you can watch that on YouTube if you get struggle on them, think. And then finally, the pinks. Little pink ditzy hearts, £7.99. 
for your 27 quilt labels. 29 pence a label to be exact, which is brilliant. And nice different sizes depending on what projects. Nice to have different sizes depending on what projects you're doing. Okay, we've also got the Bondle Web on the Roll completely sold out. If you are wanting to stock up on Bondle Web, we've got Bondle Web in a metre pack. Without a doubt, one of the most popular um, products that we stock here. One of the most requested. I wonder if it has anything to do with our friend Delphine um, or Helen Newton. We have seen some amazing applique projects over this last, um, couple, well, since we started this year. Well, in fact, from the start of Sewing Street, it's just been brilliant. But if you do want to have a go at um, applique, if you wanted to stock up on some for maybe the Owl and the Pussycat door stops that we did yesterday, or just want to attach your quilt labels and stitch them on, Bonder Web's really, really useful. Just £2.99 for your pack. It's um, 1.2 metres. Okay. Another back in stock, which I think we thought we ha were going to have the other day, and we didn't. We had a foundation paper piecing show with uh, Wendy Orlando. We've got another FPP show coming up today. Add to quarter rulers will make your life so much easier. It will make it so much better because you've got a quarter of an inch lip down the side of both of these rulers. There's two rulers here, two rulers. You get two different sizes depending on what project you're doing. So not only does it have that tapered edge that you can fold your paper back or your card back, um, your paper back, you can also um, use that quarter of an inch to be able to butt it up and have it as a seam allowance as well. Margaret has said, please could you advise what is the coloured item is sitting in front of your table on the right hand side? Is it this? Yesterday's early bird. It's still at an early bird price as well, Margaret. It's the colour wheel, the colour and tonal wheel, which is brilliant to be able to match different fabrics. You've also got your tonal estimator in there. It's just $4.99. Grab your out of quarter plus, make the most of the early bird as well. Um, the other early bird today sold out completely, so please do make sure you're checking out your baskets. Have a look, anything that we missed out today is still underneath us on the website so you can make the most of it. More ag is coming up to nine o'clock, just said I thought I'd let you know. First test at nine o'clock more ag, so just thought I'd let you know. Um, we've got Barbara coming up with a lovely bunting, bit of springtime Easter bunting. Don't go anywhere, we're back with Barbara after this. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. 
You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being well our family run customer service team are on call 24 7. they're full of friendly warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible and not only will they take your order they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out Welcome back. I'm trying to wait to Barbara and I thought, Do you know what, I'm just going to ask you these questions on the show because there's so, oh, there's so many uh, lovely comments about this bunting. Um, I think we all absolutely love it, especially going into spring, going into Easter. Um, these are absolutely adorable. I love this. I want to put this up in my new nursery. This is so nice. I haven't got a nursery yet, but when I move house in the summer, this will be lovely. Um, we've got all of these beautiful fabrics um, and putting together a lovely bundle which will make the bunting that you could see on the set before. Um, so you have loads of fabric here. I will talk to Barbara about how far this bundle will go but it will go such a long way depending on different combinations of fabrics and patterns and colours etc. But that is lovely isn't it? Two and a half metres of fabric. How adorable is this bunny print? <gasps> It's absolutely amazing. So in your bundle, you get all of your fabrics. You also get Barbara's instructions. You get your templates. They're nice instructions actually, aren't they? They're really nice instructions. And then you also get your binding. So you also get your uh, 2.5, I think it's uh, 2.5 meters. Yeah, it's 12 mil binding. Uh, for just 19.99, so you get half a meter of this amazing Easter rabbit. I know that people are going to ask, no, 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 no. The only way of being able to get this is in the bundle. So grab the bundle if you love this fabric. I know only 19.99 as well is brilliant. Even if you're thinking of other projects, you also get half a meter of lemon, half a meter of light lilac, half a meter of peach, and half a meter of candy. 19 pounds and 99 pence oh my word i'm so so sorry if you missed this because this is going to sell out very very quickly we've got less than 15. it's extremely busy this morning really busy i told you it feels like the birthday still today it really does um and especially i think that we're all seeing slight light at the end of the tunnel and i know that we've all still got to be super super careful but oh i just can't wait for summer can you Bit of spring, bit of summer. These are so beautifully, oh, just so beautifully decorative. Um, they're lovely, absolutely lovely. Now we've also got another pastel one. So check out on that one before the demo. There's less than 10 of them available. Uh, right, so you get your instructions. You get your binding, the same binding with this, two and a half meter binding. It's 12 millimeter in width. You get this time, your half a meter of that lovely floral print. Plus then you get half a metre of pink, half a metre of chambray, half a metre of lavender, and half a metre of blush. 
£22.99. Plus, you're getting, of course, your instructions, loads of those in baskets straight away. I love bunting. I think it's such a lovely make to do. Um, whether it's for a christening, whether it's for a special birthday, whether it's for a, a, a baby shower or a nursery or just decorative around the home. It's so lovely and a really nice project too for weddings as well. Once you've got the pattern, it will be lovely to be able to do with different fabrics for different occasions and being able to embellish as well. So you've got your templates and you've got your... Um, all of your instructions, plus you've got today's demo to watch back for just £22.99. We love that one. Now, the one that Barbara is working with, and I think you're going to love this, when you start seeing it come together, it's really fun. It's so bright and vibrant. Cat, I think you need to jot this down as one of your bundles. Cat loves putting together bundle shows, but this works so well, doesn't it? So this time, this is more of a cotton canvas. It's slightly heavier weight. We'll talk about that. Um, I know that Barbara said it's really lovely to work with, so we'll talk about working with the heavier weight fabric as well. So you've got your cotton canvas, half a metre, which is extra wide. You've also got lovely bright orange, half a metre. Half a metre of peacock. Half a metre of lime. And you've also got half a metre of gold. Plus this time you're getting two and a half metres of your beautiful yellow bias binding. It's 12 millimetres wide. You get your instructions, jot down today's date so you can watch the video about when you're making £22.99. Such good value for money. And wait till you see it made up as well. I know this is the one that Barbara's going to be working with, so you'll see it coming together. The Easter bunnies are less than five. Easter bunnies about to sell out, just so you know. Don't let this one pass you by though, because that's so good for summer. I'd buy both. Easter, summer, this is so much fun. Okay, today... We can also do the instructions on their own. Brilliant. We're just going to do it now because I know a lot of people are going to be asking. Imagine with Liberty. Imagine with the beautiful, beautiful fabrics that we've launched over the last few weeks. This isn't just any bunting, by the way. These are pockets. I don't know whether you can see by the photograph, but these are pockets. So if you want to do it as a bit of a, an advent calendar at Christmas, if you want to do it where you can hide your mini eggs, um, or, or do some sort of Easter egg hunt. That would be perfect for Easter. Nine pounds and 99 pence. You could also do it with um, in your crafting room, couldn't you? And have little spools or do something, you know, quite creative with it. So yeah, let us know what you're thinking of putting in the little pockets. Just nine pounds and 99 pence. We are very, very limited on the instructions on their own. Very limited now, so do make the most of it. Plus, remember, you get your template included as well. If you've got any questions for Barbara, obviously she wrote the instructions. Um, please get them in. Get them in, get them in, get them in. Shall we just do, very, very quickly, and I mean really quickly, we're going to fly through these, some little Rick Rack trimmings. We've got wine. We've got wine colour. Now, I always thought, oh, Rick Rack, it's a bit difficult to sew on, isn't it? Because you have to go all, all sort of wavy line. You don't. You just stitch straight through. It's so easy. And it adds lovely decorative trim. So if you want to put that across your pocket, if you want to have it across the top of your binding, there's loads of ways of using Rick Rack. It's only 99p, so we can't stay on it too long. We've also got the what, sorry? Oh, the Easter's completely sold out. Congratulations if you got it. The other pastel one's lovely and the bright summer one is, is, is so much fun as well. We've also got the blue Rick Rack. Your blue Rick Rack, it's a metre piece, it's eight millimetre Rick Rack. I think it's the first time I've seen Rick Rack here on Sewing Street. We used to have it all the time on Sewing Caution. I don't think we've had it here. And it's really lovely to add as decorative trims for, for little children's clothes, for accessories, for bags cushions for bunting it's ideal 99 pence and then finally the purple the purple is a lovely deep purple isn't it this will look really really nice as well with the um with with the uh the one that is available the pastel one that is available 99 pence are you stuck joe can you go to barbara or not Oh no. Shall I hide? <laughs> <laughs> Do you 
just 99 pence for your Rick Rack. Remember, your instructions are available on their own. We're back, we're back. He's had his cross on, I think, now. I think he went into, oh no, he hasn't had his cross on. He I, says it's just the I button thought earlier he, he didn't have his Crocs on. That's what oh, thought. you thought I said he hasn't <laughs> got his Crocs, Crocs on. on. Oh, he needs his Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's got his Crocs on, he just hasn't had his <laughs> breakfast. Your main graphic is going to be, by the way, the summer bundle, which is the one that Barbara's going to be working with. How are you, Barbara? I'm good, thank you. Hello. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you very much. Last thank time I you. saw you, you were saying, oh, next time I see you, I'm going to be a grandma. Yeah, and I am. I'm a two-day-old grandma. Oh! So. <laughs> This is so exciting. Yeah. How are they all doing? Yeah, they're really, really well. Really doing very well. So well done to Lucy and Tom. Now, Lucy and, and Tom have had twins, two identical have, boys. Yeah, Callum and Ewan. Oh, so. how exciting. Yeah. How exciting. Yeah, fingers crossed proud. it won't be too long until you get to, to meet them and yeah, have cuddles. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Oh. They're beautiful. Beautiful, oh. beautiful. So oh, how obviously exciting. I'm a biased grandma, but. <laughs> oh, I love are. it. Absolutely they love are. it. I'm so excited for you. Thank now, um, the Easter bundle's already sold out. I Fantastic. think it's so it lovely. It is lovely. Isn't? I love, I love, love, love these this bunny fabric. It's beautiful. <gasps> so cute, isn't really it? Really nice. Working with the one um, that you, you're working with this now. One, it's yeah, a heavier it's weight. One. It um, is a heavier canvas, weight isn't cotton it? canvas. It's lovely. It's really nice. And actually, because the pattern is so bold, you yeah. can use, you can get more out of this fabric yeah. because the, you can use it upside down. Oh, okay. So um, it doesn't matter if the oranges are upside down or the lemons are upside because it, it just works. So it's lovely. It's really nice fabric to work with. And how much bunting am I going to be able to make so with the bundles? Obviously, the bias binding that you've got in the pack is two and a half metres long. Okay. Um, so on that, you will get around about 18 triangles. Right. Um, 18 bunting pockets. Um, if you want to make more out of the, the bundle that you've got, you're probably going to get about 30. So oh. you could make quite a lot of bunting on, on the pack. On the, uh, just need more binding. Yeah, just need more binding. So Fantastic. Perfect. It's, it's really good. We've got a message um, come through saying, congratulations, Barbara. Thank you. Being a grandma of an eight-month-old gra grandson has been the best thing ever. Oh, bless. Oh, and two little boys I know. As well. just want to squeeze them. <laughs> oh, amazing. Yep. I love this colourway. Yeah, me too. I love it. It's my favourite one. I do like the, I like the, the Easter one, but this is my favourite. I love bright colours. Um, so, yeah, it is. And it's matching. I bought I bought a top with matching colours in. So yeah, <laughs> kind absolutely. Of went, no, it is. It's it's amazing. It's lovely. Lovely in summary. Right. So yeah. where do we start? We get okay, the template so in the instructions. You've got the template we? in your instructions. Yeah. Um. So you can either copy them, um, or you can cut them from your pattern that you've you've bought. I would tend to use a, a slightly larger, a, sorry, slightly um, thicker card. Yeah. Um, and use that as the template. So okay. you've always got those yeah. to use. Um, and then you're going to just cut out your fabrics. I have cut them out already. Okay. I've been very productive. Do you do it with your rotary cutter? I do, do it with scissors? the rotary cutter, yeah. yeah. Um, it's much easier to do it with the rotary cutter. Um, you have got, you can use these, um, yeah. you know, rulers, rulers um, mm -hmm. and use those. But I, I use a rotary cutter and a, yeah. and a mat. So, um, Yep, so you just cut out all of your triangles. You do them all different colours, then you can mix and match them. You can have them at the front like I've done here. Um, or you can use the cotton canvas as the backing. So just change yeah. it up and do, do as you wish. Well, that's really. all part of the yeah, fun, isn't it? it's great fun, yeah. Let me just push that that way. Uh, so, yeah, so we cut these out in different um, sizes, as you can see. And, and then we're going to put them together. Because of the so. size of the oranges and the lemons as well, you don't actually lose any of them, no. do you? No, and I found with um, this, you don't... For me, I didn't even really want to put any um, decoration on it because it's so bright and bold. Yeah. It, the fabric kind of does it for you, so it, it doesn't really need to have too much. Mm. I mean, you can, but I, I liked it because it's quite bold. Um, so yeah, so these are obviously all the different sizes. And so then the first thing we're going to do is with the smaller triangle, mm -hmm. um, we're going to take that, I'll just move those out of the way, uh, and we're going to just hem the top 
because this is going the smaller triangle will be your pocket okay. on the front of your bias uh, on the front of your bunting. So if I just Oh we've got loads of congratulation messages for you. Thank you. You'll have to have a read of them all. I in will the break. do. <laughs> oh. Got the iron stuck. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is that can you see that? Is we're just gonna turn this over and we are using um, a quarter inch okay. seam on all of this, okay? So we're just going to turn that over. It's the first for me. I've never used a cordless iron. What do you think? It's great. I was thinking, you know, sometimes um, I've got cordless vacuum and mm -hmm. and it, it really annoys me that when it runs out of charge, it then takes about a half an hour and I could be halfway through and I think, Oh, that's really annoying. But this iron, it recharges in five. It reheats in five seconds. Oh wow! So if you need to okay. put it back onto yeah, the, it's, it's really the holster, if it starts to cool down, it mm. literally only takes five seconds to reheat. Okay. So I've just turned that over twice. Okay. Okay. About a quarter of an inch, and then we're just going to take it to the sewing machine and do a little stitch in. Um, and again, because you've got so many colours in. Um, in the bunting, it doesn't matter what colour cotton you use, so you can pick any of those. I've gone for the peacock colour because I like the that colour. But you could use, you know, in the front there, you could use green yeah. or yellow or just change yeah, it up play around with all your different colours. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly. The uh, Beldray 2-in-1 cordless iron is back in stock this week. It's on pre-order on the website. Okay, so that's our... They're down here. Keep moving, Mum. <laughs> Just going to snip that. Sorry, we keep tidying around everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like all our new tidy... I love it. Office? It's really nice, <laughs> yeah. We've had a bit it's of organisation the last couple of weeks. Okay, so... That's the pocket made. Lovely. Okay, so let's put that to one side. And then it's just choosing what you, I mean, on the bunting I'm, I've started here, um, I've kind of been doing it. So I've got a backing mm -hmm. and uh, a plain front, and then I've gone a plain back mm -hmm. with a, um, a patterned front, patterned pocket. So for this one, um, I will use, an orange back, so this will be what my bunting looks like. Oh, I love it! And and it's nice. You can be it? completely random with it yeah. because they all work, don't yeah. they? So well, all the you colours. could do all the fronts as patterned if you wanted to, yeah. and then all the backs as different colours, yeah. or you know, vice versa. Um, you will get more bunting, um, obviously, if you use the different colours, mm -hmm. the plain colours rather than the patterned, because you won't get so many from the patterned yeah. one, but. Um, and then I'm going to choose a blue for the back, okay? So we will put the uh, the front together and then the back of your um, bunting is going to go on to the top of your uh, front. So it's nice so and plush, like it's this. not just single sided? No, it's nice and thick. You could, you could line it if you wanted to, okay. if you wanted it to be a bit more sort of sturdy. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about things you could put inside this as the on. summer one. So I was thinking, um, we've got a camper van. So um, you could hang it up in the camper van and put things like your like your bracelets. And when you get yeah. in at night time and you just want somewhere to pop your Good idea. bits and pieces, yeah. you could put your sunglasses in there. Yeah. You could put your straws, you know, if yeah. you were if you were having a, a, party, a party in the garden or something, you could put all your bits of... Um, you know, your, your fancy straws in there. Good idea. Or, you know, just bits and pieces. So once this is together, we're going to pin it together or um, some people prefer to use the, the quilting clip. So we'll just put those um, down the side just to keep it all together when we're going to sew it. Congratulations on the twin grandsons, but be aware if they turn out like my brothers, they were more than double trouble. <laughs> It'll only last while they're toddlers, though. Oh, bless. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've got four brothers, and they're just as bad now oh, as they gosh. were <laughs> when they were younger. <laughs> <laughs> Your um, 
Quilting clips are still at an early bird price at the moment, aren't they? They're 9 99 9 99 They're on pre-order section if you want to check out. Okay, so um, obviously pin them or quilt, quilt them. And then we're just going to, again, take it to the sewing machine and we're going to do a quarter inch seam down okay. each side of the um, triangles, okay? I feel like you should sing now. Like, doo -doo -doo. Oh, who was it that said? I saw the other day that um, someone messaged in saying, "Well, who was who was? Um, I can't remember who was demonstrating. They wanted someone to come and play the piano in the background. Oh, really? <laughs> Have a bit of. Uh, we can get Mark French to sit in the corner, just doing a little musical interlude. Can you play an instrument? No. No. Um, no I can't. I. I, I really wish, wish, wish I um, I did. I played loads of instruments when I was little and I just probably flitted between too much mm -hmm. and didn't. So um, Kieran bought me a piano about four or five years ago and I wish with lockdown now, if I could rewind to last March, I would have done it every single day. And, and you know, everybody, lots of people who have achieved something through this lockdown. One of our um, d camera guys over at Jewelry Maker, he's learnt German and he can literally speak German. Ben. Big Ben. Yeah. Okay. So I've stitched down both sides of the triangle. Yeah. And then we're going to turn it right Do sides. I need to trim it you all? You can trim it. Yeah. Um, I tend point. to use uh, pinking shears. I do like pinking shears. Just especially when you're going around curves and things because okay. you get that nice um, edge. So you know how you snip things sometimes you have to snip when you go around there are pinky circles. shears on the website but they are handy to have so i'll just trim that okay oh more i'm pleased that you've um had a negative result She's having her all of her um heard covid tests each week now because you're a carer you in fact you're having to have tests each yeah, week with your work week, aren't you yeah um mondays and thursdays we have to have them just just obviously to make sure that is it thursday today it it's is thursday today, yeah isn't it? can't believe it <laughs> okay so just trim around the edges yeah okay and then we're just going to turn that round and I'm going to use some scissors, but you can use pokey tools if there's, just use that. And we're just going to poke that down to give us a nice little point on the, and that is your bunting. And we're just going to press that out and there's your little pocket. Oh, nice. So we'll just give that a little iron. This would be nice to have out in the garden, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. You just hang it round a gazebo or something, yeah. you know. I made so much bunting for my wedding. It's so nice, isn't it, to do things like that for um, occasions. And then you can keep it. Mm -hmm. well, I did the um, same thing at Christmas when I was here last time. We did the Christmas one. Yeah. And then we put all, like, different children's toys in it and, you know. And that's for an Easter egg hunt. Definitely. And you could put numbers on them or you could put happy birthday on them or Good idea. You know, different. There we go. Yeah, I'm excited to see how everybody personalises them because you mm. could put buttons and yeah, it'd be nice and if um, pop them on the page, Facebook page. Um, so that is the first one. Um, and then obviously we do more as we go. So we can just do, I'll do one with a pattern on the back and I'll just change it. So we've got, let's go for green on the back and then we'll have a full panel, mm -hmm. pattern to panel, and we'll have a blue on the front. So they just yeah, it makes them match them up, up a bit. So I'll make that one. And again, so we're just make the um turn the front of the pocket so that we've got a nice nice hem Ooh. 
Oh, the summer is very, very popular. The summer colourway. Um, oh, brilliant. Oh, gosh, I think everybody's craving a bit of sunshine now. <laughs> Oh, I know I promised you that you'd be in your flip-flops soon, Kat, but it seems to have gone all grey and miserable again. Oh, I really, really hope that we, um, we have a, a lovely summer. I hope, last year it was so warm, wasn't it? I really hope that we have a nice warm summer again. This would be quite nice as well. You could pack it in your suitcase and take it away with you as oh, well. Oh, yeah. You? Put your sun creams in and... Absolutely. I think garden parties okay. are still going to be quite a big thing, even though we've, um, we're hopefully going to be able to go out. I think everyone's got so used to being in that <laughs> I think garden parties are going to be the thing this year, aren't they? Oh, we can have pims. <gasps> oh, pims. Lovely. Sangria. Is Wimbledon on this year? Yeah. I, I heard they're going to do flower festivals again this year, which would be lovely. I wonder how long it will be until we get to go to our sewing... So, in, did you ever go to Festival of Quilts? Yes. Is that on this year? I don't I, know. I, I saw an advert I for so. it, but haven't seen tickets, so I don't know whether it was an old advert. But it, um, it's a fantastic festival. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, okay, I do so hope they are. say I've just quilt, uh, put the quilt clips on again, and I'm just going to stitch around the edges. So. Lovely. Quarter of an inch, did you say? Yeah, quarter of an inch seam all the way. It's a lovely project for beginners as well, isn't it? This is lovely. It is a nice one for beginners. You'll find when you turn over the um, the pockets that you'll have like tiny little lips, and you see here. Oh, okay. Um, but you just trim those off, so it's just where it's um, folded down. And I'm not stopping at the end and then turning i'm just t i'm literally Go doing all the way. Two, yeah two straight two straight lines so again if, if you're a beginner there's no sort of stopping pivoting not, yeah around. this it is it is a good little Do you know if we have any price binding on the website? Is there any that are made? If anybody wants to make, because you're going to have plenty of fabric to be able yep. to do more triangles. I wonder whether we've got any of the, uh, the made bias binding. Cream, linen and canary yellow. Ah, oh, so the canary yellow is the same one as the summer. So if you want to just add more bias binding, it's only one forty nine. It definitely is worth just adding a couple more bias bindings mm -hmm. in. Definitely, because you can make loads then. Make it for friends. Oh, that'd nice. be a lovely gift for somebody. Yeah, it? it would. Okay, so we just trim that again. And we'll turn that round. Have you been making lots of baby things then? Um, I made another, when I was here last time, I made the laundry yeah. bag, so I made um, another one of those um, when I got home. Yeah, because they need two. Yeah, <laughs> and I've also made the Debbie Shaw um, mobile with the balloons oh. that was in the book, um, and it had one like little dog that was hanging off the balloon like swinging in the oh. in the breeze but because there's two I put two dogs on there oh, so um, so I've made a mobile um, I've got some lovely cottons for um, yeah. to make some shirts because yeah. I'm going to be making some baby shirts yeah. and a friend of mine very kindly knitted me um, two little hats but they have horns on them so they're like little viking horns oh and cute. then my <laughs> Grandad has one with horns, and Grandma has one with big yellow pigtails oh, and horns. Oh, brilliant! Brilliant. <laughs> so we've got little Viking, um, little Viking helmets to wear when when we get to see them. <laughs> so are you are you going to be nanny or grandma? I'm going to be grandma. Grandma. So we've got um, Lucy is from Scotland, so um, her mum will be Nonna, 
because they that's what they're called yeah. up in Scotland. Um, my mum is great nanny. Aww. And yeah, and I'll be grandma. So. Oh. <laughs> Which is quite old fashioned. It's quite everyone says it's quite old. It's an old thing to be called. But I I look yeah, I, I think I was like, having the conversation with my mum. I was like, Oh, what do you want to be called yeah. then? Because she says that she thinks, yeah, if you're grandma, it sounds old, doesn't yeah, it? But but, I, but I, I she's gonna be called grandma. Yeah, I like grand, I like grandma. Gran. And I can't be nanny because my mum's nanny, so yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll be I'll be grandma. I'll be the old one, I don't <laughs> mind. Okay, so I've made two. Um, and then the next step is to pop it onto the bias binding. And so would you okay. do that as you go or would you make up all your triangles? I would probably make all the triangles up first and then put them on. Um, depends really yeah. how, how you want to do it. Yeah. But I, I would tend to make them all up and then uh, put them in, a, in order of how I would like them. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then put them on. So what I've done is, um, with the bias binding, I've, I've ironed this, um, I've ironed it over already. But oh, I've, so you've ironed it in half? Yeah, so I've ironed it in half. Um, okay. I did try to tuck it in, but it, I prefer to just fold it over and make sure that the edges are um, some people like to open it out and then fold it, tuck it inside mm -hmm. and then fold it back over. But I like to just do it that way and then sort of slide them in. Do so, you ever make your own binder? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, clover, you do clover things, don't you? The little binding yeah, maker. We've fine. got it on later on with oh, um, Kerry, actually. Oh, they're fantastic, yeah. Um, and again, if you didn't want to use the coloured one, you could make your own bias out of the fabric that you've got left ah. and make your own, which ah. would be great. And then it would all... Brilliant. Watch so. later today because Kerry's going to do a demo with it. This is the 12 millimetre one as well, which mm. is the same size as the one that's already pre-made. Um, but it's nice to be able to, to match it in with certain fabrics, isn't it, sometimes? Mm -hmm. So if, for example, you've got your favourite Liberty fabrics or you've got certain fabrics that you want to use... Um, your own binding, definitely, make your own binding. Definitely, um, I made a, a, a dress that just, I couldn't find the colour. I'm just snipping off the tops of the, where I've turned them over, you'll have two tiny little... Um, little doggies. Little doggies, so I'm just going to trim those off. Just give it a nicer... Um, yeah, I couldn't find any bias binding that would actually match. Yeah. The dress, so I just took the um, took the, the excess pieces that I had left over and, yeah. and made all the bias to go around the neck, and it, it, it looked amazing. So, okay, so I've just trimmed off those dog ears. Um, I don't know what I've got all the, all the scissors out this morning. <laughs> More eggs. Says there's nothing wrong with being grandma. I'm 48, three uh, and three quarters, and she says, and I'm a granny of an eight-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a four-year-old. Oh, good. That's good. I bet they keep her uh, on her toes. <gasps> I know. <laughs> well, I just think we're twins. <laughs> I'm thinking all the things that I've had to buy, things like a car seat mm. and things like that. It's all everything tough. is yeah. It is. They've they've just bought they've bought a lovely push chair, double push chair, and then they couldn't decide whether it was going to be one where they went next to each next other, next to each other, or on top of each other, or one in the front, one at the back. Well, with the wide ones, mm -hmm. can you get through doorways and things? That's well, the what one I they've think. got. Has, it's it, it's it's kind of you can move move it in and out, so oh. it's got. The handles move, you move different clips and it will widen. Gosh. All right. So if they're fighting, I guess you just <laughs> just extend it out. But yeah, so they've got a nice um That's so a nice push chair. Okay, so um with the bias binding, obviously I've ironed it so it's nice and um it's I know it's in half nicely. And then I'm gonna slide this bunting. I'm going to sit it on the top inside and then fold it over and I'm going to use again the quilting clips um, just to hold it in place along the top. 
Okay. Quilting clips only £9.99. Do you have these? Do you use quilting clips at home? I do, yeah. I prefer them to pins. Um, just because, especially with things like this, because it just holds everything in place all together. Um, with the pins, I find that you kind of, they, they kind of wobble a little yeah. bit and so just keeps everything in place. And leaving pins in projects. Yeah. Whereas with clips, you don't. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes, you know, lots of people who think, oh, I'll just sew over those pins, you end up breaking your needles. Whereas with clips, you just don't. Yeah. You can easily whip them out. I'm just going to quickly change my cotton. So, um, so I've got yellow. And again, you could use a different colour if you yeah. wanted to. Don't forget, the bundle that Barbara's working with, by the way, is the summer bundle. Um, it comes with half a metre of each of your fabrics. And remember your summer, the, the one with the fruit on, is extra wide, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. it's canvas, it's yeah. really nice and wide. You've got loads of fabric there. you also got half a metre of your orange, half a metre of peacock blue, half a metre of lime green, and half a metre of gold. Plus, you do get bias binding. If you want to add any more of the canary yellow, it's on the website. Just type in um, bias binding and you'll find it. Uh, plus, at that price, you also get your instructions for your lovely summer bunting, exclusive to us here at Sewing Street. It is one of um, Barbara's uh, instruction sets, which is brilliant. Embellish away as well, absolutely. We can't wait to see your take on it. Let us know what you're thinking of putting in the pockets as well. I've had lots of great ideas of what you can use it for, um, but it's a bit different to just your regular bunting. Very plush indeed and great, very useful with your pockets. We have a second colourway as well, which is your pinks, um, your pastels. So you've got pink, you've got blue, you've got lilac, you've got rose. Uh, and this time you have your instructions and a cream bias binding. £22.99. That's the only other sort of springtime bundle, as the other one is completely sold out. £22.99. Instructions on their own are also available if you've got fabrics at home that you want to use. Are you all right? Are you back on? Mm, I think I'm back on. I've just lost the top of the... <laughs> there we go. Oh, your spool cap. Yeah, I've lost that one. Don't know, I've done know that. Um, we've had a message come through. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister lives in Oz and gets called Glamma because she thinks nice. it's less aging. <laughs> I'm a plain old granny. <laughs> and that's brilliant. Glamma. Glamma, I like that. I like that. Okay, so I've pinned it in place, or clipped it in place, sorry, and then I'm just going to stitch along the t very edge of the bunting. Right, here we go. stitching this as close to the edge of your like towards the triangle yes or, yeah. I am, yeah right on the very edge any tips on getting this nice and straight um, work slow <laughs> um, yeah try not to speed up too much on it um, you can use like little magnetic um, hem Things. Have you seen yeah, those? Hem gauges, hem gauges, thing, yeah, hem gauges. Yeah, you could use those just to keep your fabric all together. Okay. Shelley says, I have eight grandchildren. Wow. She says, they all call me Nana or Silly Nana because I always change my hair colour. <laughs> so they call her Silly Nana. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that is your bunting stitched along. Oh, lovely, nice and neat. Okay, so it's just, um, you can use a bigger stitch as well. So that just gives it a, another decorative. You mm -hmm. could use a decorative stitch actually along Ooh, the top. That would be quite be nice, nice, wouldn't it? In a different oh yeah, with a contrasting thread. Yeah, that would be nice. But if you are unsure, what you've done actually mm -hmm. it blends it's in perfect. nicely, doesn't it? Yep, perfect. So, and again, just, just trim off the little bits that you've got. Okay, 
and then you just put the next one on so you just continue and turn your buntings do you need to um, measure between them how far I have done you... about an inch okay. between each one um, you could put them all together I guess if you put them all together and had lots and lots you'd yeah. get more on the yeah two and a half um, so you could you could do that yeah I suppose have a bit of a play around mm. it? or what might be nice as well is you could have pockets you could kind of make smaller pockets if you wanted to mm -hmm. using the templates um, and have sort of a big one and a small one yeah you know do different sizes if you ah. wanted to or do you know um, maybe a bigger pocket or make two and have a pocket at the top so yeah. that you've got so there's so many different ways you could use the well especially as you've got the smaller pocket size you mm -hmm. could just do all little bunting you as could well do you all can little. use yeah you can use it again and just do lots of little bunting as definitely. well definitely that would be nice you could make really big ones as well, using like these ones, and then using the bright colours. I'm just thinking you could use them for um, bits of Lego, mm -hmm. or you oh, know, yeah. like if you had um, girls. I don't. I've never had girls. I don't. So <laughs> um, you could use them for things like the, the baby. Uh, dolly clothes or yeah. you know like barbie shoes or Absolutely. i don't know all their little accessories that kind of you tread on when you're <laughs> when you're a mum you could put them on it'd be nice in a um in a playroom as well wouldn't it oh really nice actually so there's there's so many different ways you could use it i like the idea of the sewing room as well with all the spools yeah, you can have your spools in mm -hmm. there, you could have like your little extra bobbins, you could keep your little snips, little safety pins, there's mm -hmm. loads of ideas that you could keep in the pockets for your sewing room. Okay. Always need extra storage, instead of having, you know, a, a chest, a, a stack of drawers or something, which are great, but also it's nice to just have something that's a little bit different. You think, oh, actually, like you said with the camper van, that's a really good idea mm -hmm. to just have it hanging because storage is a bit of a, an issue sometimes if you've got it a is, camper van. Yeah, um, you could put lights around it, couldn't you? If you even if you had like didn't have a camper van, you could put it in your, mm -hmm. um, you know, in your tent if you were camping, and you could wrap lights yeah. around it. Oh, we did some nice. lovely crochet daffodils and things on Yarn Lane yesterday. Mm -hmm. You could add crochet bits to it. Oh, nice. It's, oh, I mean, you could go wild with the design. Once you've got the pattern, that's it. You could, the, the world's your oyster. Uh, we've had a message come in from... Hi, Rosina. Just ordered my bunting for my caravan. There you go. Yay. When we're allowed to go caravanning. <laughs> where are you going to go? First place, where are you going to go, Rosina? Are you um will you go up to Scotland then in your in your caravan? We will do, yeah. We will go up your to Scotland. Um, and we'd like to do there's a thing called the N C five hundred. Yeah. Um, where you go What's all that? around the highlands of Scotland. <gasps> oh lovely. Um, so we'd kind of like to do that at some point. Okay. Ooh, Bobbin's fallen off. I want to find the spool. <laughs> okay. There we go. So you just continue until you've got all of your bunting. It looks so Sorry. gorgeous, yeah. doesn't it? Really nice and bright for the summer. How are we doing for time, Cat? We've still got about six minutes left, Barb. Okay. If you want to do another one. Brilliant. Okay. We'll have a full set of bunting for our set, Yay. won't we? I'll have one behind me. It'll look nice and bright. These have been nice as well. If you had, um, if you wanted to put them round the garden, because they're long enough that they go from your fence pa panels, so you could have them all the way round the garden. Oh, lovely. Couldn't you? Lovely. That would be nice. Okay, so. I'm going to use a another piece, and each time you cut your your pattern pieces, everything's different as well. Yeah. So you don't always. I mean, this one's got the orange on it, 
and then this one's got apples in it. So they're never the same, which is nice as well. Same with the other, uh, with the bunnies as well. You get different elements of the mm -hmm. fabric, don't you? Bunnies are gone, sorry. <laughs> That's like, don't mention the bunnies. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm going to use orange on the back of this one. Are you good at doing random? Is there any sort of order to it? Or are you going completely random? I'm kind of going random this morning on the... The one that I, I have been doing, I've kind of done it so it's gone pattern. I keep doing that, sorry. <laughs> I've been doing pattern and then a plane and then oh, a plane yeah. and then a pattern. Um, kind of done it that way. But uh, I think this morning, have I done it again? I have. Yeah. I, I think sometimes you do it without realising that you do it. The only reason I ask is because I'm uh -huh. on a bit of a, um, I'm doing a slight survey just on my own in my head of <laughs> lots of our guest designers aren't very good and not very happy with doing random. No, it's, they find it, it's it really difficult hard. And, I, and you don't, you, d you don't, you do it without realising as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, even when you try and be yeah. random, you've still got some sort of formation without realising. It kind realizing. of, this, this is, is it, is it this one? Yeah, what I've done here, you see. I've done a blue and a blue. Yeah. So for me, that's wrong because I, it should have been. It should have been a different. You wouldn't want a blue next to a blue. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. But it's you know. <laughs> okay, so I've got a smaller one here. So we're going to have an orange pocket on the front of this one. So again, fold it over um, and give it an iron. So we've got a nice hem. It's nice. This is a nice, um, you know, if you've got sort of a quiet evening, it's yeah. quite a nice little project to sit and do. Uh, we had a message come in about doing it with Christmas fabrics as well, mm -hmm. didn't we? Hi, Karen. Karen said, yeah, to put your Christmas treats. Uh, morning, I could imagine doing this design in Christmas fabric and putting treats in the pockets. Yeah. Rosina's got back in touch. She's off to Cornwall in the middle of July. Oh, oh fingers crossed. Fingers I love crossed. Cornwall. <laughs> oh, the whole South Coast is just beautiful, isn't it? I think lots of people are going to hopefully try and do some. Um, My some favourite locations. place in the whole world is Tintagel. So is that in Cornwall? North, that's North Devon. It's kind of on the borders. Oh, of, is it? Yeah. What's it called again? Tintagel. Tintagel. Yeah, is that so anywhere near Bude or? Um, yes, just just down is it? from Bude. Yeah, they Ooh. have a um, a castle. Tintagel Castle and it's right on the coastline we stay on a on a holiday park which looks down into the onto the beach it's just beautiful oh, wow. I love it okay so I've done the pocket and I'm going to place that on the patterned piece okay and then we're going to have a green back on this one so I shall place that on stick a couple of little quilt clips on just keep it all in place I just realized I've done the whole thing on the um, ironing mat as well <laughs> <laughs> it's good when you set yourself up a bit of a production line though isn't it like you get yourself your station <laughs> it is, set yeah up. I generally don't like to move unless it's to put the kettle on so it's good to have all of you <laughs> bits and bobs around when I'm at home I have I have a little ironing mat and then have the sewing machine and I tend to go from one yeah. to the other. Oh, I know people who purposely have, like, put their little... ironing board somewhere else to get their steps in. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we just like to just do the robot, just side to side. Clive, are you watching? Right, she wants to know, do uh -huh. you know um, Tree Barwith stand, Strand? Trebarwith? Trebarwith. Trebarwith. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's you, Spooker. Hooray. <laughs> Some of those have been thrown <laughs> at you. Um, T R E B R A. B A R W I T H. Yes. I, th I believe I've been there at some point. The Port William Inn is amazing and the best sunset in the UK. Ah, oh, okay. Does it look lovely, Cat? Cat's just had a look. Cat's oh, had a look jealous. Look, looks like Dillick. <laughs> oh. No, uh, they, they don't live there. Clive and, um, uh, and Mark live in Kenilworth. Ah, okay. It's also okay. beautiful. Castle there. Just not quite Trebarwith. He says I might have spelt it wrong, but no, I think you spelt it right, Clive. 
Okay, so we're just going to trim that down. I'm going to use these scissors. You could be called Grandba, but Grandba. 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 Yeah, but then I sound like a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Grandba. Ah. <laughs> oh, I had a, a conversation with my friend Runcia yesterday. She's from Italy and. Um, we were talking about she cannot say grandma. Oh. So it's like a grandma. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've just trimmed the edges again. And I'm going to turn it round so that it's right sides out. Just poke that. I'm sorry, Clive and Mark, you can't move to Cornwall. They've said, you never know, a move to Cornwall might be on the cards because we need you here. <laughs> You'd have to do a long commute every month to come and do your shows here. So no, please, 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 will you stay local? I know that they're trying, you, you're selling your house, aren't you? But they said, we love it down there. Uh, hi everyone, I'm a Nana, but my grandkids call me Mam Dory, Nana. Oh my word, Mam because I keep getting everything like um, Dory in the film. Oh. <laughs> they're only four and five, she said Mam loved it, oh. <laughs> we used to call my mum Granny Blue Vest because when my son was little, she had a, like a little velvet blue vest, blue vest <laughs> that she used to put him in all the time. So he be she became Granny Blue Vest. Oh, it's strange, so, isn't it? Yeah, only for a little while and then it changed again. So Kat said her friend called her Granny, Granny, Granny Apple, because the last name was Smith. So she called her Granny Apple. Oh, bless. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm um, just gonna trim off those dog ears. How are we doing for time? Are we okay? Right, let's trim those off. And again, about an inch between. I've done it again. It's orange in an orange, look. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no! Clive, do you want to see this one? It's gorgeous, isn't it? This is how much you get as well. It's lovely and wide. That's Loads nice. of fabric. I wonder whether we had that by the half metre. Because that would make lovely kitchen makes, wouldn't it? I think that would make an amazing shirt. Oh, Clive, there you go. Yeah. That would look like a lovely shirt. And he can only move to Cornwall if he makes one for me. <laughs> <laughs> you could make it for John. John could wear it. Yeah. We did have it by the half metre. I don't think it's available anymore. I think they've all been cut for these kits. Um, so do make the most of it. I think it's the only ch only way of getting it. Nana and Nanda to my children. Claire said, oh. Oh. Uh, "Yeah, that's that's what Claire said. That's what I was thinking. It would make a great shirt. Yeah, it would. Or a dressing gown. Yeah, Mark could make a dressing gown. Yeah, that'd be nice. Just don't go on holiday somewhere where, where they have oranges and lemons, otherwise you'll disappear <laughs> with trees. <laughs> okay, I'm just fitting these in. Okay, and then we're just gonna stitch that again. Um, Claire says, we have a lot of dressing gowns in this house. We, I've seen all your dressing gowns because Mark bought in the whole collection of them. We filled the set with all the dressing gowns. <laughs> and um, I said to, to Mark, have you made all these? And he says, I've just got them off the hooks. I've got just took them from home. But they are amazing. Right, just while Barbara's um, stitching that last bit, should we do a quick recap? So the, the fabric that you, we were just having a good look at is part of the summer bundle. You get half a metre of this gorgeous print. You also have your, bias bind, uh, your binding, which is two and a half metres long. If you do want any more, that's called Canary Yellow. It's on the website and it's less than two pounds, so if you want to add any more. Because you get loads of fabric, you can make loads of bunting with, this, with the bundles. Just keep going all the way around your garden. You've got your bright orange, you've got your peacock blue. These are all half metre pre-cuts. You also have your lime and your gold, £22.99, plus, of course, you get your pattern included for less than £25. That is gorgeous. 
Um, don't let this one pass you by. I know we haven't seen it because uh, it hasn't been made up today. Um, it looks gorgeous and it will look really, really, really nice and springtime, uh, springy. So if you missed out on the rabbit bundle, definitely get this one. So you're getting half a metre of your pattern fabric and then you get four solids, all half metre pre-cuts in pink, blue, lavender and rose plus your cream bias binding and you get your instructions. Now we've got availability of the instructions. Uh, that being said, they are now very, very limited. So if you do want the instructions on their own, if you've got fabric in mind for your lovely uh, plush bunting, the one with the lovely little pockets in, absolutely make the most of it. It's just £9.99. The kits that Barbara's working with in the next hour are already selling. Um, we've got some foundation paper piecing, we've got some P, uh, FPP, but don't worry, for anybody who's not done foundation paper piecing before, we're going to break it down. It's a Beth Studley pattern that's coming up. The pattern on its own is available. We started with hundreds, we're now less than a hundred, so just be aware that's coming up in an hour. And the bunting, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> oh, we've got to put that up on the set behind me. It's lovely and bright, isn't it? Thank you ever so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, we'll see you with foundation paper piecing. You will. <gasps> you will. It's, it's really good. It's a, it's a lovely pattern. So. Ah, oh, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. For anybody who's not done it before, stay tuned because mm -hmm. we're going to do a full tutorial and we think, we are, you know, yeah. even beginners are going to be able to do this, which is very exciting. Thank you very, very much. You're very welcome. See you in an you. hour. Yep. Don't go anywhere. Kerry from Living in Loveliness is with us. She has got brand new, fabulous, fast, fat, quarter fun, issue 10, launching in just a couple of minutes. We'll see you after this. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Hi, my name's Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. Okay, I got into sewing through my grandma. I used to sit and watch her. Um, she was a dressmaker. And I started off making toys and then I was dressmaking myself. And from then I've done homeware and children's wear and all sorts of different things in between. Um, I would say my top tip is to be kind to yourself. It's only fabric at the end of the day. And if things do go wrong, then you've always got your quick on pick. My claim to fame is that in 2012 I was a VIP driver with the Olympics and I met some really interesting people who were very nice and I'm hoping that I'll meet some very interesting and nice people on Sewing Street too.
Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! My name's Jules Mayouf and I'm really excited to be a guest designer on Sewing Street. Okay, I got into sewing through my grandma. I used to sit and watch her. Um, she was a dressmaker and I started off making toys and then I was dressmaking myself and from then I've done homeware and children's wear and all sorts of different things in between. Um, I would say my top tip is to be kind to yourself. It's only fabric at the end of the day, and if things do go wrong, then you've always got your quick on pick. My claim to fame is that in 2012, I was a VIP driver with the Olympics, and I met some really interesting people who were very nice, and I'm hoping that I'll meet some very interesting and nice people on Sewing Street too. Welcome back to a jam-packed day here at Sewing Street. My name's Vicky. We've got Kerry from Living in Loveliness here. Sorry that that was a slightly longer break. We just wanted to make sure that everywhere was all cleaned, ready for a uh, switch over of guests. Um, now, we are launching a brand new issue of the always popular Fast Fat Quarter Fun. We are going to have to start with the Liberty because they're already selling, but can I show you what you make? Because I absolutely love how far fat quarters go and this is why Kerry decided uh, to, to make this series of projects and it's just going on and on and on because there's so much that you can do with fat quarters. Uh, now this one I absolutely love because it's called Gifts and Gadgets. So we all have maybe our Kindles or our tablets, our iPads and things like that and to keep them all nice and safe and secure is brilliant. Now this was actually originally designed because lots of people wanted somewhere to keep their patterns and their, their marking tools and things like that. But this is also really, really handy to take on the move when we're able to go on the mood for your tablet. How perfect is that? It fits in really nicely because it's got that lovely wadding as well, keeps it nice and protected. And you can keep, again, your notebooks, bits and bobs. You could keep, um, again, any uh, cards, business cards, things like that that you want to keep on the other side. It all folds together really nicely. This is called, as well, I love that this one is called the, uh, the chase, chase cover because if you know Kerry, then Kerry always names all of her patterns after people she knows, and all mainly over her, over her, um, it's always normally around her, her nieces and nephews and everything. And now, this is her own child. This is Chase, you've heard about Chase, is her son. So we've got the Chase cover, which is brilliant. Now we've also got, this is how far these kits go. You can also make yourself I think this is so cool. Whether you're keeping this as a, cr uh, a clutch uh, for your crafting or on the move, 
How often do we forget our chargers? We need to take our charger, our little leads. Joe would love this because you're very organised with all of your cables. Whenever he sees my cables in my bag, well, this I remember from years ago, Joe used to sit and unwind all of my hair straightener cables and my phone charging leads, my, um, my talk about my earphones. He'd be like, look at the state of that. When I was on gigs singing, he'd be like, let me sort out your cables. So look at how smart this is. For anybody who needs a bit of help with organising themselves, you can keep your cables there, you keep your charger there, on the move, you know where it is. In fact, this would be handy for me to have for my um, hospital bag. Been packing my hospital bag this week. They've all said, make sure you take your charger with you. You know, if you go on um, on the plane or when we're able to, you can have it on your carry case, can't you? That you you know that you're not going through all of your hand luggage looking for your leads, for your headphones and things. So that's ideal. In fact, there's also a little headphone case. So that can clip onto your bag. You can also make the headphone case. Or Kerry says, when you've got teenagers, they steal your, your, your headphones. So I end up putting change in there. But that's great to be able to put onto your handbag. Um, and it's got your change nice and close to you for when you need to put your trolley pound in or whether you need to put your, your, your money in the meter at the the the, uh, the parking uh, the car park so that's really really handy now we're gonna have to go straight to the Liberty because as I say loads of people have already spotted this on pre-order I'm just looking I'm being nosy we've got butterfly brights which is exciting we're gonna start though with the Liberty as always wrapped beautifully in your blue tissue paper these will all be rewrapped by our Kerry. She doesn't let me um, me do it because look at how lovely and fancy this is. And it is Liberty. If you go and have a look on Liberty's website at how much, don't get me wrong, Liberty cosmetic bags, I understand, are very, very desired. They are a lot of money. If you start to make your own using genuine Liberty fabrics, I just think it's so exciting that you've got the possibility of doing it for less than £30 and how much you can make for less than £30 is brilliant. So in here, you have got your fat quarters. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, a fat quarter is half of a half metre. So look, it's a lot of fabric. It goes a long, long way, um, 29.99, and this is exactly why Kerry started up doing this series of, of projects, is to show you how far these pre-cuts go, and to be able to indulge in all of these beautiful different prints from Liberty London, 29.99. Now you also have in here your instructions, uh, which are always very, very thorough, with lots of photographs as well, Plus, you get your welcome note from Living in Loveliness and great pattern paper. So this isn't a project that you will make once and then never use the pattern again. Um, once you've used your Liberty fabrics, why not use some other fabrics that you've got in your stash? It's just a great way of, of, of making the most out of your fat quarters. So I'm sure that you will use your pattern and your instructions time and time again for different gift ideas. Chrissy said, I absolutely love the Liberty, it's gorgeous. Oh, isn't it just? These will fly out. Just so you know, whenever we bring the Liberty option, I know that Kerry loves doing a Liberty option and they always sell very fast. Half the stock already gone, it's brand new in today. Now we also have the butterfly. Now, uh, remember, that's what it's going to look like when you make them up. You've even got your binding in Liberty, your linings in Liberty. It is so plush. I have got here Bright Butterfly. You ready? Da, 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 da. Already selling on pre-order. Oh! This is my favourite. So those of you that have got different issues as well, what I love about Kerry's kit is that she quite often coordinates. So you can start to get matching. If you love collecting, living in loveliness kits, um, you can really sort of indulge and have everything all matching. This fabric, oh my word, look at that. That is gorgeous. Uh, 29.99, you've got your fat quarter of your beautiful bright butterfly. This one I've got to show you because if you've not seen it before, it's the, uh, from the Little Johnny collection and it is oh, so sparkly. Barbara's buying hers from the green room. I'm buying mine from the green room. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? Maud said, yes, you definitely need one, Vic. My, my sister is always leaving her, her cable chargers and headphones at the hospital. Yeah, that's a, it's a really good one, isn't it, to be able to take 
um, take for hospital or overnight vis visits anywhere. Uh, you've also got a fat quarter of your lovely, almost magenta, and then another sparkle, sparkle. Oh, I love it. 29.99, different colours as well. Um, this one been super, super popular. Super, super popular. Plus, of course, you have your instructions, your welcome note, and all the templates that you need. Um, we have got one more colourway before we head over to see our Kerry. Um, we've got butterflies. That's bright butterfly. Don't get confused. This is bright butterfly. <laughs> we've also got this one. Alice and Marion love the little Johnny Kerry. It's amazing, isn't it? So, we've also got, oh, sorry, I'll put the tissue paper. <gasps> she says, I bought spare, I bought spare. I'm being too quick diving in. I'm always aware that we never have enough time with Kerry. Look at this. Oh, I love it. So, we had this colourway, I know, with issue issue six which we're going to be showing you in a bit so you can see it in projects if you do want everything matching then we did have it with issue six and we've got it again today but look at this your lovely butterflies i know that kerry spends so much time and really really prizes uh, you know her, her business and her company over great quality fabrics and them coordinating so well i'm awful at it you have to have a real knack for matching in the right colors and this is just perfect, isn't it? Now, it's absolutely flown into baskets. If you have got it in your basket, please check out now. Send in your photographs. If you've made any of Kerry's projects, let us know. We would love to show Kerry on air. Plus, you also have all of your instructions. Now, any other haberdashery bits that you might need, like your wadding, etc., it's all on the back of the pattern. And we can go through with Kerry as well, things that you might need to add. $29.99, but for all of your gorgeous fabrics, brilliant. So, this is issue 10, gifts and gadgets, brand new in today. And remember, this is to make those three projects your clutch, which you can keep all of your wires, your cables, your leads, your bits and bobs like that. Also, your iPad cover or your tablet cover, your Kindle cover, whatever it is you want to keep in here, even if it is just a place to keep your patterns and your marking pens um, and any other bits and bobs that you want to store. Also, your hexi pouch, which is great, isn't it? So if you do want to add any zips or haberdashery bits, have a look on the website. $29.99 for your Liberty. If you have got the Liberty in your basket, be careful because that is about to sell out. There's now less than 10, so do check out as soon as you can. Okay. Kerry, it's so lovely to have you back. How are you? I'm very well. It's always lovely to see how excited you get about the kids. <laughs> Honestly, I can just feel your love and your passion for it, and you put so much time and we thought We certainly into the do. Projects. Now, I can't take the credit for the folding anymore. We have a lady who does all the folding for us, and she's far neater than I am. Fantastic. So, and you've got Craig now on And board. we've got Craig full time, yeah. It's Fantastic. all very exciting, all very exciting. Uh, so, this is issue 10. This is gifts issue 10, and, and this is Gifts and Gadgets. And I did think today, especially when my little Chase is oh. poorly off school today, that we'd do the Chase um, iPad cover here. So this is great, of course, like you said, I, go, I tend to go to when, of course, we can, lots of business networking, you've got a section in there for your business cards. This was designed really for the need of somewhere to keep your patterns when you're working on those, and complements issue six to keep your little templates in there but it is great that it does fit your um, fit your gadget in there, like yeah. your Kindle or whatnot. And then you've got your collections for your pens in there as well. So as you mentioned, you're getting your four fat quarters. We do cut our fat quarters to 18 by 20 approximately. So if you're using a standard fat quarter, then you're going to have lots of fabric left over. The one thing that I do need to mention with this particular project is I did decide to bind this, so you will need a quarter meter of complementary fabric for the binding on here, because okay. there isn't quite enough in the fabrics this time. I do feel as the fabrics are growing, um, then you're starting to need a little bit more to, yeah. to add to that collection. It does show how far it goes though. Fat quarter goes such a long way. Oh, you get it? so much out of it and it's quite nice to use them. And also with your fat quarters, they naturally complement each other. So it's quite nice to use different sections from those as well. Yeah. Because the patterns now, especially from Fast Fat Quarter Fun, there's more, more little pieces to them, such as your binding, then what I would recommend, although your welcome letter does say, write your letters on there, which of course you can do, um, what I would recommend doing is just using your little quilting clip and just pinning onto the back so you can see how the fabrics complement each other when you've cut them down. 
and you can place those out and have a look. But we do refer to each step um, as a as a letter throughout the template, uh, throughout the pattern. Sorry. So if you keep those on the back, it just makes it a little easy. And as you know, I like really fast projects. So this is quite a fast project. Of course, the binding, um, you could hand bind that if you want to. You oh, could hand nice. sew that, but I like a zigzag sit. I like yeah. to finish it quite quickly. So the first thing that I'm going to do is the three pockets here that are great for your cards or your notes, um, your to-do lists, your little to-do lists maybe. Then we're simply going to repeat the same stage. So just placing those onto the ironing board and along one of the longest raw edges, we're just going to do a nice um, double hem there. So just turning that over by a quarter of a metre, approximately, you could measure this if you want to. I tend to do this just by eye. So pressing that over once and again over a second time, just to hide that raw edge there and protect that pocket as you're popping things in and out. And we'll repeat that for each of those um, pieces there. Katie, you get four fat quarters in each bundle plus your instructions and templates. Um, Shirley has said, absolutely fantastic pattern and the instructions are so straightforward and easy to follow. You won't be disappointed with Kerry uh, and her choice of fabrics. Thank you very much, Shirley. Lovely to hear from you this morning. It's always lovely when people message you. Oh, we've got loads of messages for you. We always get so many messages for you. Um, yeah, lots of people loving the Liberty, loving the kits. In fact, the Liberty is now sold out. The one that Kerry's working with is called Butterfly. And then the really sparkly one is your bright butterfly. Now, all I'm going to do on here, you, your double hem here is quite slim, so you can pin this if you want to, but if you give this a nice little press anyway, it'll secure that into place. And here, I'm on the wrong setting there, this is an opportunity really to use those lovely stitches. Of course, you could use your straight stitch on here, or you could use any of those decorative stitches. Just for speed, we'll continue with our zigzag there. And I did think, actually, this machine was already set up with this beautiful blue on here, which complements that uh, marble fabric there really well. Oh, nice. It's always nice when the machine's set up. Yeah. <laughs> so just using that chain stitch um, technique there, just feeding these through. And although in the pattern it does give you the step-by-step -step instructions, really just to add a centre um, sew line there. So you've got two pockets. If you wanted to reduce this, you could add extra in there as well. Or if you wanted to keep your larger notes or letters in there, you could skip that step and keep that um, pocket nice and wide. Now I've used batting in the pattern, um, but you could use the bosal foam as well if you really want some structure. And it does completely change. If you're used to working with your bosal foam, it does change your projects and give that even more stability. So It depends what you're keeping in it. If you are keeping your iPad yeah. or your tablet or something and you really want that extra protection, yeah. then that would be a good idea, Absolutely. actually. The Bosal, we have the single-sided Bosal, and it's by the half metre. I mean, half a metre oh, is really wide, yeah. which is plenty. So if, if you've never tried it before, I know you're a huge advocate of um, I love Bosal, bosal aren't yeah. you? you? Your half metre as well is 60 inches wide, so you've got a lot there to play with. Yeah. You'll certainly be able to make lots of these. Fantastic. It's just eleven ninety nine, And a single-sided one, would you? I, I tend to just work with the sewing, if yeah. I'm honest. So I tend not to use the fusible. And I, all I tend to do is, if I want to secure the fabric, just use a little 505. Yeah. But of yeah. course, you could use that one. So all I've done is just hem the top of each of those. We'll just place those on for a moment while we work on the other two pockets. There we go. And this is your pocket. I do quite like adding binding to the top of a pocket really to break up those fabrics and to get the most out of your fabrics as well. So your slimmer piece here, your eye piece, we're going to turn this the wrong side facing. It's particularly difficult to see that with the, the marble fabric. Yeah, it looks like petite, doesn't it? It's beautiful, really beautiful. And we'll just press that in half and we're going to sew that to the top of the fabric. Now the fabric that I'm working with here, of course, hasn't got a pattern direction, but your pattern direction is mentioned on your templates as well if you've got a nice pattern that you want to feature. Um, if you're keeping and making the pattern again. You like using the quilting clips, don't you, as opposed oh, to a yeah. pin? I like anything that makes life uh, easier and faster to sew through your projects. The enjoyment, I think, comes from the sewing, doesn't it? So anything that makes that journey even easier. Although there are some projects that do really require using those pins. So with that pocket panel facing up towards you, we're simply just going to press against the binding 
and as we turn this over naturally your binding's resting in the right place so this folded edge will just fold just beneath that stitch line now again you could stitch in the ditch at this point if you wanted to what's stitching in the ditch so when you're stitching in the ditch you'll use your straight stitch and there's lots of feet as well um, on the market to help you but you're simply ensuring that your stitch is tucking in between those two um, fabrics there like and I it said, hides your stitch as well oh, okay so yeah you don't really see it uh, Laurie says lovely pattern lovely fabric always the best of Kerry and her demos love to watch her um, Willow's asked what, what batting size we need for this project. For this particular project, uh, in fact, I'll have to have a little look. So, because there are three projects uh, yeah, in remember, the fabric, the one. it does confirm what size batting. But for this particular project, let me just quickly measure it for you. This particular project is 20 by 9.5 inches. Okay, it says on the back, like you said, for all three, 20 yeah. by 20 inches. Yes. Yeah. It is three projects. Three remember. projects, yeah. Thanks, Willow. Um, we've also had a message from Chrissy saying, it always goes too quick when Kerry is on. We need a bumper show with Kerry. We do, I know. <laughs> so this is your pocket here that you can use for your patterns or, of course, you can use for your Kindles, um, those sort of things. And what we're going to do onto this side, and again, this is mentioned in the pattern, on the left side, let me bring this on to here so you can see. So the left side, we're going to double hem and the right side, we're only going to fold over and do a single hem onto here because this will sew straight into the project. And Willow, it, it, it's up to you on what, what weight batting you want to use. We were discussing whether you want it to be really sort of structured, then we'd suggest a bosal. You can use the 80-20, which we had on earlier on in the show, which is your normal sort of cotton. That's, uh, what's wadding that's as well. what I use. Yeah, brilliant. So you bosal all your uh, your eighty twenty. Now again, because these hems are quite slim, I'm not going to worry about pressing these at the moment, and we're only going to sew the side that's got your double hem on there. Okay. So just resting this onto the machine, deciding on your stitch, and just simply sewing across that section there. Uh, you were up late last night, weren't you? Doing your live. I'm always a place. I know you are. Actually, I do think that. I, I, I must say, I did get into bed particularly early last night. But I was just scrolling through Facebook. I was like, Carrie's on the telly tomorrow. Are you doing a live at like about seven o'clock at night? What are you doing? Early for me is if I get to bed before midnight. I do oh. stay up quite late. But I have three children to juggle as well as everything else. So oh, wow. early mornings and late nights. That's why I wear lots of makeup. <laughs> So what we're going to do next, and you would follow this section if you're using your batting, but for the project it does mention to use, oh, sorry, if, if you're using your foam, but in the project I am, I am using batting. So just spray a little 505 on here to secure your fabrics. Your side graphic is for your 80-20, it's by the half a metre as well. Half a metre will be plenty. Have and then 505, is it back in stock? Brilliant. It's a very exciting day where 505 is back in stock, it isn't is. it? <laughs> and the glue pens. And then we're simply going to lie these on top, marrying up that raw edge just here. Now, as I mentioned, you can put as many or as few pockets into these in the pattern. And on the booklet, you'll notice that I'm just popping a centre, just a centre one in there to allow for business cards and little notes. But of course, you can add extra ones to those. Did I bring an, a ruler with me? There's always a ruler close by. It's a little bit big, isn't it? So we'll just find the centre. The measurements are in the book, but just by folding this across, scoring that fabric, we're simply just going to pop a little pen mark onto the fabric so we know where we're sewing. You can just use, if you want to, you can just, you, you can just follow that score line. But So you can see what I'm doing here today. I'm simply going to reverse stitch at the top and sew along to the bottom. Don't worry about reverse stitching at the bottom because that will go into your seam in a little while. I do love this fabric combo as well, Willow. It looks so lovely together. And it's just what we need, isn't it? A bit of bright colour for summer. I'm loving this fabric. I do really like the bright fabrics. And I certainly feel like uh, it's quite nice to bring the nice fabrics in and be sewing with those bright fabrics. Although there is sun coming, apparently, is there? which will be very nice. Oh. <laughs> Much better than the wind blowing our collections away. 
<laughs> Sorry to tell everybody on air that. My mum always tells me off for, for saying Oh, no, I didn't mind. I just thought, did I tell anybody that I did that that day? I can't oh, remember. It's just something very, very easy I didn't that even I know do. there was a stream there, Kerry. Uh, I did, when it all sunk. Oh, dear. <laughs> So the next thing, so we've secured that into place. You can remove your pen marks when you finish this collection here. And we're simply going to align the bottom pocket. Now you don't need to worry here about folding this raw edge because in a moment that will tuck into the, to, into the opposite pocket. Okay. And the next thing to do again is to just pop your marks onto there. So whatever you're going to use this for, mine I've used for pens and rulers. Ah, so measure what it is that you want to store yeah. in there and, and you can change the size. And you can the, swap the and change those sizes. So again, we're going to repeat the same, just reversing at the top to add that extra stability when we're popping our collections in and out. And we'll repeat that on each of those pockets. And then when you arrive at the bottom, so we'll just, so in fact, I'm going to increase that stitch length as well. Is that just because you're going through multiple layers? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then as we arrive at the bottom, we're simply going to pivot, release a little bit of the thread, and then start sewing from the bottom. This just reduces, as I've mentioned before, the waste of thread and also keeps this project nice and speedy. But in making sure each time you arrive at the binding, and of course your binding will stand out to remind you as well if you've popped it in a different colour as I have here. Do you not cut your thread at the end there? Do, do it all together. Right, okay. So, um, I, I could use the machine to do it for me, couldn't I? But I never tend to. <laughs> so we're just going to trim away any of those joining threads. And also on the back as well, because sometimes you can find that will create, if you've not left enough, just a little pucker in the project, which we really don't want. So we've secured those pockets into place. And of course, we've added that um, single hem on this particular pocket. Now in the pattern, I do show you how to mark this up to give yourself a guideline, either using your chalk pen or your fabric pen. But really what we're doing is just overhanging that single hem just a quarter inch over the raw, raw edge there. So it hides that raw edge and secures this pocket into position. And again, and it's entirely up to you whether you use a decorative stitch here or if you just secure this into place using a straight stitch. I'm very drawn to the zigzag, as you know. <laughs> Lots of people checking out on the one that Terry's working with, by the way, which is called Butterfly. Don't forget about Butterfly Brights as well. That little Johnny fabric is gorgeous, isn't it, Kelly? Oh, it's sold out as well now. I'm really sad. Has oh, it? Yeah, I'm really sad. <laughs> so does that mean we're not going to re really be able to see any more kits with it? Not, not unless if it comes back into stock. But I have contacted a few times. And it is the last time that we've got it in our kit, which, which is a shame, really, because it is absolutely beautiful. And I don't think we've featured it enough, really. Well, no. I certainly feel like we haven't. So you've got the front of your panel now. All of your pockets are secured nicely into place. And you can see just how quickly this project comes together. Now, we are going to bind this. If you didn't want to bind this, if you haven't got a fabric that complements the fabrics that are in your kit, you could simply place this on top, sew around all your raw edges. We'll pop the, I'll show you in a moment just how to pop those ties that are featured in the project as well. But if you leave a three inch gap at the bottom and sew around all four edges, pull this through that turning gap, press and top stitch, then that would be your project finished. Wow. I really like that, it fast, nice fast yeah. project, but I really like to see the binding on here. I won't be doing the binding today, but I think I'd definitely go for the yellow to really make these fabrics pop. And you can choose which one you want. You, you can choose. That first? The binding, there isn't enough binding oh, yeah, in this yeah. particular project oh, course, um, yeah. for that. But you have, so you will need a complementary fabric for making this project, so just to mention that. Okay. Now, in the pattern, I do show you how to make those little um, drawstrings here to pop onto the project. But one of the tools that I've found that is really useful, especially when making them so slim, is your little um, 12 millimeter we were talking about this with tool. Barbara about the bunting because you can make your oh, own yeah. binding yeah. for your bunting as well. So oh. both hours, absolutely check out on this. And it's good to see it in action actually. Right, how do I use this? So really nice and easy to use. What I particularly like about this um, design is you've got this little section that you can see at the back. Yeah. You'll see your fabric poking through here. Just have a little pointy tool or a needle to hand. 
And what you need to do is to just cut your binding at your angle here. Right, so what, what strip, what size strip do so I So this cut? is um, three, this is an inch. Okay. Okay, so this is an inch wide, which is on your templates as well, so it already works with the pattern. What I'd recommend is if you've got any fraying edges or it's starting to fold, just give it a press. It makes it easier to glide through this project. And as we slide this in, you can see the fabric just poking through. And as you pop a needle or a sharp tool on top, as you naturally glide this through now, you'll see that edge just pop out. So it's folded it for it you? It folds it for you. It's so, so it's good. perfect because it is quite faffy to make this, especially because you're applying heat. So this is worth its weight in gold for making these. And, and again, it's a tool that you'll find works every time. Now, the easiest thing to do is to work on your ironing mat. Oh, the ironing mats. I know these are out of stock at the moment, but they're ideal because you can pin into it. So pin into your mat. Okay. So just pin to secure that fabric into place. That's why either working with a pin or a needle is really helpful. And you're just simply teasing that back and allowing your iron. And you can see there that that's folded into the centre for you. And you're just teasing that back all the way along the full length. So I'll just bring this across all the way to the end of your project. Now you can imagine, and it is written in the pattern where you fold it by hand without one of these tools, just how, how much that? longer it makes it. Oh, brilliant. that is so good. Absolutely and brilliant. It's nice to be able to make your own binding, to mix in Absolutely. with certain fabrics, isn't yeah. it? And we, we seem to be making lots of drawstring bags and things at the moment as well, yeah. so it's great to pop into there as well. Now all I'm going to say with the bottom of this, to, avoid, to hide that raw edge, I'm just going to open it a little fold that across a quarter inch and just press that on the inside of that binding there and that really will just stop the edge when you're tying this collection together fraying so to complete this what we're going to do allow your fabric to cool down we're just simply going to fold it over one more time and just press where it naturally folds to create that lovely slim tie there I think everyone's gone into panic about the uh, the little Johnny fabric, and we've got now got less than ten of them. Less than ten. The Liberty sold out. Um, the Bright Butterfly less than ten, and the one that Kerry's working with is also limited. Remember, these are brand new today. Not only can you make the case that Kerry's working with, you also have the hexy little pouch, which is perfect for your headphones. Great for any of your uh, your loose change, and then you also have an extra clutch, which is brilliant for keeping all your charges and your leaves and bits and bobs in. These are so handy for gifts for people, you know, who are after university or you know when it, you, you struggle to know what to get yeah. so, teenagers for, for gifts or what to make for, well if for you them. if you have another look if you open that up if you have a look it's actually the Natasha pattern ah. but with the wire clutching there and the Natasha pattern was specifically designed for my niece Natasha yeah. when she went to university oh, to I keep see. her pens so to have that second edition now to keep your wires in because how many times do we leave the, me I'm talking about me I'm very forgetful <laughs> do I leave the house Never charge my phone and realise I haven't got it. So it looks really yeah. pretty in your handbag as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Such a good idea. Right, so stitching this, so, you've just got to um, try and keep it as sort of straight as possible. So actually, what I've done here is I've just folded that in half. I haven't pinned it because it's so slim and it really doesn't need to. Just drop the presser foot to secure it into place. And I'm simply just holding on to the end and allowing this to sew through. Now, you could use a straight stitch, but I certainly find that a zigzag and a wide zigzag works perfect for this because it's covering both sides instead of sewing up and down like we would if this was a little bit wider. So mm -hmm. you've only got one stitch line to add on here. So the last thing to do, really, before we put the binding on there, is to place these fabrics on top. And again, I, I would recommend um, just giving this a little spray to secure that fabric into place. Baffers watching! Morning, Vicks and Kerry. These are cute cases and very handy. I knew you'd like these fabrics, um, Rebecca. They are absolutely gorgeous. Becky is watching. Baffer, our Baffer. Um, they are gorgeous, aren't they? Absolutely. Oh, thanks, Chrissy. She says they go with your dress fix. They do, don't they? Oh, very nice. They do. Thanks. The Liberty is sold out. Liberty gone. So we're just securing this fabric into place. And the last thing to do now is to just attach these. Now, where I've used that tool, of course, if you're just using the template that we've um, created, you won't need to do this step. But to allow for that to glide through the tool, I've simply just um, 
Oh, I've got two different threads on here. I must have used pink in the previous one. Oh. <laughs> it's a nice, nice little touch. Yeah. So just cutting those so they're, um, just so they're cut on the end and they're a straight finish. And then all we're going to do is to pop this on the exterior fabric. Find your centre. Again, the measurements are in your pattern. And your centre actually is in line with that line that I've just done if you're following the pattern exactly as it is. So will these be encased into your binding? These will be encased into the binding. So we're popping this onto the exterior fabric and just pinning in or clipping into position. And I would always recommend if you're popping something like this to slightly overhang them by approximately a quarter inch. So when it is sewn, it gets tucked into that binding as well. Oh, Christine, make sure you make some time for, you, for yourself as well, because she says, I love Kerry and the Vinnyness. I have a couple of the kids, but I've been so busy making things for other people that I've hardly had time um, for my own, sewing my own things. She says, I've got a couple of alterations to do, and then I'll be on it. Good, good, good. Oh, I always tell people I can't do alterations. <laughs> and I always find when people come to classes, they'll do it one class, a beginner class, and they'll say, everybody wants me to put zips in their jeans. I say, tell them your teacher's never taught you that. Yeah. And you get away with it, you get out of that step. <laughs> Unless you enjoy alterations, of course. So before you put your binding on, you can just then follow around to secure these pot uh, pockets into place, just simply by sewing an eighth of an inch from the raw edge, just to secure all of those layers. And then at your leisure, you can add your binding, whether you decide to do that by a machine. In the pattern, I've written that. So it's a zigzag stitch, like all of the binding on most of the projects, certainly the projects from Fast Fat Quarter Fun. And you can see, even without walking foot on, this is a great thing about your kits, yeah. is that it's not, it's not something you need to go and invest in lots of different no, tools and I mean, if you have the tools, absolutely use, use those. Um, but we do like to make the patterns accessible to everybody, whether you're, you know, a beginner or whether you've got the whole yeah. kit, really. Do you use a walking foot at home? I rarely. The only time I ever use a walking foot is if I'm if I'm quilting a quilt. That's yeah. the only time I ever really use it. Now, if we if you were to follow the technique without the binding that I showed just a moment ago, this really is exactly how you'd top stitch to finish this project. And if you're not adding the binding, this is really how fast your project comes together. And these make great collections. People are already telling me they're getting ready for Christmas, which makes me very excited. Oh. So these make great little gifts for Christmas too. Yeah, do you know what? We've been talking about Christmas this morning with the bunting. We were talking about it yesterday oh. on Yarn Lane with the crochet. Lots of people talking about Christmas as well. I think we all need to be ready so, um, so we can get out and enjoy our garden parties, really. So while we're still inside, why not get Christmas ready? There you go. So just take a moment to trim away all your excess threads. There we go. And then you've got your little chase cosmetic, uh, not cosmetic, it could be for your cosmetics of course, but you've everything I think is about cosmetics yeah. at the moment. <laughs> I've done so many cosmetic bags recently. And That's then you've brilliant. got your ties on there to complete and tie and bring that project together. And there is enough on there to tie a little bow at the side to secure whatever you're popping on the interior of your little chase cover there. Oh, it's fab. It's we secure. love it. And I'm so pleased. You need to do something with honey now, don't you? I've still got honey fabrics. I've got a design in my mind. I just can't find the time. And every time I think the children are returning to school, something <laughs> comes up. So at some point, <laughs> you get we'll, we'll get more. there. We'll get there. Um, We've so got lots of doodles ready. <laughs> I, I love that you've also got the pouch as well yes, in there. Yeah. So the pouch is perfect, isn't it? All of your instructions are, uh, are in the, uh, the pattern. Any templates that you need are there. Now, we've also got... Um, the, well, we've got we've got more that we want to show you this hour with Kerry, so I am going to crack on. But just to remind you, the graphics at the moment are the ones for the one that Kerry was working with, which you get your butterfly fat quarter, your blue fat quarter, your lovely marble effect to the pink and the gold. Plus, you get all of your pattern, your instructions, and it's definitely worth jotting down today's day as we did sort of go through all of the key elements for the, the chase cover, but don't forget you've got other projects in there as well. Now, the other colourway, which was very, very limited indeed, is the Bright Butterfly. Now, remember what Kerry said, that she's struggling to be able to get any more of this glitter fabric. So if you do love it as much as we do, please check out nice and early. You're getting your four fat quarters, including these gorgeous glitter ones and your butterfly, plus your solid for 29.99 and that is enough to be able to do all three projects you just might need to add a bit more for your binding um, now we did also say 
that we're going to do some matching bids today. So we are going to bring back issue six. Issue six that are all lovely and matching. So let's do this one first. So it'll come to you like this, all wrapped beautifully again in your blue tissue paper. Uh, and this in issue six, you can make your lovely um, pocket, which I know, Kerry, you bring this everywhere with you, don't you? You always have this with you. We love a little envelope as well. We've had lots of different ideas of how to use this, whether it be as a little tooth fairy pouch or designed to keep your business cards in again, anything to get organised, uh, and your notebook cover with the handy pen slot as well. I'm not going to go through your diary, um, <laughs> but that's Kerry's secret diary, obviously. So the colourway that you can see on your screen is your butterfly. So that's the one that I've just shown you all. Well, actually, no, that's a bit of a hybrid one because, oh, no, it isn't. You just don't get the glitter fabric. So you can see you get the uh, the the butterfly, your marble effect in pink, in gold and blue, exactly the same as what we were showing you with the brand new issue 10, um, but this time to make three more projects. You get the whole shebang, absolutely. Definitely get both. They are such beautiful quality fabrics and three different projects this time, but we do like the idea of having everything all nice and matching. So that one's called Butterfly. We also have this one, which again is your bright butterfly. So you saw the fabric combination with the brand new issue 10. It was very, very popular. One of the final kits now that will have this gorgeous sparkly fabric in. You get all four fat quarters plus Different set of instructions this time, three different projects. Remember your pouch, your notebook cover and your little envelope as well, plus any patterns that you need, your welcome note from Kerry. And you also get your vinyl. Brilliant, this time you also get your vinyl for the front of your, your pouch so you can see what's in there, so keep your rotary cutter, your scissors, any crafting bits and bobs. £29.99. Now, that one is called bright butterfly already going straight into baskets just be aware um, very very popular indeed love to be organized this uh, this issue is called now we've also got one final colorway are you ready because the liberty sold out very 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 quickly you've got your glitter vinyl you also have your beautiful Liberty fabrics, this time absolutely gorgeous. From the same range, the Emporium range, slightly different colours, but look at these. Oh, are they from the Emporium or are they different range? There is a, a mixture in there. Oh. That you've got, so you've got some of the blenders. Oh, I love this colourway. The burgundy is amazing, isn't it? Your Liberty London cotton coating weight fabrics, um, all £29.99 plus you're getting all of your instructions, um, your step-by-step -step guide with photographs, your templates, half the stock straight into baskets. Be aware, check out now before we um, go over to Kerry. I just want to warn you that these could sell out before the end of the hour. £29.99. Now's the time to check out on any of those, especially the Liberty. Liberties are always very popular, <laughs> aren't they, Kerry? Popular. Oh, absolutely. We do love Liberty. We and do. actually, I did spend a little bit of time checking out uh, the prices of what things oh, were going gosh. to be, seeing as though you keep recommending that I do. So you've got some lovely collections that you can make from your Liberty prints in there. Absolutely. I've chosen to work with the butterfly fabrics. Now, if you remember when I was on last time, we made the pouch with the butterfly fabrics, but of course it flew off. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah, so you had to again. Oh, no. So we're going to do the diary cover this time. Now, your diary cover's great because you've got that little pocket on the front to add your pen in there. So you haven't got to, you know, dig at the bottom of your bag to find your pen. And this will fit your, um, your A6 diary covers or maybe your notebook covers as well. 
So the great thing about the butterfly fabric, I always think, not the butterfly, well, the butterfly, uh, in fact, the butterfly and the glitter, but dependent upon where you cut those templates from on the panels, you can, you can showcase some of the different butterflies or you can showcase some of the different colours from your glitter fabrics as well. So the first thing to do, the same as we did in the previous project, is to just clip your fabrics onto your um, templates there or, of course, mark them up. And the first thing we'll do is we'll just create this little pocket section for that pen. And really you can see actually these are great for scrap, project, uh, scrap fabrics as well because you're really using just limited tiny little pieces of fabric here. So we're going to pop just a little bit of binding on the top of there. So the binding section here we're going to pop the wrong way facing towards us and just press this in half. Shelley's put, Kerry has such a good eye for coordination. It's a skill in itself, you know. It is really hard. Oh, I think everybody together. can do that. No, they can't, Kerry. They can't. It's really, I find it very, very difficult. On my very first patchwork class, I must have spent a good half of the morning just trying to put the right fabrics together. I could do matchy-matchy, but actually... To do to put them together in colours. Well, I do have to say at classes though, if you're given lots to choose from, it can be quite overwhelming. Yeah. Which is why I really like fat quarters because they're there, aren't yeah. they? And they're already complementing each other. So just for that little tiny pocket binding there, we're pressing on the right side of the fabric and pushing their binding up and folding this over to the back. Just making sure that folded edge of your binding is resting just below that stitch line. And it's a great, great little project there to use up the tiniest piece of scraps that you might have sitting in your collections if you go on to make more once you've got a copy of the pattern. Well, that's it. Once you've got a copy of the pattern, you're going to not just use it once. It's a brilliant gift. We, we certainly like to look at different ways that we can incorporate, especially when they're really pretty fabrics. So what we're going to do next is to just pop the panels out in order as they're shown on your templates and diagrams in your patterns. Well, in fact, issue six is always a really popular one, speaking of Christmas, at Christmas, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, the great thing is, with your diary cover or your notebook cover, if you're like me and you buy presents, I try and wrap them when we forget. bought them. I forget what's in there, so I like to try and keep a note of what's yeah. in there. So we're just placing these panels out, and then what we're going to do is bring both of these sections across, aligning those raw edges just here. We did actually have this back last year in Christmas fabrics, um, and the vinyl bag was really good, of course, to put your bows in there or your little Christmas tags yeah. in there. Or smelly gel pens. Or smelly, oh yeah, we, we just we like smelly gel pens. <laughs> in fact, the little clutch, I think, has got smelly gel pens in. I've I, I borrowed them oh. <laughs> from honey. Whatever. Which makes a yours. nice change, they're not coming back <laughs> out. <laughs> And then we're simply using our quarter inch seam allowance there just to sew along the full length. Your main graphic is the one that Kerry's working with, it's Bright Butterfly. And each time just opening this up and bringing your next panel and lining those raw edges. Again, just using the clips or the pins. I would always recommend pinning at the binding section, especially because it's just such a tiny little piece of binding. Um, there would be nothing more frustrating than sewing and realising yeah. you'd sewn past and missed that binding. So just pin at your binding section, especially. And again, using that quarter inch seam allowance. And you know, if you really like stationery, as we spent a lot of time talking about before, this is, the great, this is a great gift for somebody who likes stationery, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because of course you get the enjoyment of cutting and making the projects from the kit. And then you can fill it with maybe note cards. We quite like sending letters still. We still like to send letters or Aww. keep notes and things. So, you know, if you, if you know somebody that likes doing that, you get the pleasure of sewing the kit together and then perhaps filling that vinyl purse there with lots of the smelly, lots of smelly pens. Yeah. <laughs> we do tend to go, we do tend to be drawn to the bright pens or the gold and silver pens, especially when we're coming to write our Christmas cards. So it is a lovely gift. I didn't realise Sharpies were such a thing now, like they're really oh, yeah. in, aren't they? Yeah. I think they've always well, been in. Have they? I think they have. I do like Sharpies. I think <laughs> they've always been in. And highlighters, I do yeah. like highlighters. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I feel really old. I'm so excited. <laughs> and I love getting new stationery as well. Yeah. So just pressing those seams. Don't get started on storage. 
I'm so excited with all the stories what do you today. Think? You've got a lovely story. I know it looks amazing. Kerry, I must say, your section, because every guest designer's got their own box. <laughs> Kerry's got about five boxes. <laughs> I Yours know. is definitely the most. You, I think Delphine's catching it up was with you. It was really quite nice to see them all organised this morning. I was like, oh, I've done so many lovely things. I forgot about that. <laughs> so here we've got a piece of your batting. And again, you can add your 505 spray. Choose the inside. Now you won't, in fact, you'll only see this when you change your notebook covers over. So I've chosen the purple to feature on the front. And then you've got your two little tabs here for the inside of your book, which is where your book will slot into. So again, I've chosen two different sections because you'll see those as you're opening your books. And we're simply going to fold those in half, so wrong side facing you, and fold those in half. Jackie made an extra pocket on the front to hold sticky notes, oh, she said. Oh, well. that's a very good idea. You'll have to send us a photo. It would be lovely to see what you do. Yeah. I always love to see what people do with the kits. Oh, please send in photographs. Any of um, Kerry's projects that you've completed, send in the uh, photos to studio at sewingstreet.com and we'll hopefully be able to show them on air. If it's not this hour, we'll definitely show them in the next, in the 12 o'clock show with Kerry. Now, this section here, you could absolutely skip sewing this together, but it is a really nice opportunity to showcase those stitches. So I am just top stitching on the folded section, but you could. You could skip this section if you want to. It's entirely up to yourself. Amanda said, I love stationery shops as much oh. as fabric shops. I used to work for a stationer's and spent lots of my wages on lovely pens. We used to, we lived in Northern Ireland when Craig was in the army and there was a shop and you could go in and you got a box and it was just fill the box with as many different papers. And every time we went, I did it and I'd never used the card. Craig's like, why are you so obsessed with filling the box? But there's so many pretty things, yeah. isn't there? And you could do the same with pens as well. Yeah. I could spend hours in there. My obsession is collecting things t t you know gift wraps or um, bows and if ever I get gifted anything that's got even you know just like little bits of string I keep everything my, it's really quite bad actually because my children will say when they open the presents are we keeping this bag mom yeah <laughs> yeah do I, make lots of I, I do it really keep carefully lots. I'm not supposed to be wrapping babe but the, the gift bags we do like to recycle we like to recycle course, them absolutely. we're making lots from fabric now but um, but yeah, it's quite nice when they say, shall we keep this bow? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah, that's really bow. pretty. That's really pretty. I can never find it when I need it. No. <laughs> so the next thing that we're going to do is these are going, to, this is where your book will slot into in a little while. So align your raw edges with the raw edges of your interior of the book and then place your panel on top and we're simply going to sew around all four edges excluding and I would leave your turning gap on the side so avoid leaving your turning gaps here where you've got your seams so just leave a, I would say a three and a half inch turning gap so you're not fighting to pull this particular project through because we certainly don't want to tear the fabric so just pin around your raw edges there and starting at your first pen mark if you haven't got a fabric pen, you could just slide two pins in there, just as a reminder to start and stop. What are you changing your stitch to? So I've changed the stitch back to um, a straight stitch and I've increased the stitch length to number five, just to travel around the fabric quite quickly. And then when I do the top stitch, it's ready and set up to go as well. So when you arrive at the corners, you're simply going to insert your needle and pivot that fabric. Very, very popular, by the way. Just so you know, there's less than 10 of the bright butterfly that Kerry's working with. How about the Liberty? Less than 10? Oh, in fact, there's, there's not even that. There's five or less than. There's so many of you who've got it in your basket as well, so just be aware. I will remind you of what the Liberty looks like. How are we doing on time, Jo? Five minutes, Kerry. Let me show you, oops, sorry, with my trolley, um, what you get in the Liberty. Four fat quarters, all of your instructions, your pattern, your vinyl as well for your, uh, for your pouch that Kerry's making for just $29.99. Your Liberty option, there's 12 of you who want this. There's loads of you who've got it uh, in your basket. Just be aware, there is not 12, we've got three. So do check out as soon as you can. Uh, okay. 
What are you up to now, sorry, Kerry? So all I've done here is to just cut on the corner so we can get a nice point, especially on the front of that book. Uh, front, especially on the front of the book there as well. So I've just trimmed the corners. Now the one thing that I haven't shown you from this particular pattern is there is some applique with little hexes that you can do. So because I've chosen to work with the butterfly today oh. um, and the demo that I've got there has got the butterfly, but if you have a little look on the pattern, there is um, some tiny little hexes. So dependent upon the fabric that you're working with, yeah. it is quite nice to add that extra detail. Perhaps you've got a fabric with the flowers or maybe you want to just cut out one of these little butterflies flies and feature those on the front of the book cover as well so there's the extra option where am I looking Kerry so if you look on the oh, front yeah. page yeah of the booklet should be able to see of the pattern on the pattern on the yeah. pattern yeah Oh yeah, look, there's your hexes, can you see? We did it with the Christmas fabric, We did, yeah, we? and we, they, we'd got some little uh, poinsettias on there that we cut out and centred those, so a little bit of fussy cutting. Because I've chosen the butterfly fabric for these particular kits, I thought it's got enough detail on the front. But again, another opportunity to use um, your fabrics the best you can as well. So you have got that nice detail to incorporate the fabrics if you want to. Can you see you've got your three hexes across the front there? Ah, oh, that's lovely detail. So I'm just turning this, I've pulled this now through the turning gap, just giving it a final press now. Now I would always recommend, especially if you're gifting this, so if you're making these as gifts, just tuck that raw edge inside and naturally as you tuck that and pull on the seam there, it will lie flat anyway. Give that a little press. Now I would always recommend slip stitching that just to sew that and get a really nice finish, especially if you've left the turning gap as I have here on the front. Lorraine says, great to see you back, Kerry. Susie said, sorry, I've missed the show. I've been dog walking in the gales. Oh, my word, it's been <laughs> so windy, hasn't it? <gasps> As the storm passed, because it was so, so loud in the night. It was really loud. Oh, my, I never get woken up by uh, the wind normally, and it was really loud. Uh, we'll watch later on, Kerry. Absolutely, dear Susie, definitely worth catching up. Becky is just uh, talking about stationery. When a new school year starts, I don't know who's more excited, me or the kids. <laughs> I know. Then you wish half of the stuff that you end up buying, you wish you had, uh, you had them when you were little. I didn't realise, yeah, that there was, this seems to be a lot more. There's a lot of shops that are all just stationery focused with pick and mix little bags yeah. and things. But I have to say, I agree. I love the fact that I've got three children. My son is about to leave school. Um, so he's like, I just need a pen. That's it. I don't need anything else, Mum. I just need a pen and we're allowed to wear PE kit every day, he's not. <laughs> so he's definitely trying to, um, he's, he's ready to leave now, certainly. But it's really nice, especially Honey absolutely loves the stationery as well. So there's so many lovely things. And they look lovely when they're resting in your projects as well. Yeah. I feel like I would need to complement with a fabric. Becky says she always has to buy double, so she ends up having her own stationery yeah. set as well. Oh, I don't know, borrow honeys. <laughs> <laughs> so all I've done is just given that a little top press. I would recommend for this particular stage, just keeping that top stitch in there a quarter inch away from that folded edge. So you've got plenty of space to slide your books on the inside of there as well. Now, I haven't got a book to slide into here into here I'm afraid but what this is That's also right, really good that we showed when we bought this on on the last show as well is this is particularly good to put your patterns in so if you've got yeah. patterns and you want to um, keep those in there you can slide your patterns in here yeah. and keep this in your collections as well. That's a really good idea. And then you've got your little pocket on the front for your, pen. For your pretty little pens. Thank you ever so much to very well very very popular mates there. Uh, Barbara just said wow Kerry is quick. <laughs> We are speedy so and we want to get through it all so you can see all of those tips. Thank you ever so much. In an hour, it says Riley Blake Roundup on oh, the menu. Oh, we've got lots of Riley Blake. Ooh. Lots of lovely kids. There is a Riley Blake. I'm excited for that. Thank you ever so much, Kerry. We'll see you in an hour. Um, don't forget to check out. We are literally last of stock on the, the Bright Butterfly in particular and the Liberty. Please do make the most of them. Don't forget to have a look at the brand new issue 10 as well that we launched at the start of the hour. They're on the website. It's definitely worth having a look over the next couple of minutes whilst we get Barbara back on. Now, if you've never done foundation paper piecing, look no further. We're going to break it down. We did a brilliant show last Sunday to end the birthday with Wendy Orlando and the whole, everything sold out during that show. This is the first time I've seen a foundation paper pieced project from Love From Beth. 
um, which Beth Studley patterns have flown out since we launched them. It's such a lovely sized purse as well, with your foundation paper, uh, foundation paper pieced elements as well. It's already selling on pre-order. Have a good look through on the website and we will see you with Barbara after this. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Hello Sewing Street fans, let me introduce myself. My name is Clive, I live in Kenilworth in Warwickshire. I currently run a business in Kenilworth and that's doing alterations on people's clothing. So I really enjoy kind of providing that service for the local community. My sewing journey first began when my grandmother gave me a hand crank sewing machine um, and from there I was fascinated about how things were put together uh, to the point where I used to make um, clothing for my favourite toys out of toilet tissue. I've also kind of studied fashion design at Epsom University in Surrey uh, so I've kind of gained knowledge along the way of different aspects of sewing, like pattern cutting. So yeah, that's a little bit about my sewing journey. My number one sewing tip is don't give up. Sometimes you'll get frustrated and you're angry with yourself, but really just put it to one side and take half an hour, go and have a cup of tea and a biscuit and then come back to it and then you'll kind of like have a fresh mind to start again. The positive happiness that comes from that is just amazing. So please don't give up, keep on sewing. My claim to fame? Well, if you've been watching, you've probably heard my name mentioned on Sewing Street several times. Uh, my husband is Mark Francis from The Sewing Bee, The Great British Sewing Bee. Um, so that's number one claim to fame. My second claim to fame is I had Adele, uh, the beautiful, beautiful tones of Adele singing for me. When I was a barman back in the day, it was, oh, it was just amazing to have her sing to me at my bar. So yeah, and also I've met Prince Harry at a VIP party. Stay tuned on Sewing Street and you'll see me very soon. I hope it all goes well. Fingers crossed. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. We are very excited about the Sunburst purse. Welcome back. Everybody who's purchased something already, don't forget, it's only one PMP. Have a go at foundation paper piecing. Maybe it is your New Year's resolution to have a go at it. And Barbara was saying, this is actually, I know it says on here, skill level experience. Please do not be put off by that because I think we can demystify it for everybody today, for everyone of any, any level. So this is what we're making, which is such a lovely, cute size. And whether you want to put a chain on it or a, a handle and have it more a, a, as a bag, it's up to you. It's beautiful. I love the colourways that we've done, but I think once you've um, once you've got the pattern, which come in the kit, we've also got the pattern separately. But once you get the pattern, which we're talking about in a moment, um, it's one you're going to make. A, I think quite a few times. You can make it in different fabrics. We were talking about making it with tweeds, making it even with leather scraps. We're talking about making it with William Morris prints or Liberties. It's a really good one to be able to use your scraps as well. So get the bundles by all means, because the, the bundles are beautiful. Um, but then 
don't just make one of these. I think it's something you're going to be able to make time and time again. And that is actually a really nice sized purse. You know, at the moment, we're not taking out big handbags and things. Well, I'm certainly not. I'm taking out my hand sanitizer, my mask, my keys. That's it. Because everything's all on my phone with my contactless. Um, so, yeah, you don't need that much. And that's a lovely size. Now, the one that, that Barbara's already made up is in this colourway. Now, you get loads here. In fact, Barbara was saying, you'll probably be able to make three purses three purses with the bundles you've got here half a metre of denim which is really wide so you've got loads of that you've it's a medium weight denim you've also got for your beautiful lining which is your cotton mixer in fuchsia and then we've added four fat quarters they all look lovely together. It looks so nice made up, but $24.99, not only do you get um, all of your fabrics, you get the pattern, you get snap fasteners, which are four sets, um, uh, and Barbara has made it up using this kit. Uh, now it's, as I said, I, you're gonna be able to make uh, probably three purses with it. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. We love it. Loads of you have checked out on it already. Love the uh, the bundle and the, the colours are lovely together, aren't they? Well done everybody who's got it on pre-order. Um, the patterns, the Beth Studley patterns, the Love From Beth patterns have all sold out. Ever since, ever since we launched um, ever since we launched the Beth Dudley patterns, they've all been so, so popular. So I think this one is going to be no exception. Now we also have this one. Do you know, this is summer, isn't it? This is a really nice colourway. We've still teamed it with denim, which is your medium weight denim. Your lighter colour this time though. Then your lining is going to be in this really lovely um, tangerine mixer. Then you've also got three solid fat quarters and one with the mottle effect, one mixer. So you've got your gold, you've got red, you've got orange, and then you've also got your mixer, which has got that slight mottle effect. You can't really see on camera, but it's lovely. Plus your snap fasteners and your sunburst purse uh, pattern and instructions. It is gonna look like that lovely sunburst, isn't it? It's gonna work really, really well. Uh, that is so bright and I love it. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna show you, because we are gonna do the pattern on its own as well. Um, I just want to show you how thorough these Beth Studley patterns are. So for anybody who's not done foundation paper piecing before, you have got a huge breakdown here of lots of images, lots of photographs, lots of text as well, back-to-back -back instructions of, of, of how to create the bag and how to do this foundation paper piece, um, how, how to do this technique. And for anybody who hasn't done FPP before, this is probably a really good one to start with. It's a, you know, you've got the repeat of shapes here um, and you're going to be able to use this time and time again. I'll just photocopy them. We'll talk to Barbara about how you use your templates. But that's perfect. Um, this one, very, very popular also, that gorgeous sunburst colour. This is the one that Barbara's going to be working with as well, so it'll be exciting to see it all coming together. If you do want the pattern on its own, are you ready? Because there's so many of you who've already got this in your basket. In fact, loads of you that have already checked out who've spotted it on pre-order. But go, 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 go. If this is the first time that you're seeing it, it's £6.50. How good's that? £6.50 for your pattern. Okay, almost half the stock has gone like that. Be quick, be quick, be quick. I think the pattern on its own will sell out very quickly today. £6.50 for your pattern and it's really clear, really thorough. Um, if you've got any of the scrap bags for the early bird today as well, this is going to be brilliant to use up any of your scraps. We were talking about doing it with different, um, different fabrics. Obviously, we've seen the denim options today, but you could do any of your quilting weight cottons. You could use any of your, your leathers or tweeds. or I mean, there's so much that you're going to be able to use it for. I think in the main bag in tweed, the accents being in William Morris, even just small pieces that you can't bear to, to part with, it's a great way of using up any smaller pieces. Six pound fifty for your pattern. I know there's a lot of people who are in a bit of a queue for this. Please bear with us. If you can get in on the app or on the web, that is definitely going to be the quickest and easiest way to get these. Sorry about the queue, but thank you for your patience. We knew this would be a really popular pattern. Okay. 
Um, if there's anything else that we need, I will mention it throughout the show but Barbara is this something that you've done much or have you done many of I haven't done a lot projects? of um, foundation paper pieces yeah. I've done sort of blocks but okay. not in a in a curve not with the triangles and it has it it's brilliant it's a really really nice and again because it says experience please 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 don't let it put you off because it really really once you get the hang of it, you'll you'll be whizzing through, and you're like, I'm going to make another one. I'm going to make another one. So even one. if so you, if you've got experience sewing, but not necessarily mm -hmm. FPP, this is yeah. a good one to to really have a crack at. To, yeah, definitely, to try definitely. It out. Um, and I say because you've got the lines, it's a real good guide. Um, you can use a, you know. It's it's brilliant. It's lovely. And doing nice foundation paper piecing, I suppose, it really gives you the precision that mm -hmm. you. To try and get those points without the FPP yeah. technique and would be hard. Yeah, and you can even, even, you can have a glass of gin while you're doing it, because you okay. can follow the lines, it's great. Yeah. Amazing, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> See, Not too many, Barbara, but... You can yeah. have a glass of gin. <laughs> um, right, so, where do we start then? Okay, so, um, the pattern itself has, there's just four pieces, which is great, so... Um, you don't have lots and lots. My piece of advice would be if you haven't done it before um, and you want to keep your pattern, um, photocopy it uh, so that you can practice doing a couple of bits. Good and idea. you know, it doesn't mean, doesn't matter if you make any mistakes. Um, and uh, yeah, photocopy them. And then if you want to make more, you've got that pattern and Good you've idea. always got it. So yeah, definitely, definitely photocopy. Fantastic. Um, so say, you've got four pieces, um, which are in here. So you've got your, I think you've got it as well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you've got your pocket <laughs> so template. I've, I've cut them out. So we've got the foundation paper piece part. We have the sunburst um, or the sun there. And then we've got the the little flap part that fits on. And that creates your whole top part of your bag brilliant so those three parts there and then we have the um the pocket template so for those so we're going to cut out them i have cut them out um to be sort of a bit more so we need i'm, I'm using the the lighter one which is lovely so i'm using so you need to cut two of your outer fabric and then we've got this lovely yellow uh, yellow orange um for the lining on the nice. inside so we've cut two of those out of those we'll put those aside for a minute this is the main part that we're going to be working on mm -hmm. um so what we need to do is for this part we've cut out the orange to match the lining on the inside and then we've cut the the flap part out so this is the bottom part of your okay yeah uh, top and then for your foundation piece you're going to need 12 of your denim mm -hmm. and you're going to need 12 of your fat quarter pieces okay um and I get so much fabric don't you in the there's bundle? loads loads and loads so even with the fat quarters when you've cut out the these you've still got loads you can mix and match them you right. can maybe put a different color flap on the um, yeah. the lining on the back of the flap just to coordinate it it's it's brilliant there's so much fabric it's brilliant Lovely. really really good um, so the points coming down on here will be your fat quarter colors yeah. and the ones at the bottom that are pointing up will be Please. your denim pieces okay I would suggest that each um, piece of fabric that you use for your foundation will be around about 12 centimetres by 8 centimetres. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you... If you're doing this for the first time, would you be yeah. over generous with the sizes that yes, you cut? Yes, definitely. These are very over generous size pieces. I mean, you can see, um, you know, you've got a tiny triangle here tiny part of the sunburst but you've got a giant piece of fabric but it's because you can cut those out okay so we're um, not just being no and also because you're doing it on a curve as well yeah. your fabric will turn so ah. it doesn't necessarily just because you've got a big piece you still you you have to have that so that you're not um losing yeah, out so um 
so yeah be quite generous with them but again I mean that that you you will use two of those or you can use you've still got an enormous amount of your fat quarter left even if you take those parts out oh, okay. so um so yeah so I've chosen a few of the colors so I've got sort of two of everything so on my one you start with in the center will be one color and then it will be two oranges two reds or you can do it it's, well they're not numbered are they no they're not so numbered so you can do it as and where you know whatever color you want to really okay. so you could do all half red one side and all orange or and would you start at the one side and work so across I'll, I'll start i'll do this for you so i've cut some out um so the first one, the pointing down part is going to be red. This yep. part here is going to be your denim. Okay. Okay. So we'll take one piece of the denim and one piece of the red. Okay. Now the red goes on the bottom. Yeah. And the denim will go on the top. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to line. So this line here, um, this first line there, we yep. are going to line that up with the edge of the um, fabric. Okay. Okay. On the back. On the back of the fabric, on the back of the denim. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to stitch it down this line here. Right. Okay. So I'll just pop a pin in there. You will need quite a few pins for this project. So, so are you going to stitch w that you can see the lines yes. coming through? Yeah, ah, yeah. That's so good. you so you use it as a guide and we're yeah. going to start from here. Yeah. And we're just going to stitch all the way down. Right, okay. Over the paper. Oh, I so love that's good. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do like foundation paper piecing. I've kind of got a that's really good because quite often, you know, when you fl have to flip it over and so on the rest mm -hmm. and you can't see the lines, at least you've yep. got your guidelines on yep. here. Yeah, so we're going to just stitch across here, stitch across this line. Um, another tip is to make sure that your stitches are quite small. Right. Um, it means that when you go to tear the paper from the back of it, it, it's more perforated, so it's easier to take the paper out. Okay. Do you find that it blunts your needle? Yeah, you will need to change change your needles change after. It after. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's your first piece of foundation. So then what we so then you turn it. Okay. Turn it over oh. and you just trim this edge. Yeah. Just about a quarter of an inch. Oh, do you know quite, what you need? Have you tried the add a quarter rulers? No, not yet. No, they're brilliant for this because they've got that perfect quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. So you just butt it up to the side of it and you can snip away your excess. Okay. They're really good. Right, so then what we need to do is to just open that out and finger press that down. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that will be your first, it kind of works upside down. Right, so, okay. So that's your first stitch. Then what you do is you take your paper piece, it's a bit fiddly, so bear with, and then we're gonna work on this line here. Yeah. So we fold that, so just tear it slightly, and then we fold it on the line. Now we use this as a guide, okay. So we folded that, that part there. Then you have to open out your fabric. So it's kind of, you're working on it upside down. Yeah. And then we're going to trim the fabric, leave quite a large um, a gap, and we're going to trim down here, just so that it's in line with that part. How do I know that, that it's going to cover? How how much do how, how far do I need to cut? Because when we open it out, you'll see that there's a good uh, yeah. amount here. Okay. As I say, you're working back to front, yeah. even though you think you're working the right way around. It's kind of back to front. So, so we'll fold it that way, and then we'll just trim down this line here. So I'll just use these scissors. I'm just going to take off that corner. If you don't, if you, you don't have to, but you'll create lots of bulk. Okay. So when you're going through the machine, you tend to stitch 
too many pieces. And you're going to work with denim, a colour. So the next part will be the denim. So you're doing it alternately until you get, obviously, your... So then your denim is okay. going to be facing up. Yeah. Okay. We're going to just place the edge of the coloured fabric on. And then we're going to turn the paper mm -hmm. back round to the right side and pin it in place. It'll make sense in a minute when I turn it back the right way. Okay. Are your instructions nice and clear as well in the... Very, very yeah. clear, yeah. Okay, so then we turn it and then we're going to stitch again from the top, straight over the paper, yeah. down that line again. Right. Okay. So you start at the edge of the fabric. Mm -hmm. You not just it's not just where the seam allowance no, starts. You start go through at the, the edge of the fabric. Just okay. then you know that you've got stitching all the way round. Less than twenty of the pattern on their own left available. Okay. Right. Okay, so we've stitched over that line there. Okay, so then we open it out again. And again, you can just trim that piece off. So we've got a nicer, we don't have so much bulk. I still keep all these little bits. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so then when we open it out again, we have the first triangle. Oh, so brilliant. this is the first part of your sunburst. Right. Okay. So then with we turn this FPP, it. you've just kind of kind of trust the process, mm -hmm. haven't you? As I say, when you start doing it, you think it's back to it. It is back to front, but when it when you turn it over, it's the right way round. It's a it's a little bit. So again, we take the where's that? right. We take the. Um, paper piece and we're using this line here mm. so we're using the next line along so then we fold that again just give the little tear where we stitched and we fold it along that line if you use thinner paper I mean this is just normal photocopy paper but you can buy thinner paper that you can see um, you know the lines I mean I can see them so you can fold that across there and then we're going to take an orange piece, okay? So the orange is um, facing up. Your denim will be down this time. And we've got this line here. So we're just going to trim another piece off to stop the bulk. Keep those bits. And then we're going to open it out and we're going to stitch down that line again. Right. Okay. We're following. Well, Kat's saying, I just trust you, Barbara. <laughs> we trust you. As I say, it did take a couple of times because I because when you first start it, you think it's not going to work. And that's why I trust say... Trust in it, the process. Yeah, trust, trust in, the in the process. And photocopy a few extras so that you can practice. And like you said, you're best to use the, the, the cheapest, thinnest pho photocopy paper mm -hmm. actually to this. One, it's easiest to tear out. Yeah. But also you can see your lines through. Definitely. Okay, so we've done that one. Jennifer's asked, can you start from the middle and go outwards? Can you start with the larger shapes? It's better to start on the edge. Okay. Um, I haven't tried to start from the middle, but the process, I feel, wouldn't work as well if you started from the middle and went out. Okay. So it's better to go from one side. You should always start from one side and go round. Okay. Well, you can try it. I say, practice, see, let me know if it works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so I've just trimmed that again. So when we open that, that will then become, this is going to become our... Um, second triangle, mm -hmm. okay? So again, we're going to take the, open that out, and then we work on the next, next line, okay? So 
I'm just going to fold it along the line with some paper piecing um, foundation paper piecing you'll have a block okay um, so you'll just have one piece of paper and then you'll stitch down the lines um, on and you wouldn't be folding but with this one to get the, the precise triangular parts mm -hmm. you'd have to um, you'd have to be you're folding okay so we turn that out again and we just trim that so that it's level just take off the bulk and we'll use the denim okay so we lay that on open that out and then we stitch down that line again okay okay would you mark so that you know which ones I would forget which triangle I'm on if you know what I mean I would think right you could do you could do them as I go yeah put a line through right you could so do. then I'd know my next one or number them or something mm -hmm. stitch down that one okay and then open it out and there's our second gosh yeah okay so we just continue it's making that. sense yep trim away trim away seam. I've not seen it with scissors before that's really good isn't it to know that you can do it with scissors because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people you can you know, yeah. do it with a rotary cutter but because they're just the off cut cut bits it doesn't matter um, as I say so now we've got the second one and again then you take the next one mm -hmm. and you'd fold it again um, I'll do one and I've got one that I've prepared earlier <laughs> okay so we just fold this one when you're trimming back do you need to trim it back to a quarter of an inch or is it there and thereabouts you don't just there and thereabouts okay. you don't have to be too precise because it's it's on the back um, okay let's use the lighter red so again colour at the top and then um, denim and then we trim again we could use a rotary cutter just going to leave a take the corner off and you could use pins as well just mm -hmm. to keep it in place yeah, well, I see people use the um, sew line glue pen when they're doing foundation mm -hmm. bone piecing just to hold things in place. And again, we're just going to stitch down that this line. Not that we have any, it's always sold out, isn't it? <laughs> okay, we'll just trim that again. Pattern on its own is about to sell out, by the way, extremely limited. And the purple bundle, which is the one that the bag was already made up of, um, there's less than 15. There we go. So then that becomes your, that's going to be your next ah, sunburst. Yeah. And so you continue with that, um, just fold, lay, fold, lay until you get to this end. And then you will end up with like a giant bulk of different okay. pieces of fabric yeah. okay so once you've got them and you've um, stitched them all together you will end up with one of these right so do you then trim it down to the so size you trim of the template so you, yeah so you copy it around your template here ah okay. okay and then you will end up with your starburst and you can see your seam allowance is included there it as well. is yes yeah okay okay that looks so nice, doesn't it? It's those lovely, colours. isn't it? Really pretty. Yeah. Um, I chose to keep that yellow just in the centre. Mm -hmm. So all the others were the same, but we just kept the yellow. But again, you can just mix mm -hmm. and match. Um, so then the, once you've done this part, you will have that at the back. Okay. okay. So Do you leave it in until you, you construct it or you take it out at I this point? I take it out at this point because okay. it just means that you can, um, it's, you can move it around a bit more. And again, because you've stitched it, it's all perforated, so you would just peel oh, it out. Oh, it's satisfying, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you say photocopy it. Don't just cut the one out mm -hmm. of the, the book. Yeah. 
photocopy it and use a thinner paper because um, it's quite nice glossy thick paper this is actually yeah so I'd want to use a thinner paper to, to and if you wanted use to template. use it for you know gifts or you yeah, know you want to make it again then it's it you know definitely photocopy because it's not like with EPP where you can take your cards out and you might be able to preserve them and use them again this is a one shot you use it and then you take yeah. your, your paper out okay so Get as much as I can out. Oh, I love sitting with tweezers and just taking out those last little bits. <laughs> yeah. I'll happily do that for you. <laughs> the main graphic is for the uh, the one that um, Barbara's working with, and then your side graphic is with the purples. Okay. So you got Kerry's kit, did I hear you say I that? did, yeah. <laughs> I loved it so much, I, I bought it. <laughs> Brilliant. So I'll show you when I've made it. You're on the fan page, aren't you? I am, Oh, yeah, yeah you must put a picture I on. Will do, I will do, I will do. Sorry, I'm peeling away. I forgot where I was then. <laughs> Okay. Right, so once you've pulled all these pieces of paper out and you've got this part here, the next part you need to do is to pop on your um, your sun. So is there a template for that then? There as well? is. So this is the this is the main part of your sunburst. This okay. is the top of your pocket. So you need to cut this part out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this part. Um, I folded it in half just so that you've got a centre mark here and again with this one here. So just give it a little fold. Okay, they're all quite nice small pieces if you want to do it out of your scraps, mm -hmm, if you've got definitely. pieces left over from other collections. Yeah. Because you're quite scrappy. Yeah, and then you would pin your sun to the sunbursts. Right, this is a convex and a concave. Yes. How do I pin this? Okay. Because <laughs> that does not look I like will. it's going to fit, Bob. It will, I promise. <laughs> I promise it fits. Okay, need some pins, sorry. Have we got any more pins anywhere? Um, we should have well, loads of pins. done with the magnetic Is Kerry pins? took them away? Yeah. Oh, we had the dish on earlier, ah. didn't we? We had the magnetic pin dish. Sorry, thank you. It's all right. Okay. So I always start in the middle when you're doing this and say I've marked the centre. So we'll start from there and we'll just pin. Okay. And then we're just going to just turn the fabric and also because the curves are on the bias, there's a slight stretch to it. Okay. So it makes it easier to sort of manipulate, manipulate the fabric. So we're just going to turn the two again. This is where you say you need quite a few pins for yeah. this. And your little glass ones would be good for this. We had some nice um, glass headed pins in the first hour that were only about three, three pounds, four mm -hmm. pounds. Again, we're just going to turn. Quite good, these little jars, aren't they? The magnetic pin yeah. one, yeah, it is good. I've banned the dogs from coming in my workshop now because there's too many pins everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we you can see that, that that fits on there. Perfect. Right. And again, the other side. You just have to ease it in, I suppose. Yeah, just ease it gently. So this is the only part that you're doing, the foundation of her piecing. Everything else Everything is just else you know, is, yeah. construction of your bag. Mm -hmm. So it's nice because you've got just that little bit of time to, to think about it. Yeah. You know. Which we say, for a beginner actually, for someone who's not done foundation of her piecing Definitely. before, it's, it's a, a manageable size. Yeah, and the instructions are really good as well. Yeah. Um, lots of pictures to help. I always like pictures in um, patterns. 
I think a lot of sort of creative people are more visual learners, aren't yes, they? Yes, anyway. definitely. Okay, so I've pinned it. It looks a bit all <laughs> over. <laughs> okay, and then what we do is we take it to the sewing machine and we're just going to do a little quarter inch right. seam, okay? So it's a little bit tricky. Okay. So like with before, you say just take your time. Yep. Right. Oh, just remember to take the pins out. Oh, you are good. <laughs> this is where the magnetic ping dish is good because you just chuck it. Mm. <laughs> catch it. It'll catch somewhere. Changed a stitch back to a regular stitch length, or are we still a, a short? I'm still on a shorter one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Caroline said I'd use a glue stick, use the glue pen, or even quilters tape to do the curves. That would be a good idea, yeah. Would that hold it enough? Or? Yes, it would do. Yeah. Right, okay. You're doing a little reverse then. Just a little reverse on that part, yeah. So then, kind of looks a bit like that. Okay. Okay. So then we will press that, so then you'll get your nice seam. Okay, so it opens Is there a particular out. way that you need to press your, your seams? Yeah, well, when you push it, your, your um, seam will be pointing up anyway okay it automatically will do that and then we're just going to stitch uh, sorry iron we've had a message from maggie hi mm -hmm. maggie uh, i use the light interfacing instead of paper uh, so i don't need to remove it and it gives oh, it nice stability a idea. you do um there is interfacing in this so that might be an idea Oh yeah, we have got interfacing do, actually. Yeah, so we have to interface the um, the bag as a whole. I see. So actually that would be a good idea, good right. tip. This is a medium weight. Would that be okay for foundation mm -hmm. paper piecing still? Yep. Okay, so. That's it. Just take those bits out. Just £3.99 for your iron on interfacing, so if you want to use that for, well, you'll need it anyway for your construction of your, your purse. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you think a metre piece would be enough to do, obviously, your purse and your foundation definitely, paper piece? Definitely. And then you can just leave your, your, your interfacing in? You could. Oh, good, good idea. idea. Well done. done. <laughs> okay, so that's your um, star, your sun part stitched in. Lovely. Okay. And then the next part that you do is to put the flap on the bottom, so this part here. Okay, and again, it's a... Oh, you could do that in a contrasting colour. You could you? do it in a contrasting colour. That would be nice. You could do it in, yeah. Um, so that part there fits onto here. So again, use the centre um, point. Find your centre of the flap. Find your centre of the flat part. And then we're going to fit that onto here, like so. And again, it's lots of pins. And just ease it round. And again, because it's on the bias, you, you've, got, um, you've got a little bit of give in there. in the fabric. Oh, I use lots and lots and lots of pins. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and you, you're generally more of a clipper, aren't you? So this is mm -hmm. a good one to actually reach for your pins. It and is, do, or, yeah. Or you, or you glue pen, as Caroline or said. Or your tape. Yeah, do we have any of that quilters tape available? No, it's on restock, it's run reorder, but... 
It's not arrived yet. Okay, so we pin that all the way round yeah. on both sides. And it will look like that one. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of pins. Yeah, lots and lots. Okay, so once you've pinned that all the way round, then again you stitch that and then it will create your um, flap. So you'll have some more pins in your uh, little dish. Let's just do that for you. Yeah, it'd be nice to see what um, fabrics and how different they all look when people have made them. Okay. Oh, this would look lovely with your liberties, wouldn't it? Liberty fabrics or any of the ditzy prints. Maybe some of your boutiques, your barley pops. Oh. oh. Is that a pin? <gasps> no, it's a malfunction. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I think we... Uh, <gasps> blown the machine up. Oh, no. We've got the cotton stuck, that's all. Oh, no, oh, no. Right, well, we'll let... We'll, um, yeah, maybe you need to give it a gentle persuasion. Mm. Hammer, maybe? Oh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, just so you know, the first punter was Barbara Sorts the Machine. Uh, the main graphic is for um, the one that Barbara's working with, which is the other one, one sorry. Uh, this one. You're getting your lighter denim, which is your medium weight, light colour denim. Plus you're also getting your tangerine mixer and then full fat quarters. So you get your yellow, your red, which is a mixer. You get your lovely orange and then the deeper red again. Plus you get your fasteners and you get your pattern with your templates. Don't forget to photocopy those so you can make the, the, the purse again and again and again. Seeing it come together, it looks beautiful in this colourway. It looks really, really lovely. £24.99. pence. Your side graphic is for your purple, which is the one that the purse was already made up with. And it is absolutely lovely, isn't it? You get your snap fasteners, you get your templates in your pattern, all of your instructions. Don't forget to jot down today's date so you can watch back that FPP demo. You've also got four fat quarters. You have denim and you have your cotton mixer as well. £24.99 for all of these. If you have got the pattern in your basket, I can't promise that you will be successful. There is a lot of you who have got it in your basket and there are not enough to go around. We are oversubscribed, so the pattern on its own is available for a brilliant price of £6.50. £6.50, they're, they're about to, to sell out. Um, the i9 interfacing was a good tip, actually, and lots of you seem to be stocking up on it. So if you do need to get any more i9 interfacing, we've got the hemline medium weight, one metre piece for £3.99. Now, we've suggested, you know, obviously with the bundles, you're going to be able to make these sort of three purses um, but if you do want to make your own with different fabrics and you need some snaps snap fasteners they're just two pound 49 they are available at 249 for a pack of four set of four i should say you've got enough to be able to do four sets of fasteners um brilliant how are we getting on barbara okay. i'm just fixing this hang on a second and then we will be uh, ready to go Lovely, it's back on track. Yes, it's not behaving itself today. Apologies, everybody. Oh, I don't say sorry. Okay. True pro. Okay. So, I've made a complete mess. <laughs> okay. So now I've stitched that flap part onto the, um, the sunburst. The sunburst. So you just give that a little iron. 
and then that will create the flap for the top. I always find if you have any, top. if you do have any puckers with your curves, mm -hmm. pressing can really, really help. It really does. And another little tip, which I forgot to mention, is um, just do some little snips, tiny little snips on your curve, because that will also help when and it just comes ease to any tension. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's the little flap part. Ah, oh, lovely. Ironed. And that really is the most difficult part of your um, bag. Brilliant. Okay. We've got about 10 minutes. Okay. So we can do some of the construction. Brilliant. Okay. So for the bag, um, we just need to pop a little bit of interfacing onto. I mean, you get loads in the, in the pack. So, yeah, metre pieces. Yeah, it's length. massive. So we're just going to pop... Um, that on and trim that round so that we've got um, just gives it that little bit more sturdiness. This is good to see for anybody who's not used interfacing before. Does it have one sort of sticky side? So one side is um, sticky adhesive and the other side is is not. Um, it just gives you that little bit of extra strength in your work really. So we're just going to pop that onto there. There we go. Just tidies all of the um, the back up as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then with your lining fabric you need to cut out your flap. Okay. Um, the lining part of your flap. Right, so you use okay. your sunburst piece as a template. Yes. There's no template for no, that. No, there isn't, no. So you use the sunburst part for that. Okay. Do you need to interface that as well or not? No, nope, just, no. Nope. Nope. So then we're going to join that up. There is a slight um, seam at the top, but that's fine. And then you're going to stitch all the way around there, and that will create your... Um, so when you're using that as a template, do I need to add a quarter of an inch to it? Yes. Right. Sorry, yes, you do. Just just because then it gives you the nice fold at the end. Right, I'm with you. Okay. Um, so we're just going to stitch around the curve. And again, you can use, put little snips in. Just snip round the edge there, just to give you that nice, just take little triangles out as such, like that. Let's see. Do you know that. when, when I've always wondered this, because I see mm -hmm. people who um, snip and then also at a different points where you take little triangles out, is there a, a rule to which ones do you do both for different projects or do you, if you've got a curve generally, take triangles out? Does that make generally, sense? Generally I take the triangles out like this. Yeah. Um, depends really what project you're using. Sometimes I again, like I say, with the bunting I did this morning, I used the pinking shears. Yeah. Um, it just depends really yeah, what, what just, project you. Okay. Um, I just find it really interesting how you know I see so many people all do it, like you said, different methods, slightly mm -hmm. different with pinking shears or snipping, just straight little snips round yeah. or little triangles like this. So we just take a few out there. Just have to be careful you don't go into your stitching, don't you? Yeah, just all your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Normally I'd use like little snippy scissors, but. Okay. And then you're gonna turn that round in the uh, pattern, um, it does say you can use, um, on the starburst part, you could use nice um, decorative stitching as well, just Ooh. to break it up. Um, there we go. So would you do that before you put this flap 
on yes, it. Yes, you would, yeah. Do you do extra stitching then? No. Okay. And then we just press that down. To, then that is your... There's a lady who messaged in the other day and said about mm -hmm. pressing how it's it's actually as sort of integral as your sewing machine, isn't it? Really definitely, important to definitely. make sure you have your iron at hand. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's your flap made. Uh -huh. Okay. And then you're going to take your outer uh, pocket, outer bag, and you're going to turn it so that the right sides are together. Okay, and you're going to stitch those all the way around. Okay. Again, quarter of an inch seamless. Yes, please, yeah. But we don't need to interface these parts, Barbara. No, you don't. I suppose with the denim as well, it's quite it's nice, anyway. it's very sturdy. Okay, and then we're going to turn that so you can see that will be your. So that's going to be your pocket or your bag, sorry. And then that will sit on the top like that. Oh, it does look lovely yeah. in that colour, doesn't it? And really simple once you've got your FPP once done. Once you've done that part, this part's quite yeah, quite simple. Saying you could add a, a a loop to it if you wanted to, so it was like a little wrist yeah. um, purse, or you could put a nice chain on it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and again, with your um, lining pieces, are they exactly the same size? Same size as the bag, but the difference being is that when you stitch them. You'll leave a gap at the bottom. Ah, yeah. Okay, so we can turn it through. So we'll just do that one. A little reverse so that when you turn through, you're mm -hmm. not going to pull your stitches out. Again, you can snip round there as well. Right, and then that will be your lining. I confused myself with this the other day. <laughs> right sides together is what so, you remember, isn't it? Yeah. So, this has to turn that way. So, what I did... Your main bag goes in, inside, inside the it. lining. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that fits in there. Oh, no, it doesn't. I forgot a bit. You, Sorry. It's all right. No, well, so does that go inside out? Your so main bag goes inside what out. What you need to do first before you do that okay. is actually put the flap onto the um, oh. outer part of the fabric. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> okay, so your flap needs to go... I've turned it that way. It will have so it will go in there. Mm -hmm. So it will need to face. So the right side goes to the wrong side of the outer bag. So it will fit into there. Okay. Okay. And then what we do, what you do is you pin that in place. Main graphic is for the orange sunburst, which is the kit that Barbara's working with. The purples, I think, are so close to selling out. There is literally a couple of those remaining. And the pattern on its own, same story. Um, if you do want the purple bundle or the pattern on its own, please do be quick. The side graphic is for your purple, which is about to sell out. Okay. So I've just taken the um, part off so that we've just got the small arm on the sewing machine. 
and then we just stitch the flap to the outer We've done it the wrong way around. <laughs> oh, don't worry. All the foundation paper anyway. piece in it was a breeze. <laughs> That's what it will look like when it's done. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, dear. I'm very sorry. No, don't be silly. It's absolutely fine. It's because I was washing. It's all in the pattern okay. anyway, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And then there's your lining. So that will go inside there. Yeah. Stitch so round and turn it through in the gap. and turn it round, yep. And Brilliant. And it should all open out. <laughs> oh, no, thank you ever so much. Okay. Especially the, the part that I think everybody would have been the most scared about, that was really demystified. Mm -hmm. So thank Good. you ever so You're much. You're welcome. Um, when are you back with us? I am back on the 25th of April. 25th of April? Yes. Oh, my word. Yeah. Right, well, I really hope you get to see your lovely you. grandchildren <laughs> soon. Oh. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you in April. Thank, Thank you, very, you very, much. very much. Thank you. Right, so we've got the, um, the purple bundle, which is now about to sell out. There's literally a handful of these left. If you want that lovely deep blue denim plus your lovely bright pink lining all fat four fat quarters remember you've got enough to make at least sort of three bags of this so don't forget to photocopy your your pattern pieces your fpp pattern pieces as you will want to use it again and again and again um, plus you're getting your snap fasteners in there all your fabrics everything you need plus today's demo to watch back 24 pounds and 99 pence 24.99 a meter of your fabric all your fat quarters enough to make we think probably three at least. I mean, you're then going to be able to use all your little scraps that you've got at home as well to be able to make even more for gift ideas for people. It's lovely. Uh, then we also have the orange. We've seen it come together and it looks beautiful. Oh, it's perfect for summer. We've got our summer bunting up. We've got our summer purse. We're ready to go. Uh, so in here, you get your pattern, you get your snap fasteners. You've got four sets here, plus all four fat quarters. You're half a metre of your tangerine and half a metre of your denim for your main bag base or your main purse base. Just $24.99. Brilliant price point to say that you can make three bags. So good. Um, and those colours are lovely. Get your decorative stitches out, absolutely. Maybe play around with different contrasting colours for the uh, for the part down here on the flap or the sunshine colour. It's going to look lovely. Let us know once you've made it. Send in photographs. That is your sunburst purse kit. Now, the pattern, again, limited, limited, limited on its own. If you do want it, I've been saying it all hour. Um, don't think you've missed out, though. Please don't think you've missed out. If you've got it in your basket, there's still... Uh, there, oh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but there are still chances to check out just £6.50 for your love from Beth, Beth Studley, purse sewing pattern. Okay. In the next hour, we've got one more hour and we're going to do a huge roundup of lots of Living in Loveliness kits. Um, we've got more fabulous fat, fat quarter, fabulous, fast, fat quarter, fun kits. I will never get better at saying that. Uh, and we've also got the Alexia Messenger bag. I think we've got the pattern on its own, which is very exciting. Lots of Riley Blake kits coming up. Don't go anywhere. Kerry's joining me after this. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers.
Hello, my name's Rachel Ilsley. Let me show you around my beautiful sewing studio, Magnolia. My sewing studio is in Wooten Bassett and on a daily basis, I alter and dress make for bridal customers. All my brides are absolutely wonderful. You can see I make waistcoats, bridesmaids, dresses, um, anything really they ask me for. Now my sewing story started as an adopted child and my adoptive mother was also a seamstress so she taught me everything I know. So I feel extremely lucky to be able to now be doing this as a profession. Also very proud am I to be now a part of the Sewing Street family and I so look forward to being on the shows with all of your support which I know that I have. My claim to fame, well I did appear on another sewing channel in last November on the 7th of November, some of you may have watched it um, and so that was my little claim to fame. So I've just literally risen from a full-time insurance job to sewing as a profession. I look forward to seeing you all. Bye! Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making, sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Hello, welcome back. Right, we've decided and we think we want to do a Kerry Living in Loveliness takeover day because we just do not have enough time. Right, we're going to get cracking because we've got an hour with Kerry and we've got so much that we want to recap. Every single time that we have Kerry here, we have messages galore of everybody who loves her kits. Uh, lots of people are saying, can we get certain ones back? We always want to introduce new kits as well. So this is a really good opportunity for anybody who might not have seen issue two before. We've got issue two, we've got issue eight, um, and we've also got the Alexi messenger bag as well to bring you this hour. So I'm going to start with issue two, which is again your, your fabulous fat quarter fun. And we've got three different kit options. So let's go for it. I'm going to open them straight away because you know it's my favourite part. Whenever we're here with Kerry, I love indulging in the beautiful fabrics that she puts together because as everybody has said, um, it, it is that Kerry's got such a great eye of putting fabrics together. These are Michael Miller 
Da, 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 da. This is Michael Miller, fabulously fast back quarter fun. Um, this is your so useful issue too. So as always, you've got your fabrics, you've got your patterns, you've got your instructions. And this is to make, as you can see here, you've got your Linda Lotus bag. You've also got, which one I'll show you, uh, you'll also have your Pretty Patchwork Zip Pencil Case. Uh, you also have in here all of the instructions, as you can see, with really clear photographs as well, your accessory roll. So you're going to be able to make all three projects. We've got different colourways here, but just so you can see, uh, this is a really, really lovely little lotus bag. We love that. Your drawstring bag. It's nice to be able to keep. You know, when we're talking about going on the move, because fingers crossed, we'll be able to move this year. We'll be able to go on the move. If you're going on a little staycation, you've got your toiletry bits and bobs, a few bits of makeup maybe, that you just put there, and then you can just use the drawstrings to pull it all together, but you can see what you've got without rooting through a bag. Absolutely love this. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant design. So that's your lotus bag, and so pretty, especially in the Michael Miller fabrics. That will look gorgeous. Um, we also have the accessory roll. Now, calling it an accessory roll, because let's face it, you could use this for your pens and your pencils, we were talking about getting into all of our stationery, especially being back at school. Maybe if you're a, a crocheter, you could keep all your crochet hooks in here. You could keep all of your paint brush brushes if you're an artist, or makeup brushes, your makeup bits and bobs. It's brilliant. So that's really versatile and a pattern that you're going to use time and time again. And then we also have in here your accessory roll. And which one am I missing? We've got also your clutch as well so I know that Kerry whenever she comes in here she's always got her clutch ready to go with a rotary cutter um, and maybe a, a Solan glue pen you could have all your marking tools your bits and bobs all there ready to go for crafting on the move or even I'm thinking that would be a really nice EPP little side project that you have on the arm of the sofa on your side table um, ready to go then this is brilliant um, 29 pounds and 99 pence for your clutch bag as well so that's your Michael Miller option we also have two other from issue two but it's a, it goes a long way doesn't it tell you what this is why Kerry really wanted to introduce the the, the series uh, of fat quarter fun because you can see how far they go and I love working with fat quarters so let's it's less overwhelming. I always find it's less daunting when you've got a fat quarter as opposed to lots and lots of fabric that you need to pre-cut. This is different. I've never seen these fabrics. Oh my word. Right, these are Riley Blakes. They are gorgeous. Jane Austen. <gasps> Jane Austen. Oh my word, they are stunning. They are absolutely beautiful, aren't they? So, you have got all four of your fat quarters Plus, you've got your instructions, your so useful instructions, um, and you've got all of your templates, any pattern templates that you need are included in there as well. That is lovely. That is really, really nice, isn't it? Loads of you have got those in your baskets. Now, we're down to less than 10. Less than 10. If you do want that, that is absolutely gorgeous. That's one of my favourites I've seen, and it's really classic. Don't get me wrong, you can't go wrong with your butterfly brights, but that's a completely different look, isn't it? Now, we've got a Liberty option. Of course we've got a Liberty option. So if you do absolutely love all of these makes, you spotted the Liberty um, prints just a moment ago when I was showing you some of the samples, but this time it's from the Emporium range, which we launched here on Sewing Street with lovely Susie Duncan. And it's one of my favourite collections from Liberty because it pays homage to the store itself. And I think that's one thing I've really, really missed over the last year, is having my annual trip to London, going to the Liberty store. So having these fabrics, and I mean, if you go, if you've ever been to Liberty or had a look online, at how much you pay for little cosmetic bags and little bits and bobs. Oh, you'll be over the moon with your purchase for genuine Liberty quilting weight fabrics. And I remember saying to, to Susie, oh, it's, it's very, very indulgent, isn't it? To have your Liberty as this. And she said, no, use it. If you've got it, use it. So for anybody who gets this home and you just want to look at it and stroke it and you're too scared to cut into it, don't be, use it. And these are all really useful things that you're going to not only love making, um, but also use and enjoy. Um, 
Oh, look, so the Lotus bag is the one that this was already made up in the Emporium range, and it's gorgeous, isn't it? It looks absolutely beautiful in these fabrics. Um, in fact, Susie Duncan has said, Emporium is one of my favourite fabrics too. Love, love the Jane Austen at home. So enjoyed working with Riley Blake Designs team to launch them. They are gorgeous. I mean, Susie Duncan, she's had the privilege of working for Liberty and for Riley Blake. And um, they're two collections that I know Susie loves. So that is issue two we're not going to do a demo from it today because i know we've done it in the past so if you go onto our youtube channel you'll be able to find lots of demonstrations from kerry online but her instructions are always so so clear um 10th of december was one of the dates that we did with kerry where we were talking about issue two in a bit more depth but that is just a bit of a recap as i know we love the so useful issue now all three of those are extremely limited extremely extremely limited now something we do want to do a bit of a, a, a recap with kerry is fabulous backwater issue eight so you've got a couple of um, cosmetic bags here really really lovely really lovely projects so i've got is the one that you want to start with shall i just go for it let's see which one we open even attention to deal packed with loveliness lots of love Kerry uh, so oh the Jane Austen Jane Austen Riley Blake um, four fat quarters plus you're getting your vinyl so you do get some vinyl in this kit as well and this is to make your cosmetic bag so you can see here it's called pretty purses in here you get to make your Michelle bag which is this one that's got lovely structure as well with great pockets and that's where your, your vinyl will come into play as you can see what you've got in the bag. Um, all your instructions are very, very clear as you can see from your pattern. We then also have, there you go, a touch in the handle, add in the binding. This is the Emma uh, bag. Whether you're keeping your wonder clips in there or your sewing all purpose sewing clips you're keeping your quick and pick keep some little hexes in there maybe that you keep it in the car ready or, or on the go to just do some hand stitching whilst you're waiting to pick somebody up from school baby um, that would be lovely and then we also have the samantha which is this one lovely detail with that pipe to edge as well really displaying some of your favorite fabrics it's nice to be able to have a matching set isn't it so if you did get issue two um, it, then this will go perfectly with the little bits and bobs as well if you're making gifts for people the fabrics are gorgeous this is the Jane Austen at home range from Riley Blake and they are gorgeous colors lovely quality as always now i've got two other colorways before we um head over to kerry two other kit options for issue eight and that is sorry my, i'm not going to get a job at living in loveliness am i for my wrapping <laughs> <laughs> right let's have a look this one is gorgeous <gasps> another riley blake option you've got your vinyl you also have your four fat quarters. These go with your outfit today, Carrie. These corals. <laughs> These corals and peaches are lovely. And you've got the splash of ochre in there. Carrie, I've not seen these fabrics. The Jane Austen at home and these ones are new to me. They're new. Yeah, they're new. Oh. We have had we have had these on before, so yeah. um, but I'm sure it's the first time that you all see yeah, them. They're very is. nice, aren't they? They're really, really lovely. But they Four they were um, we have had these prints on previously with patterns. Oh, I love them. So yeah, it's good to be able to coordinate them all, yeah, isn't definitely. it? Definitely. Uh, so with this one, with your pretty purses, you've got your Emma. You've got your Michelle. Who's Emma and Michelle? Michelle's my mum. Oh, okay. And oh. Emma and Samantha are my two sisters. I've got three sisters, but Emma and Samantha are two of my sisters. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> and remember, that's to make all three projects um, in your Riley Blake fabric option, uh, option two this time. £29.99. Don't forget, you do get all of your written instructions. Plus, you can jot down today's date. We are going to be looking at how to do um, some of the techniques on one of the, the purses. Now, we also have one final option. I'm flying through these because I do want to make sure we spend as much time with Kerry as possible. The last one, of course, da, 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 da. Riley Blake, I know how much Kerry loves Riley Blake. So you've got your vinyls, you've got your beautiful floral prints here. Oh, that one's lovely as well. Look a tiny at your bird. little bird. 
Yeah, you little birds. You've got lovely little hearts and butterflies on here. That is gorgeous. Plus, you've got your stripe as well. Now, it also comes with full instructions, pattern pieces, everything that you need, your welcome note from Kerry, any other bits and bobs that you, you, you might want to add, interfacings, etc., etc., are all listed onto the back. Um, and then, when you're making it again, it does go through all of your fabric requirements as well, because this pattern, it isn't just what it isn't just a one-time use. You don't just use it for this once. You'll be able to go on to make lots of lovely purses, which are great gifts for people, aren't they, Kerry? Absolutely. Especially going back to saying we will be out and about very soon. We will be out and about. There's something nice to look forward oh, to. And it's nice to have a, a nice cosmetics yeah. bag when yeah. you go in on a little staycation. Absolutely. Isn't it? And I think we tend to find we have lots of things, so it's quite nice to have different options as well. So this was when we start back from issue two that you've shown. They're very nice, easy projects to work with. And as we work through the fastback water fund, then the patterns get, um, you know, you learn new techniques in there and perhaps a little um, a little more complicated if oh, you like so, so you're learning along with a, your issues absolutely so we add a new technique we bring one of the techniques from the previous issues or projects and then we build that into the next patterns that we're bringing up so i have chosen to work with that lovely liberty the last uh, sorry the lovely riley blake I do love mint and coral. So this is the this is the easiest of the three patterns that you've got in issue eight, and this is your Emma pattern. So it is just a nice, really easy cosmetic bag, but we've added two little pockets in there. So again, great to keep in your handbag, or of course, if you want to pop your, you could again use this when you're out and about, your business cards with these two little extra pockets in there. So there's very minimal cutting in this particular project. I have chosen to work with a batting. I always like to include the batting, whether it's a bag or a cosmetic bag, to give it some some stability and mm -hmm. also for it to be nice and plush. So would you use your 80-20 on this as opposed to the bows all this yeah, time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and softer. one of the other ladies has said that she's used this in a bag and it, with your little pockets it's good for your credit cards and things like that as well. Okay. So previously when we've done zip installation we've used things like the Soline glue pen. I showed last time I was on how to use the quilters tape. You don't need to talk about that Soline glue pen though Kerry. Why? Because it's just gone. Oh, we, is it all gone? The amount of times that we have people <laughs> say to us. Do we have clips? Yes. There we go. We'll use clips today. We have then. Clips. <laughs> no, so lovely, but no, honestly. It's so we'll, we'll use clips today. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I, um, okay. No problem. I like, I like the solo glue pen. <laughs> So with the two, so these are your two interior pockets again. There's a few pieces in here, but what we're going to do is to just fold these in half, so wrong side facing towards you, and give this a little press. Feeling very sorry for our solo glue pen now. It's one of my favourite little accessories. Oh, I feel like we have. I feel like we have all of Soline stock, you know, and they come in in the hundreds and they disappear the same day. Yeah. Everybody loves them. Yeah, they're, so they're, they're incredibly popular. Didn't you spot one from across the set? I did. I was most excited. <laughs> I did. It's like like a pot. Of, it's like a pot That's of gold to me down. then. <laughs> It's the only time I'm going to do any running this week. <laughs> so I've just pressed those in half and I'm simply just, and again, you could skip this, but it just does give a little bit more stability to the top of that pocket. If you want to add your interfacing, which is in your pattern, you can add the interfacing in there as well. But we're simply just going to sew along the top just to give that pocket a top stitch. So in the pattern, I have written it in the pattern with your interfacing. But to be honest, the quality of your Liberty and Riley Blake you don't always have to ha add that to your collections. So a nice top stitch on both of those, which are going to create four pockets on the interior of this little purse. And this is perfect really if you like making purses, but you want a really simple, fast project, or maybe you're new to you know, adding zips to projects, and I know people do often put those mm -hmm. off. So I would definitely start with this particular project if that's the case. And then you've got your interior and your exterior fabric. So again, I have chosen to work with a bat in there. You could interface this if you wanted to. And then I've chosen two of the stripey pat patterns. It's quite nice to just have the stripe in, is in nice. a bundle, isn't it? So I have trimmed down the zip. My zip was a little over a little over what I needed it to be. So if you are trimming down your zip, just sew across the edge. If you've trimmed it down before the zip installation, which you can do for this project, just pop a few stitches on there to stop. If you forget that you've trimmed it, yeah, you zip from yeah, off. it stops your zipper from before, falling Kerry. off. Oh, I've done it many <laughs> times, many times. If, if, as long as they're plastic teeth, it's fine for you to stitch yeah, over. Yeah, absolutely. It, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to do first of all is just to pop these pockets in. So on the interior, and again, if you're new and you don't want pockets, you could skip this step, but it is quite nice to have the pocket option in there. 
So one of the interior panels, I'm just now placing the folded edge on top of lining the raw edges and that second smaller pocket, again, aligning those raw edges. Now because we're going to be sewing through several layers, I would certainly recommend just stitching this into place to secure it for now. It's good to know how to do anyway, because if a pattern comes and it doesn't have pockets, you can uh, you know how Absolutely, to add them Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, this is the simplest way to add pockets into your project. And you can add this whether you're making a little tote bag, you can repeat this stage, whether you're making a tote bag, or you've got some nice clutch patterns. There's so many lovely little clutch patterns and cosmetic bags, so you can add those in there as well. So just sew an eighth of an inch from that raw edge there because we will be using a quarter inch seam so we certainly don't want to see that stitching especially as I'm working with a bolder thread as well. Just remember this is um, a restock show so please do make sure you're checking out as I know there's a lot of people who are after coordinating kits to go with kits they've already got at home um, and they are more limited this time we don't have as many as we did the first time round. There we go. So the next thing to do, so I've placed my batten already, uh, sorry, my exterior fabrics onto the batten and I've just secured those with a little 505. Kerry, do you, do you spray the 505 or your fabric? The, I spray it onto the batten. The wadding, okay. Yeah. It depends what the project is, to be honest, but generally onto the wadding. All right. Um, but it really does depend. If my batting's much bigger like the bag that I'm going to show you in a little while, then I would do it directly to the fabric. Otherwise, it ends up all over the batting. Right. So the first thing to do when you're inserting the zip, and the easiest way to check you've got it the right way, is to just place those two exterior fabrics facing up towards you and the zip again with the zipper facing up towards you. Always check that that zipper works before you even start any zip installation because sometimes you do get a faulty zip and it's much easier to find out at this stage. So the next thing we're going to do is to fold that zip and align it with the top raw edge. The second thing we're going to do is to place the interior panel, so the panel that I've just added those pockets onto, in fact I've forgotten to put that centre line, we'll leave those long. If you want to add the centre panel, if you're putting credit cards in then you can do that, that steps in the pattern for mm -hmm. you. We'll align that on top so you should now see the wrong side of your fabric and just using your quilting clips just secure those, in to get, secure those together. Now a little top tip for you, if you've got your zip in the centre, of course you can feel that through your fabrics. I'm going to close that a little bit. If you just pop your fingers flat on the top and slide a pin through those layers, that will remind you to stop and open that zip out of the way in just a moment. Ah, okay, good idea. So it's very easy to sew right up to the zip and that's where it becomes quite, um, quite tricky to open it because your, your stitching is too close. So just have that pin there and as we rest this onto the machine the zipper is set to the left side so the side the foot of the zipper is running along the raw edge my stitch length is on 2.5 so i'm simply going to sew along until i arrive at that pin and i always tend to use a bold color so it stands out and reminds me to stop <laughs> so when we yeah, arrive well if it buries into the it blends into the fabric mm. it's easy to miss it isn't it so leaving the zip inserted we're simply going to raise that presser foot, feel through the fabrics and just bring that zipper out of the way. So I tend to find just pivoting that there and tucking that out of the way. Drop that, oh no that's not quite out of the way, let's make that, let's tuck that out, there we go. So opening that up, still keeping the needle inserted, that will allow you to keep that nice straight continuous line. And then all we're doing is sewing along to the end of the fabric. A lot of people get scared of putting zips in. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely I think violent, the little thing, like, I mean, you can use the accessories like your tape and different things, but just using those quilting pins, um, those yeah. quilting clips makes it nice and easy and just adding that pin. So as we open this up now, we can see that we're exposing that beautiful fabric. Just give that a little press. Make sure that it's not in contact with your zip there. And again, from the back. And what you should be seeing here is on the inside of the pocket you can see those patterns and on the front of the zipper you can see that lovely fabric. Would so you then top stitch it down? I would do all the top stitching yeah. but to, for nice speed and ease today we'll do all the top stitching together in just a moment. Okay. So bring your panels back, make sure you can see the exterior fabric and the top of your zip and then we're simply folding that across. As we bring that, now this time this is tucked underneath and you should be able to see the interior of that panel. 
place in the interior section without the pockets on top, again making sure all those raw edges are lining up. Just pop a couple of clips on there and because of the size of the fabric two clips will be more than enough. Two fingers ahead and just slide that pin back through as a reminder and just repeat that step. And having your zipper foot on, it, it, it's fine still with all those layers? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So keeping that needle inserted, just remove the pin. I have left the pin a good two finger spaces back so it's not coming into contact with the needle. And then raising that presser foot, feeling through all those layers and just opening that zipper again. Raise that a little bit more. There we go. Okay, drop in the presser foot and then just sewing along to the end of the project. How have all your Facebook lives been going, Kerry? Very busy. I love it. Oh, so when is it? Remind us all when you do your Facebook lives so we can watch. Um, usually our Facebook lives are Monday evening at 6.30 and yeah. Tuesday evening at 7.30, providing, providing everything goes well. Sometimes we do move them. Um, to a Wednesday evening. So you can normally find us live Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday evening every week, but we're always live twice a week. Amazing. Again, just with nice little hints, tips and techniques and demonstrations as well. Now what's super important here is that you're pressing the fabrics and making sure that those fabrics on the lining, mostly on the lining, um, and also again, of course, on the top, but that you can open flat. that zip. Because yeah. sometimes what happens if you skip this step is that fabric can cross over ah. and makes it quite difficult. And this is why top stitching is good because it keeps yeah, it. Yeah, it keeps out it the out of the way. Yeah, absolutely. And and I do find sometimes, certainly when we've done um, beginner classes, that you know you forget to check the back, and then when you come to open and close that zip, it's particularly difficult. So all I'm doing now to keep those layers, especially because I've got um, the batting in there, is to just pin through those layers to secure those fabrics in place. And then I'm simply going to top stitch along the top of both sides now. And would you use a contrasting thread, like a nice fancy To be color? honest, I probably should have gone for pink, but it does look I quite look nice. Like purple, it looks it? really nice, yeah, with a purple. I really like that. Um, so there we go. So we're just resting that on top. The side of your zipper foot now will run along the side of the zip and we're simply just sewing along. I've left those pins far enough back so I haven't got to worry about removing those pins as we sew. And I am going to increase that stitch length to five so it travels across and it gives that nice top stitch finish as well. Now when you're top stitching both, I can see where that zipper is so I'm just going to stop, tuck that zipper out of the way and continue to sew along. When I arrive at the bottom here, again, I can just raise that needle, raise your presser foot, tease a little thread and come across to the second side. So I haven't got to worry about taking it off for each top stitch. Mm -hmm. I will just close that um, little zipper as well. And again, just stopping a little ahead of the zipper, closing that fully now. These do make great gifts to people, don't they? Can't go wrong with yeah, it. Especially like with all these lovely fabrics. I tend to find I, ne I never get uh, handmade gifts made for me. People see, seem to think I find the time to make all of my own. I don't. Oh. <laughs> so again, just leaving that zipper open. Make sure you've removed those pins. And now you're folding the exterior fabric to marry up with the exterior fabric, lining to lining. And naturally, that zip will tuck in to the lining of the bag. If we just clip, especially at that zip point on both sides to secure that. It's a small project, so a few clips will be more than enough on this particular project. And then we're going to leave a turning gap. Because we're using the batting, we'll leave a turning gap three inches along that bottom raw edge there. It's good to mark it as well, isn't it? Because otherwise yeah. you can just be do 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 so round, and the amount of time I get, just I'm sure you've <laughs> noticed, so I get so very easily uh, distracted no. that I have to remind. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to remind myself. So the pins and the clips and the little, the little hints and tips certainly help. And I think really you're so excited to see your project finished that yeah. you rush that last part. Yeah. So just starting at that first pen mark, starting with your reverse stitch and then pivoting when we reach the corners. The uh, clips that Kerry's using, by the way, are still at an early bird price. 50 clips for £10, 9 pounds 
And they are different to using, you know, clips as in, you know, like bulldog clips and things like that. They, they are designed for your fabric. Maud says, open your zip, Kerry. Your zip's open. Zip's open. Thanks for the m reminder, though, Maud. <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> and then pivoted at the corner. It's definitely, it's definitely really important, though, as Maud says, because it is, if that zip isn't open, it's incredibly tricky to feel through the fabrics, especially when you're working with the batting, to open that zip through all of those layers. Now, if you're concerned about sewing across the bottom of your zip, you can just hang crank your machine. You are absolutely fine to sew, sew across your nylon zips, but if you're new, I do find sometimes people don't want to or they're a bit nervous. So until you've built your confidence to do that, you can just hand crank that machine there. You just and take it slow, don't you? Yeah. There we go. All of these, would you say, were suitable for beginners? I'd certainly you? say this project is suitable for beginners. I think the Michelle, there's a lot of techniques in there, and also the Michelle, you're working with bat, uh, work with the foam as well, yeah. and adding binding to two layers of foam. Uh, so I would definitely, if you're if you're a beginner and you're investing in this kit, then certainly start with the easier projects. Yeah, and build your skills. Yeah, absolutely. I like an adventurous beginner. Yes, me too. I always think you should choose the project that you actually want to make when you start. You know, yeah. instead of starting. That's um, a good point. I always think choose the thing that you you know you really want to make. Not just because oh it's the easiest thing. Yeah. So as we feel through and push through our fingers through that zip that's open in the centre there, pushing back to that corner, and as you pinch onto the corner and push that through that turning gap, other than top stitching that lining, if you're gifting this, and certainly because I'm using a darker thread today, I would always recommend just giving it a little press mm. and finishing it neatly um, with a little slip stitch there. But if we just tuck this inside, excluding that top stitch, Let's open that zip a little more. You've got your little Emma. Super easy um, cosmetic bag there to start you off. How great's that? And how quick and easy. I love it. It's something that's so simple, but with the fabrics, it's a great way of displaying your favourite fabrics, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's the hardest thing, I think, when you get your fat quarters, which is your favourite. I think that's always the first thing to do, yeah. is to have a real good look at them and to decide which is your favourite of the fabrics. But that's your little Emma clutch. You've got your pockets on the inside. Oh, if you nice. want smaller pockets, then, of course, you can add that stitch in. Those step-by-steps are in the, um, tutor in the pattern as well. Great. There love you it. Go. It's your first little project. Love it, love it, love it. Um, just remember, not only do you get... Did you say this one's called the Emma? This is Emma. You also get Michelle. Yeah. Is this one Michelle? This is Michelle. And this I designed this really because my mum tends to like lots and lots of pockets for lots of things. Oh yeah, and you've got the vinyl included. And Lovely, yes. so you can see. And look, there's all the pockets on the front as well. Um, and on the reverse. Have a look on the website. There are three different Riley Blake options for fabulously fast fat quarter fun in issue eight pretty purses. So we have got um, all of those options that are available on the website. Again, please be careful. They are now really, really limited, especially those lovely Riley Blake colours. Now, um, the Alexi Messenger bag has been, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most popular living in loveliness patterns we've launched. We've got the pattern on its own. Um, now, problem is, is not for long. I know so many people who have got, I mean, we all have, haven't we? Let's face it. Some of our favourite fabrics that we haven't yet cut into, that are in our stash, um, that this is going to be absolutely ideal for. Um, just, cut, uh, just cut out some fabrics to make one now. Love the Emma pattern. That was from um, Susie. Absolutely love it. Let us know um, how you get on, Susie. Send in photographs. So, the Alexi Messenger bag. It's got a really nice long strap, hasn't it, yes, Kerry? Yes. It so, you can wear it across your body yeah. if you want to. Brilliant. We also have a kit that Kerry's going to be working with. Um, it's, again, Riley Blake, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You'll see it come together with Kerry, but you get all of your fabrics um, that you need to make the bag. Is that right? Everything that you need is included, including your magnetic clasp. Okay. And also, we did use batting on the interior of this fabric as well. So that is included in the kit in there. And you've got plenty to play with. And you know, Vicky, that I love the white on white. I do like having a nice, bright um, interior to a bag. Mm -hmm. But um, I did decide for this particular kit 
that we'd have that little white dot on there as well. Yeah, so that's not a white fabric. That's got a so it's got a nice little it. white dot on here as well. So you've got the um, you've got the bonus of a nice um, a nice fresh interior there to see whatever is in the contents. Mm -hmm. And this particular pattern, you've got four pockets. You've got two on the exterior and two on the interior. So this is a great project if you um, if you would like to start making you know, start making bags. Maybe you're a beginner bag maker and you want a nice, easy, uh, nice, easy project. Although we've got the magnetic clasps in there, we've got a really straightforward handle, um, uh, sorry, really straightforward strap in there. Mm -hmm. And you've got those four pockets. Now there is no um, fastenings on the interior of the pocket. So, th and the width of those is fine. If you wanted to put some snap clasps in there, you could do, but these is a really nice way to showcase the fabrics that come with your kit. It's a nice size bag actually, it's 11 inches, so that's without your strap, so it's a really nice size bag, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, and the patterns are, um, I did make this actually, I think I said when we uh, had this bag, we, do, we did do a lot of walking, um, sort of hill walking and things, and the children have got backpacks, but I really wanted to have a bag a that was bag. pretty, that I could wear across the bag, that's also got the pockets to keep your essentials in there as well. So the first thing to do when you're starting making this bag, and the pockets are all made in the same way. So placing your exterior pockets, there is four, two for the interior, two for the exterior. Placing that pattern, pattern facing towards you. Now the fabric that's included in your kit is that white dot, so just double check that you've got the white dot the right way. You can play around with different fabrics though, can't yeah. you? I think this has been done with some sort of wool, it's absolutely we had, gorgeous. We had that one in previously and the one that was behind me, I think the blue one, we've had that on previously as well in the Liberty fabrics, but I love it in the wool with the it bird. It looks lovely and that's with the cotton canvas as well, so that's what the finished bag looks like. But um, once you've got the pattern, I suppose this isn't going to be the only time that you make it. No, absolutely. You get the kit today, you've also got you know plenty of options of doing lots of lovely different fabrics I like having that contrast and it's nice to have a pocket on the back well so it's I close always, to your body well sometimes we just want to access our phone quite quickly yeah um, and so and I really like having my phone close to my body so I know that it's safe yeah and not having the you know not having a zip or not having a magnetic clasp on there means you haven't got to stop to open it you've got easy access to whatever you're keeping whether it's your car keys or your um, or your phone in that pocket and it's a nice deep pocket as well so it these is. do have deep pockets so all I'm doing at the moment is just pinning those panels together so we've got those pockets there placing that white spot on top making sure they're pattern facing and we're simply just going to sew across those raw edges with your quarter inch seam allowance there I'm just wondering where my missing pocket is <laughs> Let's sew first and we'll find it in a moment. <laughs> it's here somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> so just using that straight stitch to sew across those three pockets. The pan on its own is available. Very, 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 very popular indeed. Extremely limited. Um, in your kit, you get your fabrics, you get your magnetic clasp, and you also get your batting. All included $49.99 for the, for the bundle, plus your pattern, obviously. Now we'll pick up that second, we'll pick up that third, fourth pocket mm. in a moment. We'll get there. Just trimming away we'll those extra it. thread. We'll find it. It'll be, it'll be buried amongst all the pretty things. So just opening up those patterns now and pressing against that seam. That will give us a nice finish to the top of that bag. So just giving that a little press. And as we fold that pattern, as we fold that pocket, sorry, in half, we're just going to give that a nice little press. And again, just top stitch along each of those pockets in just a moment. So we'll repeat that for those pockets there. And what's quite nice about the project as well is we'll see in just a little while that your two fabrics, you can use both of those so they complement each other and they're featuring on the interior mm. and the exterior as well. What's your favourite colour, Vicky? Um, I like a... Um like a minty I love your corals I always love your colors that you pick out the coral uh, pinky corals I'm I do really drawn a, to like corals a minty, minty um, bluey green like aqua sort of tones as well I love anything that's quite bright I do yeah, like bright I do colors like 
Favourite colour is really difficult. I was thinking that. I was thinking it's quite, it's always quite, like, mine changes as well sometimes. Mm. Like, when he asked me the other day and I said coral, she was like, but it's always been blue. Mm. And it has really, I've always been really drawn to blue, but I am loving corals at the moment. <laughs> and I never... I said it was really easy when I was younger, because it it's just what you say, what's your favourite colour? <laughs> yeah. But you never really get asked it as an adult. Now I can't really think. <laughs> I think I might have lost a pocket on my travels. Right, so we So we'll go for yeah. one we'll on the inside and two on the outside. Okay. So all we're going to do now is to just place those pockets on the machine. Use either your straight stitch or your decorative stitch. And definitely, I've still got purple on the machine at the moment, but use a nice complementary thread for the fabric, fabric that comes in your kit. It's very rare to find coral thread, isn't it? Mm, that's a good point, actually, yeah. You don't really see much coral thread. No. So we'll repeat that on all three pockets. Yeah, I like your coral cardigan. That's a lovely colour. I think I've got about ten coral cardigans, yeah. sort of different different tones. Lipstick to match. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Another coral cardigan. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I always used to wear black, always wore black. And there, there's a lady that um, has come to my classes from when I first started doing classes, a lady called Helen. And uh, she's um, an ex-police officer and she said when she retired, her husband paid for her to go and do this course, like how to, like what to wear to suit your skin tone. And oh. she always wears yellows and oranges and looks amazing and lots of bright blues as well. And she said, because of obviously her job, she always wore black. And yeah. so whenever she used to come, I think, oh, you look so lovely in all those bright colours. So it's definitely, I think, thanks to Helen that I wear a lot more ah. brighter colours. Because I did oh, I'd always like to go, go on one of those sort of workshops yeah. to see what colours. I did, I did do, um, I did do a, 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 a like a, a taster, yeah. and not a whole day. And I did think it's really good actually because you learn what complements your, yeah. your skin tone yeah. and things. Okay, so the next thing that I've done, now in the pattern, and if you have a look, I think I did this on the bag that you have there, or certainly I did this on the Liberty one. Right. They, if you see that on the top of the pocket, just there. Yeah. So I have done lots of straight line quilting on the top of the pocket, and that is shown in the pattern how to add that. But because this fabric's already got that lovely, um, lovely print on there, I don't think this one really needs that mm -hmm. straight line quilting. It's the same as what's on the top of the, just on the top of the, um, on the panel there yeah, that you can yeah. see in there. All these lines. So we're going to skip that step. So your batting will be slightly bigger if you're going to do any quilting. You do you will cut a slightly bigger one if you're doing the quilting onto the bag. Okay. But as we're not for this one, the next thing we're going to do is to just place our pockets onto the bottom of each of those. So we'll repeat that to trim a little bit onto there. The pan on its own sold out. You can still get the pattern in the bundle. And here they are beautiful fabrics. But if you're thinking, oh, well, I had, um, you know, a wool fabric or something in mind, you're never going to be, um, you're never going to struggle to find a project to use your Riley Blake because it is beautiful. You can do other projects and use, you know, something else in your stash. Um, it says half a metre of one fabric, half a metre of another, and a, 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 um, three quarters of a metre of another. So have a look, They're all, it's all included in the, um, in the pattern, everything that you need. So in the bundle, you get all of your fabrics, you get your wadding, you also get your magnetic fastening as well. What I wanted to point out, because you've got enough fabric in this particular pattern, we've also got a guidance inside your pattern, there we go, to show you how to get the most from the fabrics included in your kit. Oh, that's good. So you've got your yeah, instructions yeah, here as well to show you where to place your templates on your fabric one, fabric two, and also your interior fabric, which is the white on white as well. That's really so, good. So that's in your pattern. So the next thing that we're going to do is to add our gusset. And I've chosen the same fabric that's on the exterior here. Now again, I want to move this because we don't want to get glue on there. Just going to spray a little 505 directly onto the batting, and you, you'll find that your templates are slightly bigger to allow for the opportunity to add the ba um, add this quilting if you want to. I can't get my words out. <laughs> oh, honestly, Kerry, I'm so pleased you're here today. I think it's because you're around me. I haven't been able to speak all week. 
Are you excited? Did you have baby brain? Yes, I it's still have thing, it. I think it? that's where I'm blaming it on. <laughs> <laughs> My youngest child is 11. I'm still saying I have it. <laughs> no, I, I am very I, excited. I think until you've had children, you know, you don't believe that there is such a thing. I certainly didn't, but yeah, I, I think. And you're very close now as well, aren't you? Yeah. Very close. <laughs> very close. It's very exciting. So I'm just going to trim this down so it's the same size. Are you pa your bags packed? Yeah, <gasps> bags are packed. Um, yeah, they're, they're, I think they're starting to panic in the gallery, saying, oh, not today. Have not you got today, a backup plan today. if it happens? Um, <laughs> well, Kat's like, we stay on air. <laughs> <laughs> It's so exciting. So what we're going to do now is I've attached the gusset to the bat in there. And just to find the centre of the bag, we're going to fold that in half. I've got a little bit overhanging, so I'll just trim that down. Oh, I went over with all of mine. It was most frustrating. <laughs> so finding the centre of your gusset as well and just giving that a little press. And then what we're going to do is align those two lines. You can mark these up with a pen if you want to. But we just, I can see there nice and easily. This is a nice one though for anybody who is a new bag maker. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Barbara's messaged in with a question. Love Carrie, Carrie's demonstrations. Uh, what zigzag is she using watching the needle? It doesn't seem like it's a straightforward zigzag. Oh, very observant. No, so... Um, oh, well done, Barbara. Oh, no, it wasn't. Was it? Yeah, Barbara, it was, wasn't it? Yes. Um, what zigzag was it? I really like the one. I'm not sure what the actual name of it is, I have to say. But um, you have like a tiny... It's almost like a little, a little dot in between. You, what you'd use on your zigzag, oh. on your elastic, sorry. So I think it um, travels across quite nicely. Is it more like a stretchy one, though? Yeah. Stretchy zigzag. Yeah. But I think it's just so Oh, we'll so all be decorative. watching now. Let's see what the needle do. I'm on straight stitch now. Oh. <laughs> I will show you, though, if we get chance. Or certainly on our next show. So now just following the contours of the curve on your bag and sewing that gusset into place. And again, your quilting clips are just so useful on here because they're really easy to remove as we're sewing around. I think it is called the elastic stitch. It, I'm sure it is an elastic stitch, yeah. I think you find a stitch that you just really, really love. And I particularly, and I've always really used that one, especially for the binding, to make sure that you've got the width on there. This zigzag, actually, that I've used on the bag is just your standard zigzag, and it's quite small. Mm -hmm. In the booklet, I do show you how to set up your machine as well to oh, use that you? if you've got the setting on you. If you've got the setting on your machine, so where this is overhanging just a little, I'm just going to trim that down. And then, as we open up the opposite side, you can see there on one side of the bag we've already got that pocket. Do I need to trim away any bulk or anything? Is the you'll have very little, um, to oh, be honest. Good. But just on the curves, in a moment, we will trim into there so we get a nice finish on that curve. And I would recommend when you're making this bag, certainly for the first time, to just secure these pockets into place because again, there is nothing more frustrating than sewing those layers together and realizing that you've missed that. If you're confident on a machine like um, me, you might just jump straight past that step. But if it's the first time you're making a bag, then those little tips are really helpful. Kerry, you've got lots of sellouts today. The back from the first hour that Kerry did at 10 o'clock, there are lots of sellouts. So it's definitely worth having a look through the website. Just typing living in loveliness or have a look under today's show deals to see from today. But any of Kerry's kits available on our website. Um, well, there's some that have sold out now. So the next thing I'm doing again is just bringing that onto the opposite side of the gusset, making sure they're pattern facing and pinning through those layers. Making sure all those raw edges and especially that pocket. And I would always pin where your pocket seam finishes as well. Two of your colourway of your new issue 10 sold out. So two of the kits and then one of the itch issue six have sold out as well. Um, there are still availability in different colourways though. Just I'm just want to make you aware if you've got any of them in your baskets 
to not wait much longer. Don't wait to the end of the demo because it's been a really, really busy day today. I love it. I get home and then I get an email saying, can we have some more? Oh, <laughs> good. Back to the cutting mat. Have you managed to get over to your new unit? Um, not as much as I would like. Yeah. Craig and, and um, you know, the team will go in pretty much all of the time. Um, but I'm certainly, especially because the children have only just returned to school, um, I've still been working from home. It's very cold. I'm waiting for the summer for me. Yeah. <laughs> but I did get all the furniture, so and I'm really excited. Cold, it. Pardon? <laughs> Let Craig be there in the cold. You I bought him lots summer. of thermals. <laughs> <laughs> How glamorous. I do, uh, the thing that I really look forward to doing and I always make a point to go in is when we've had the fabric delivery. Yes. I'll come in on that day and come and choose all the pretty fabrics. That's when the boss turns up. <laughs> Choosing all the nice fabrics. Oh, it's so lovely. The trouble is you can get lost for hours just, yeah. just, just stroking them really. So each time, especially on your second side, just making sure you're pushing the bit, the bottom layer, tucking that out of the way so you're not catching any of the section underneath in that stitch, which again is very easy to do. I think a lot of people get, get daunted by 3D makes like bags. Pardon? I think a lot of people get daunted by 3D yeah. elements of bags, yeah. but actually this is a good one because there aren't too many pattern pieces to no it. and they're all I mean we have got the magnetic clasp on the exterior yeah. but they're that you know I mean even the strap on here is just sewn into place so it's a nice Fantastic. way to add your you know a nice easy way to add your strap what I would recommend when you're adding the straps exactly. I don't think we'll get chance to play with the strap today is to just measure that once you've cut it from the template or, or attach the template it is cut on the fold and just measure your fabric across because you might be shorter than me, you might be mm -hmm. taller than me, and therefore we'll need it a little bit bigger. So that's the exterior of your bag. What I would recommend here at the bottom is to just cut into the curves so you get a nice finish on there as well. Oh, Barbara says thank you. She says, I've been wondering for ages what stitch it is that you use. When, when, I'm on, when am I in next? I'm on the 25th and the projects, oh, we've got lots of lovely new things on the 25th, um, as always. Oh, I hope I'm still <laughs> here with you. Yeah, I, think it's, I think it's your last show. I'm sure we looked last time yeah, and I'm sure yeah. it's your last show. Um, and uh, there's lots of zigzag stitching in there, so I will be sure to I'll try and hang down. on in there. <laughs> oh, please be here. I want <laughs> to see you. <laughs> Did you have your photos of your bump? No, I haven't. You know, everyone keeps saying to me, you need to take more pictures. And there's obviously, I really want to book in for one of those little lovely newborn shoots, but I don't oh, know what we can do. Yeah. We have to wait. You and could see get one of the presenters to make you a little hat. Oh, yes. <laughs> on on uh, Yarn Lane. So, just so I can show you one section of adding your uh, magnetic clasp here, and you will need a pin or a needle. Your magnetic clasp is included. In your, um, in your kit as well. And all we're going to do, just using a ruler, I'll just get that ruler again. When I came off air, my intention was to find a smaller ruler instead I had a coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've got that nice I love my quilting friends ruler, haven't we? Which I know you'd love. Do love things like that, as you know. Now the measurements are given to you in the um, in the step by step exactly where to mark this up. But what we're going to do? Oh look, we've got a lovely little. Oh, this is so cute. How cute is it? It matches the bang. I know. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. I know you'd like to. Do that. that was very fast, Kat. Thank you very much. So placing this into the corner here, and we're measuring it an inch and a half up from the top of the pocket, and an inch and a half in from the seam of your gusset. Sometimes you don't need a big, it can be quite cumbersome having a big ruler. And you know, lots of people will ask, well, why, why would I need a little ruler exactly for these little yeah. projects? And it's very cute. So you need yeah. it in your collection because it's, oh, it's quite creative. It's what I do like. Yeah, that. those hearts, they're non-slip grips, Kerry. Ooh, I just thought they were there to look pretty. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. So the next thing we're going to do is we've created that little dot. You will need a pen for this particular section so you can see your markings and you will cover this up with your magnetic clasp. You're simply going to pop the back on top so that's sitting in the little dot and draw through those lines to give yourself a guideline. 
Now, if you've not popped these in before, it's really helpful if you use a pin. And the reason that we're using the pin just here is to align it at the bottom of those little pen marks. So when we make those two incisions, you're not sliding through the fabric and cutting those too big. So sliding your stitch on picker in and just cutting through that stitch. Oh, now I see why you couldn't use the electrical one. I know. You need your actual ripper for that. You were wondering why I couldn't well, use yeah, that we're one. Like, Kerry, you need to use the stitch <laughs> remover. But we can't because we need it just for that. So that pin just stops you from sliding too far. You're then okay. simply going to put that on the top, push this through to the back on your prongs. I so you don't need any special tools to be not able for to do not these. for your magnetic clasp. And you haven't got you know mighty. I'm not very strong, strength. not at all. <laughs> and that's all right to just press down with so your I'm fingers. So I'm just pressing that down nicely with my fingers on there. Now, if this wasn't in the interior of the bag, I'd probably pop a little bit of um, batting on the back of there, and it probably does say it in the step by step, but you won't see that. So that's secured your first one into place. Now, to complete the bag, you'll simply continue to do the same. So the same steps that we've done here for the interior part of your bag. But while we are live today, I just want to show you how to make the um, flap on the bag as well and how we attach the flap. Now, the template, and if you have a look at the bag that... Um, that I've got here, there we go. Yeah, that vicky has got there, is this, the front panel has got that lovely curve. But you could, if you didn't like that curve and you wanted it to cover that pocket... Oh, this part here? Yeah, that's yeah. it. So if you wanted it to cover that pocket a little more... Right, so if you wanted... To then you can use the same template, which is what I'm doing here, as your bag. So that will be the, using the same template for the exterior and the interior of your pocket. Oh, nice. So what we're going to do next is the best thing to do, really, is to put these together so you can see. You will have sewn this together. So just check that that's the right way on your bag. You've got your interior matching the right way, and then you've got your exterior fabric facing up towards you. And you know that you're putting the uh, magnetic clasp on the right side, because mm -hmm. I know some people have said they're not quite sure which side to pop ah. it onto. So the next thing that we're going to do is we, we pivot this across now, and we are just working with the lining fabric using this super cute little ruler. I love this. Then we're going to, again, mark that up. One inch from the bottom curve, sorry, one and a half inches from the bottom and one and a half inches from the side. Make sure we're working on the exterior part of the fabric. You just have to double check and repeat in that step. So drawing your lines. Now this time, because it's only the fabric, just going to spray a little 505 onto the back and secure that into place. What does that do? Is that just so that's just giving? Um, that's just allowing for the for the magnetic clasp to really grip onto something because the fabric, oh. although it's cotton, is quite thin. It just gives yeah. it a little bit more stability. It reinforces it a bit. So setting that pin in position there on top of those markings, sliding your stitch on picker through and cutting through both layers. So you're cutting through the batting again. Popping that on top and removing the pin. And as we turn that across, theory. then you've got that part on top there we go and what's left to do is to sew that panel back together and to reverse um, sorry to start with a reverse stitch sew around the top um, panel of your project here to pull this through and to give that a nice um, top stitch as well nice and then like you said the straps they just to get attached to the outer so you don't need yeah. to worry about them going in towards no. the lining and we have actually done this project has been on before and we've got a full tutorial from this when we first launched this particular oh, pattern fantastic. so everything from popping your magnetic clasps in putting your um, interior in and also attaching the handle was that back in the like, old studio it was i wonder when that was we we're having a look and seeing when what date that was so every anybody who wants even more sort of visual help then of course you can um, watch it back on, on youtube so again finishing with that reverse stitch now the way that we've put the now i would just snip into these but for time i'm not going to today and as we bring this through, give that a real good press and a top stitch again. And the way that we finish this handle is we're actually attaching it to the back 
with a strip of binding. Right. So you're using that interior fabric there mm -hmm. that you should be able to see on that bag yeah. to attach that binding. So wrong side of the fabric facing up towards you and giving that a press. Now to get a nice finish on that binding, what we're going to do is to just bring these two raw edges in here by half an inch and press. And the same on the opposite side. That then gives a nice finish to the top of that flap. I just need to bring that in just a little more. It was back the 15th of June last year that we it. launched it. You watch it back on YouTube, 15th of June 2020. So that, so that the full tutorial is there. And to slightly change how I'm doing that. I think we're, have we got a minute left? Uh, I'll do the kit, I will do the, uh, the, the, what's it called, the menu for tomorrow whilst George is doing okay. that. So tomorrow, coming up, uh, you've got John tomorrow, John's back tomorrow, Barley Batiste, woo woo, at eight o'clock. Of course, the early bird do join in bright and early. New collection of Barley Batiste at, at eight o'clock. Nine o'clock, we've got a quilted hamper. We've got Jules in tomorrow. And then 10 o'clock, uh, sewing room tools. 11 o'clock, hexi wall hanging. And that's coming up with Jules at 11. Plus, you've got Yarn Lane tomorrow at 12 um, with Yarn Lane tatting. Okay, I don't know anything about this. Rebecca Reed is very, very excited about it. I think John Scott is hosting it, but um, it's going to be a brilliant, brilliant show. We've, we have heard about it. Long-awaited show, I've heard. So that's coming up tomorrow. I'm back on, I don't know, next Tuesday. Tuesday, aren't we? Um, oh, we've got Alison Marion next Tuesday. And we've got pasties. We've got pasties. Oh, and Kat Sloan, we've got a really exciting show on Tuesday. Say no more. Right, we've literally got a minute, Kerry. Okay, so just to show you what I've done here is I've sewn across yep. the top, I've folded that little excess fabric around to the bottom and sewn that together. As we fold this over the top, mm -hmm. you don't need to sew this at this point. From the back of the bag, so the opposite side to your magnetic clasp, we've measured yep. two inches down, and as you sit that on top, that's how you're going to secure the top flap of your bag. So you're exposing that lovely fabric on the back as well with your binding. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Don't forget to watch back on the web or have a look back on the website to see all of Kerry's kits. You say you're back on the 25th. 25th. I shall see you then. I'll see you then. I'll see you then. <laughs> thank you so much for today. Thank and you. thank you for our donuts. Oh, you're very well. Those treats as well today. <laughs> oh, it was lovely. Thank you very, very thank much. Thank you, Nikki. As I say, John's going to be joining you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Wendy Gardner then coming up all weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday. But it's been a pleasure today. Thank you for Barbara, to Barbara and to Kerry for some great demos today. Have a look back through the website, check out your orders, and John will see you tomorrow morning bright and early for your early bird special at 8 o'clock.